Check out the brand new shirts, including trusty blue and the Sting Money design, over at ProWrestlingTees.com slash 616 Entertainment. This video is also brought to you in part by the Patreon producers, without whom content like this would not be possible. What's up, Dan Dans? You might know this opening very well. What we are doing here today on 616 SmackDown is kicking off our journey through the SmackDown Here Comes the Pain story mode, or season mode, I guess they called it back then. We are going to play as Matt Hardy, version 1, a guy who I think could have been a world champion in WWE several times over, and they never pulled the trigger on him as a big main event guy. So fuck it, we're gonna do it, right here on youtube.com slash 616 entertainment. You know, I was going back and forth on who I should pick to be my character through story mode, and I think Matt Hardy was the right choice. WrestleMania was a huge success, but the dust has not settled just yet. That main event was awesome! I think the fans had trouble sleeping that night. That, wh why did the, the camera's already done moving? Why didn't they move the camera for a little longer? You know what I mean? Now we just have to stare at this. And it's taking longer because now I'm talking. Then we should apologize ahead of time. You might have trouble sleeping tonight as well. God damn it. <laughs> oh boy, here comes Stephanie McMahon looking real good in that fucking business suit. You know what I'm saying? Hi Matt. Tonight is the first Smackdown of the fiscal year. And needless to say, I'm counting on you. Personally, as the GM and as Stephanie McMahon, I want you to give the fans all you got. Make me proud and I will show you the road to success. You can show me something else if you feel like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, I have not played through the Here Comes the Pain season mode in so long. Let me get the lay of the land here. So we can walk around backstage areas here. This is shop zone where we can unlock everything. You're going to notice I don't have anything unlocked and that's because... My PS2 with my memory cards that I normally play on that has my old save from back in the day. I'm not running on that right now. I'm actually running off my PlayStation 3 uh, original model, which is backwards compatible with PlayStation 2 games. So let's take a look at the title information right now. We are on SmackDown, so the world champion in our show is Kurt Angle. He's the WWE champion. Triple H over on Raw. Okay, as we pan down here, you're going to notice that we, Matt Hardy, we don't have a fucking belt. And I would like one. Superstar stats. What do we got? Oh, man. I didn't realize this keeps track of your win and loss Sh records. Fuck. Now I'm really excited. <laughs> Superstar point 70. I don't really know what that means. Where, how do I go talk to the GM? We can talk with Eddie Guerrero. We can talk with... The GM. I gotta talk to the GM because I gotta see where I stand. Stephanie McMahon testing the buttons on that fucking shirt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what are my superstar points? They are indeed 70. Alright. So what does that earn me? So you want to shot the title, do you? Here are the titles you can challenge for. You go for the US title, cruiserweight title, tag titles. Hmm... We can start off hot and go for the U.S. title right away, and that's what the fuck we're gonna do. I see, I'll put you down for tonight's title match, but I want to see a great title match, okay? Got it? Fuck yeah, dude, we're getting a shot at the WWE U.S. Championship and our very first match, and I think the champ is Eddie Guerrero, who now is no longer here. We could talk to Brock Lesnar, but I don't really want my ego to get fucked up right before I go into a title match, you know what I'm saying? We're opening the card here, and you could say, oh, that's a that's a slap in the face. You spit in my face, putting me in the opening match. But that's not the case, you know what I'm saying? The opening match is actually very important. You want to kick a show off hot. You want to put something exciting out there. Because if the fans don't get off their feet right when the show gets going, then they're going to be like, really? Is this what we're in for all night? You want a perfect example? Look at WrestleMania... I want to say it was 21. The opener for WrestleMania 21 is Rey Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero. That's an opening match that could have main evented that fucking show. God damn, that match is good. But to the topic at hand here, we have Matt Hardy version 1 
with this old school quick time player looking fucking entrance. And you gotta get the Matt fact on the side, you know what I'm saying? Matt loves English muffins. It's 100% certain. That's a certified fact. <laughs> you gotta love no loading screen between the entrances. That's nice, because it could have been bad. Look at the size of the US title. That is ridiculous. That is way too big. <laughs> But they fucked up the sizes of the belts for a long, long time. You know what I mean? And I mean, now that the, the sizes of the belts are better in the current wrestling games, now they just, they can't get the lighting right. Unless there's a light shining directly on a belt, it's fucking black and you like can't even see it. Now I'm a little nervous. Ooh, look at this view. I'm a little nervous. I didn't do any practice matches. Eddie takes out the referee right away. So I don't really remember how to- MOTHERFUCKER! Lasso from El Paso just to start the match! Get to the rope, Matt! Good lord! The referee might be knocked out, but still, the longer I'm in this, the more damage is done. I got out of there. <laughs> I didn't do any- fuck- get the fuck out of here. I did zero practice matches. What- ref! God damn, can I finish one thought, please? I did zero practice matches, so what that means is I don't really remember how to play. I don't remember what the reverse button is. I don't know if it's square or if it's R2 and L2. It's R2. Okay, we figured that out. <laughs> Big old gut buster for you deeds. I always found those replays kind of annoying. I was not really a fan of those replays. But just like the overall pacing, I'm gonna have to get used to as well. I think I can pull this off though. Wham! This referee is my balls. Get out of the way! Did you see him just standing in front of Eddie? That's my opponent, dude. That's the guy I'm supposed to be fighting right now. You're just standing in front of him like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> we got titles to win here. Now, Eddie started off with two finishers, which I'm gonna call hard bullshit on. I'm not standing for that. We, we are being discriminated against as the the leader of Mattitude. The, the man with the most Mattitude in the entire world. They don't respect Mattitude. That's a problem with me. <laughs> Big ol' side effect for you deeds. We're gonna launch off the top rope. But I don't trust how long he's gonna stay down, so... Big wheel kick. Did Matt Hardy ever do that in real life? I don't think so. <laughs> you gotta love all these... Jumping Tornado DDT. You gotta love all these different grapple moves that you have. In here comes the pain. The move sets are outstanding. How about another Tornado DDT? Latino beat. How about that? Count it, ref. Holy shit! <laughs> I, I got really excited there. I was like, wait a minute. Oh no, the three amigos! What a great time for wrestling this was. What are we in here? 2003, Mattitude is a fucking big deal. Eddie Guerrero is the goddamn man and also still alive. No disrespect. I loved Eddie. So I'm just... I'm just saying, man. Hit him with another one of those gut busters. Because we gotta do the big time damage if we're looking to walk away with this US title. That's why we lock in that front face lock. Rope break. Eat my ass with a spoon, rope break. How about a little bit more corner damage, Eddie? I tried to do a different move, but apparently up circle and down circle are both the tornado DDT. Count it, ref! Man, he's got a little more gusto this time. Just a little bit. Big old discus punch. Now, I don't know what difficulty this is on. I think this is... It's definitely the standard difficulty because I didn't touch it, so this might be medium. After this, I'm probably going to go into the menu and crank the difficulty up because I'm not having any trouble getting used to this, and I would like this to be difficult. Boom! I want to have trouble. I want to be challenged. You know what I mean? So let's stack that man up. Fucking rope break. Referee's hitting the ropes like he's Ultimate Warrior for some reason. Eddie Guerrero knocks his fucking legs out. This is a fucking mess. This whole this is a calamity for this referee. Atomic drop ski. How about? Oh man, I missed. But that does remind me that big dive that I missed there. I had considered. Fucking that was like the stroke. Count it, ref. <laughs> 
I had considered playing through this season mode as Rhino. Another guy who I feel like didn't really get a great run in WWE. You know, he had a couple tag title reigns, a couple hardcore title reigns. But Rhino was a top player in ECW, and he was an extremely entertaining top player. Plus, who doesn't pop for the gore fucking every time they see it, you know? So, Rhino could have been a good option. There's a nice arm drag there right over the top. How about we hit him with something else coming off the ropes this time? Big Samoan Dropski. We got Eddie Guerrero right where we want him, proving to not even be a challenge. That didn't work the way I wanted it to. And it, you know what's funny is I'm so used to playing shit like, um, like Fire Pro and whatnot. Back suplex dropping me right on my head. I'm so used to playing Fire Pro and whatnot that I, I kind of feel like at this moment, three amigos again. That's cuatro amigos. <laughs> Cinco amigo. <laughs> Seis amigo. <laughs> oh shit. Did I reverse it? Yes! Okay, I, I don't know if I if I timed it right the first time or the second time. But we blocked the frog splash and now hit him with the twist of fate! We got a new US champion, ladies and gentlemen. <gasps> Eddie Guerrero no-sells the twist of fate. But what I was going to say before he went for that big frog splash and threw me off my train of thought was I'm so used to playing like Fire Pro and whatnot, Siete Amigo, <laughs> that I feel like I'm I'm doing, I'm getting so much offense in of my own that I should let him get some offense in. It's just like how my brain is wired now to play these games and try to have a good match rather than to play to win. <laughs> Which honestly, in my opinion, is the more fun way to play a wrestling game, if I'm being honest. I have a lot more fun. Count it, Rev! Handful of tights and we still couldn't get the job done. Shut up, Eddie. Don't be telling, talking to the ref about lying, cheating, and stealing when you're the fucking king of the castle on that one. I think it's more fun to play a wrestling game trying to have a good match. Because, let's be the fuck honest, that's what wrestling is. You know, it's, it's a weird thing that... Wrestling games really are fighting games that are set in, like, a, a wrestling universe, you know? Because it's you facing off an opponent, and your goal is to win. Where in Fire Pro, they give you goals in the mission mode that are just like, hey, go out there, have a match that's a 90% or better, and lose. So it really puts into your head, like, the actual spirit of pro wrestling, which I really enjoy. And I've always wondered if WWE could eventually, like, try that, or even, like, attempt to pull that off. BIG ELBOW OFF THE TOP rope. We are very close to earning a second finisher here, and when we hit that second twist of fate, that's gonna be all she wrote for Latino Heat. We're getting that damage in, you know what I'm saying? Check this out. There's a neck breaker, and now when we turn him around, Eddie, I hate to tell ya, this is called the Twist of Fate. Ref, ring it. One, two, three. What an amazing opening to 616 SmackDown this week. I think we are a heel. So we are going to attack. It is time to determine who will be winning the Mortal Kombat Classics mini arcade machine. I got the Patroni Patches Lugosi right here with me. But now, that was a pretty good jump, buddy. Wow. <laughs> but now you can see we have all of the patrons here on this list. Not just the Patreon producers you see in the beginning. This is everybody. So we're turning to the wheel. Let's click that wheel. Let's determine a winner for the giveaway. There you have it. Rosario Scavelli. You have won the Mortal Kombat Classics Mini Arcade Machine. Get a hold of me on Twitter or Patreon. Let's figure this out and I'll get it out in the mail to you. Pretty sure Matt Hardy's a heel in this game. And it's fun. I, when I play RPGs, I usually play as a good guy because I like to make the right decisions. <laughs> but in this, we'll switch it up. We'll play as a bad guy. We'll play as a heel. So not only did we take his title, 
beat him smack dab in the middle of the ring. But he's going to rue the day that he got in the ring with Matt Hardy. How about this? Oh no! This did not work out! Chair shot to the head! Oh man! Well, you know, that's some WWE booking for you. <laughs> Somebody picks up a win, they get some heat, and immediately the heat is taken away and put on the other guy because you can't have anybody down for too long. <laughs> so it's realistic. Now it's Undertaker versus, and in the main event, <laughs> and in the main event, Kurt Angle is going to go head to head with Brock Lesnar with special referee Stephanie McMahon, who comes out on top. Brock Lesnar picks up that win. Brock Lesnar gets a win over the champ. And you're going to see we got some experience points here. Our superstar points go up. We're earning cash. Week two. Dan Dance. Week two. What does week two have in store for the WWE US champion? Matt Hardy, version one. Well, a limo was just pulled up, folks. I wonder who's inside. Must be those centerfold models coming to pick me up. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy my impressions as we play through this. Now, is there anybody we can talk to? There's Eddie Guerrero or Undertaker. You know what? I do have something to say to Eddie Guerrero. But here's the problem is I don't think the game is going to remember what we did with each other last week. What, Matt? You got something to say to me or do you just want another beating? Oh, they do remember. You know what, Eddie? I do have something to say to you. Fuck you. That was a mistake. You're not too bright, are you? I'm going to have to be some more sense into you. This is fantastic. I, d I did not expect the game to remember our ongoing angle. I would love to have a rematch with Eddie. Let's make that happen. We got a backstage brawl. Good thing Mike Kyoto's here. I don't know where he came from, but good thing he's here. <laughs> Let's get this trick going. Oh, man. Come here. My, fuck you, Mike Kyoto. Will you get out of the way? One, two. Please kick out. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I got a bone to pick with this fucking ref, dude. What is the trick with the... Fuck you. <laughs> what is the trick with the, the power panel there? I thought it was an Irish whip deal, but it's not, apparently. Do I press a button? There it is. Who remembers that? Sneak behind. Hey... Eddie, get the fuck off me. Here's what I'm thinking. You eat this and this, and how about a little bit of this? <laughs> Wrench that arm. What are you going to do with that shoulder after I tear it off your fucking body? As I eat a big knee to the gut. Now, here's one thing that I'm realizing now. I forgot to change the difficulty. I was so hyped up. What, what are you doing? Where are you going, asshole? Oh, you want to play up there? No, 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 come back up here. We can play up here. Because these two panels, Dan Dan's, are destructible. What are you doing down there, you fucking idiot? Get up here. Okay, come over here then. Will you come over here? This is some 2K20 shit. <laughs> Eddie, what are you doing? That never happened. Everybody pretend that didn't happen. Hit him with that snap, Mareski. Now, Eddie, come up here. Gonna pick up where we left off. Are you fucking kidding me? Eat this, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh no, I fell on my goddamn head. What is his deal? Okay, stay up there, because I'm coming too. Motherfucker. <laughs> Get up here for the love of fuck's sake. I'm gonna claw my eyes out. Side effect right onto the deal and I fell off. I broke my ass. Stay up there, Eddie. Stay up there, Eddie. <laughs> Why? Why is this so difficult? What did I just do? What is this? <laughs> oh great, now I fell on my fucking head again. I'm gonna lose back here because Eddie Guerrero doesn't know shit about shit. What are you doing? Come here. Fuck you. Now that those are gone, will you use your brain? Jesus Christ. Eddie, I got big plans, man. I'm slamming you through this thing. If you don't like it, I don't give a shit. 
Call the helpline. 1-800-FUCK-YOU. <laughs> that was even funny. No! <laughs> Why am I the one who keeps falling off the thing? Eddie's only fallen off once. I g I'm not letting go of this plant. I'm fucking Dutch from uh, Red Dead 2. I have a plan. <laughs> Come here, you shithead. We're going through this deal. That's what's happening. There. We <laughs> okay, I kind of got got away scot free. He did not, so that worked out. How do we get out of here? I don't remember how to get out of here. But this is cool. This is like a little built-in hell in a cell ski back here. Fuck you. He came charging at me with a head of steam. I don't think so. There it is, okay. Whoops. <laughs> I guess I was supposed to press square. Uh-oh. Fucking surfboard deal. Guess I was supposed to press square over there to get out. I did not remember that, but Eddie... Eddie came to the rescue. But I think we have kind of exhausted some of our options back here. What the f... Oh, I, I was like, why am I falling? Oh, great. That we just did great damage to him right there. So, let's check out a new area. Because SmackDown Here Comes the Pain had excellent backstage areas, dude. Really, really good backstage areas. Russian leg sweep on the floor. You know that doesn't feel good, very, very good on the cement. You know what we can do. Ooh, this just got a lot more fun. Eddie, will you not stand behind the fucking forklift look at this look at the cars back here i know why they look like that it's so you can set up spots on the hoods of the cars eddie for fuck's sake like you can come up here and i can slam him on the car and it'll fucking explode just like shit 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 oh no oh man i got slammed on the fucking car Leg scissors around the throat. That's not what a triangle choke really looks like. <laughs> I love how many fucking nonsense submission moves there are in pro wrestling. It's fantastic. Okay. My, now my, my fucking head hurts. My CTE's kicking in. Eddie with the fucking big elbow off the car. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a... Oh, no, no. Let go of those tights, you fuck. Unbelievable. Referee. Make one call, will you? You fucking useless sack of shit. <laughs> now, Dan Dan's, here's something I want to point out. We will play through the story mode. Um, from start to finish. I don't know how long it's going to take, but what I do know is that we are not going to do it... Oh, no. We're not going to do it week by week by week by week by week. We're, we're going to break it up. So next week, I would not count... Look how stupid this is. You ready? <laughs> He's got a fucking leap like fucking Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. Eddie, you have to come up here because I don't think I can come down without hurting myself. So you have to come up here, unless... Can I press square? I can't press square to get down. You better hope this works, Eddie. Motherfucker! I think he just won. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Fucking believable. I win, or I fucking. <sighs> I should just cut that out. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. Son of a fucking bitch. Son of a bitch. Are you still back here? Can I go talk? To... I'm gonna go talk to Stephanie and tell her, hey, retcon that. It did not happen. <sighs> Where's the options menu? How do I change the fucking difficulty? Profile. You know what? Let's boost our ego a little bit. U.S. Champion? Who's that? Huh? Who's that? Who's the number one contender? Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, Kurt... Okay, never mind. Don't worry about who the contenders are. <laughs> Shit, we're facing a murderer's row, dude. <sighs> What's going on this week, man? Matt Hardy versus... Huh. <laughs> Hold the fucking phone. I'm defending the U.S. title against a <laughs> double murder suicide dude and the guy who I beat for the title last week 
He's in the main event? I'm calling bullshit shenanigans chicanery. Call him bullshit. Man, if there's anybody you never wanted to see again. <laughs> Let alone share the ring with. Goodness me. Now, we probably don't need to watch the entrances every time, because that would make these episodes way longer than they need to be. We do have a Matt fact, though. Matt has wrestled in 44 states. And being that this was almost 20 years ago now, I would imagine that Matt has wrestled in all 50 at this point, right? Somebody get Matt on the phone. Get Matt Hardy on the phone. Let's find out. But we're going to watch this entrance because now we get to see that beautiful U.S. championship around our waist. And what I was saying earlier, Dan Dance, is uh, I'm going to split these up. So it's not going to be every week for the rest of time we're only going to do SmackDown Here Comes the Pain story mode. I'm going to break them up. So n next week I would say you can expect an episode on... Let's decide right now. We're going to do an episode on... WCW vs. The World. We're going to play some WCW vs. The World. It's going to be a good goddamn time. What do you think about that? But, oh no! We, okay, that was amazing. Great reversal. I talked a little bit ago about upping the difficulty. But I'm going to be honest. I'm not having a... Shit! 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 That's an arm bar. I'm not having a super easy time with this. Benoit is kind of working me here. And you know, Eddie only beat us because we fell off the fucking roof of that goddamn truck. What are we doing fighting back there anyway? I was just back there minding my own business. <laughs> I was just back there minding my own business and Eddie Guerrero comes out of nowhere and picks a fight with me. Unbelievable. That's exactly what happened. You can check the tape. Drop that man neck first across the guardrail. You know what I mean? We're the heel. So we have to use every advantage we can get. We're gonna throw him into the stairs. We're gonna bash him off the guardrail. See this fucking corner over here? This corner right here? Put him in it, beat the dog shit out of him. Stomp a mud hole, walk him dry. Fuck you. That's for Nancy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Here's the deal, guys. Our Benoit jokes in poor taste. Yeah. Is murdering your wife and son in poor taste? Also, yeah. So, if you're going to get mad at me for trying to be funny on a show, you should be way more mad at him for what he did. Okay? The only time I've ever felt bad about making Benoit jokes is after I watched the Dark Side of the Ring uh, Benoit episode. And we spent so much time with Nancy's sister and Benoit's son that I was like, you know, everybody knows that I'm just, I'm being entertaining, I'm being silly, I'm trying to make everybody laugh. But what if by some off chance, fucking David Benoit happened to see one of my thumbnails and he clicks on it, and in that video I make a joke about his dad, you know? That's, that's the only thing that I feel bad about, so maybe I should stop fucking doing it. I love that back suplex with the elbow drop. I don't remember what Matt called that thing, but I don't know, man. I think the odds of him watching are pretty low, but I still do feel bad about it deep down. Not because of making fun of Chris Benoit, but because his son could possibly see it. That's all. I don't give a fuck about Chris Benoit. Wham! Get that man against the ropes. We're going to choke him. Joke redacted. Take the wind out of his sails, you know what I mean? Now let's work the legs, or just go for a pin. Near fall off the jackknife pin right there. <laughs> oh, he slaps the le the drop kick away. My brain is so wired to. Uh oh, he's looking for the armbar. This is a butt masher. Oh, I guess not. My brain is so wired into fire pro matches where I need to get my shit in and let the opponent get his shit in that. I just landed so much offense that immediately when Benoit slapped my dropkick aside, I thought, okay, let's let Benoit get some heat. <laughs> but I have to get that out of my brain because this is a fucking, 
This is not a, a simulation game. And the point is not to have a great match. We gotta win these matches, you know? So let's pick him up for this deal one more time. Drop an elbow into the black heart. What do you say to this? Big old corkscrew! Did Matt Hardy ever do that in his career? Nope. Stack him up. Benoit's kicking out. Benoit's kicking out of all my shit. Now Dan Dan's looking at this big old arm breaker. Boom! What are you guys playing right now? That's what I want to know. Sharpshooter ski! Tap those buttons. Tap those buttons. Get out of here. Get out of here. What are you guys playing right now? That's what I want to know. And last week I asked you what are you playing or what are you watching or what are you listening to. And you guys hit me with some, some pretty interesting answers. So I appreciate those of you who take the shit. I don't like that he has a special. We have to be ready to reverse at a moment's notice. Oh no, the triple Germans! Triple Germans. Our body's still yellow, so we can withstand some punishment before we're in danger of being put away. But check this out. Big face buster. Benoit is in trouble. Guess what? We're not letting up the attack on the midsection. We're going to drive the wind out of this guy. Constant attacks from behind. Because Benoit is the superior technical wrestler, there's no doubt about it. Shit. You hear me tapping those buttons? Oh, shit. Oh, no! I thought I timed it. I thought I timed it, but I didn't. Don't do it. Ooh, that was close. But, you know, Benoit had his moment in the sun. He probably feels pretty good about it, but he's not going to feel good about this. 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 There we go. Jesus Christ. Twist of fate. Drop him on his fucking head. Ref, count it. What are you doing? You piece of shit. How are you going to kick out of my twist of fate? We are having good matches so far. All of these have been, and in my opinion, pretty goddamn entertaining. Lots of back and forth action. Maybe, I don't know how to up the... Ooh, I don't really know how to up the dip difficulty. I didn't see an option for it in the uh, the menu where we were. What are you doing? F what the fuck is he doing? Dropkick. <laughs> Didn't see an option for it in the menu, so maybe I don't have to do it. But Benoit is giving me... He's, he's going for a weapon. He's got a table ski. Is he going to get DQ'd? No! Okay, apparently there's no disqualification. I didn't know that. That would have been nice to know. Check this out, you fucker. You want to go the table route with me? How about this? Boom! What do you think about that? Nobody saw a table spot coming in this match. Get in the ring, you fuck. I have something to show you, and it's called the Twist of Fate. Benoit. Nice knowing ya. Goodbye! Ref, no rope breaks here. Count it. One, two, three. First title defense in the books. Matt Hardy, version one. You know what? Attack him. I don't appreciate that he had the gall to kick out of the twist of fate. I'm not happy about it. So, Chris, you're going to get punished for it. Are we thinking chairs? Are we thinking fists? We're thinking fists this time. Matt, get that fucking ref out of here. Tell him something about something. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Why can't I get anything done? God damn it. <laughs> I don't think that really looks anything like Stephanie, but that does look quite a bit like Eric Bischoff. So, good likeness on Bischoff. What's going on the rest of the card? Lita versus Sable. Sable's going to pick up the win. That's big bullshit. Los Guerreros versus Big Show and A-Train. The heels take the victory.
I'm thinking, oh boy, Mr. McMahon himself. It's Mr. Vincent Kennedy, Mc Kennedy McMahon to you, take two. <laughs> the man who owns the whole industry, Mr. Vincent Kennedy McMahon. What's he doing here tonight? How are all you doing tonight? <laughs> We're going to do angry yelling Vince for everything he says. Good, I hope. Actually, you should all be grateful. <laughs> grateful you have something to do tonight in this piece of crap town. This hurts my throat. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. Matt Hardy, you're a great talent, no doubt. You're not like these other lowlife scum in this town. <laughs> you actually have a future in life. But don't get too cocky that I'm out here praising you. Remember, all WWE superstars are my property. And now they can no longer use TikTok or fucking Twitch and any other bullshit. They can't make their own podcasts anymore because WWE is a corrupt, morally bankrupt company. I can make you and I can break you. Whether you'll be in the WrestleMania main event next year or not is all up to me. So don't you forget that. That is all. <laughs> Mr. McMahon already flexing his authority before next year's WrestleMania. You better not cross the boss. Man, that hurt my throat. Guys, why the fuck would Vince McMahon come out <laughs> And just cut a promo specifically about one mid-card talent. <laughs> Why would that occur? Who's backstage? Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit. Yeah. Oh, see, I got a problem with both of, both of these guys. Got a problem with both of these guys. But, you know, Eddie is, has been under my skin for longer. <laughs> I still got something to say to him. Who do you think you are, Holmes? You know, man, I got a problem with you, S.A. I've got two little girls at home, S.A., and those two little girls worship the ground I walk on. They idolize me. And the other night when I walked in the room to say goodnight, and for them to show their father the respect he deserves, I saw something very disturbing, S.A. It looked on... Take two. I looked on their wall, and not only did they have a picture of me, but right next to me it was a poster of Matt. You know, it's, I'm like, I'm slipping into like a Carlito slash Razor Ramon impression here. Because I don't want to do like a super stereotypical Mexican accent. You know, I don't want to do a Cheech and Chong for Eddie Guerrero. Oh, ese, oh, ese. But in my heart, I knew. Uh, should I do Cheech and Chong for Eddie Guerrero? <laughs> I had to teach my little girls a lesson, man. So I got your poster, I ripped it up, and I burned it, ese. <laughs> So that's Cheech Marin. Should we do Tommy Chong? Oh, we, now we have a Matt Hardy line. Uh, so now Eddie's being a heel to his own daughters. And I think the heelish thing to say would be to bully him for that. So now we'll do Tommy Chong for Eddie. But you know what, man? I know what it is. You're jealous of me, man. And all these fans know it, I <laughs> I'm the better wrestler. And I'm the better looking, too, I say. Man, I lose superstar points because Eddie Guerrero's an abusive father. That doesn't make any fucking sense. We're not even booked tonight. Rey Mysterio is going up against Tajiri. A little skip ski on that one. We got a new champion. Rico going one on one against Big Show and A Train. That's a hate crime. And in the main event, we got a six man tag with a bunch of top guys. No U.S. champion. Unfucking believable. Not even booked. Losing superstar points. <sighs> now we're in Peoria, Illinois. What the fuck are they doing in Peoria, not Chicago? Fuck Peoria. <laughs> I'm from, from Illinois. I can say that. I can say fuck Chicago if I want to. Backstage. Who's back? Nobody. Nobody wants to talk to me anymore. L l definitely not Eddie Guerrero. Attributes. We do have some points here, huh? Definitely got to up our strength. So that's what we're going to do. Decision. Yes, continue. Okay, cool. On the, are we going to be booked? Yes. Triple threat U.S. championship match. Matt Hardy versus Eddie Guerrero versus Chris Benoit. This is actually fantastic fucking storytelling. This is really good. Rest in peace, Sean O'Hare. 
And unfortunately, both guys that I'm wrestling, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit, are no longer with us. That's a thing you'll always notice when we come back and play old wrestling games, is how many of these guys are no longer here. And yet, WWE doesn't want to provide anybody with health care. They, they don't want to pay for people's fucking hotels and transportation. Are you kidding? <laughs> people really don't realize how fucked up of a company WWE is. And how, like, abusive they are to their talent. I can't call them employees because technically they're independent contractors. Even though they're clearly not. Because an independent contractor can't be told where to go, what to do, what they can and can't do. That's not how it works. But Matt scored 1330 on SSATs. That's a fact. That's a math fact. This is an interesting match, man. Triple threat with the two guys that I've been feuding with. I'm saying we stack them up. Oh, man. Did they not add that animation yet? In the later games, you can throw one guy in the corner and then throw the other guy at him and they'll smush in the corner, but I guess that didn't exist here in 2003. <laughs> Big reversal. Chris, do one of you guys want to attack the other for fuck's sake? Eddie, thank you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look at Reversal City over here. I'm just going to stand back and get my taunt game on a little bit. Up that fucking finisher deal. Let these guys go to town on each other. Do some damage. Now the question is, would it be such a bad thing if I lose the U.S. title? Because that would mean we started off with a head of steam. Started off in a big way. We win a belt in the first episode. First match of the first episode. And we don't want to go into a WWE title feud as the mid-card champion. At least I don't. That's a pet peeve of mine. I hate when there's a wrestling game and the story mode is like, you know what you should do is win the tag team championship. And then as soon as you win the tag titles, they're like, you know, the next logical step would be to go after the Intercontinental Championship. And it's like, logically, okay, I have every belt now. This doesn't make any fucking sense. So it might not be a bad thing for us to ditch this mid-card title. I'm going to try my best to win, don't get me wrong. But if we lose, it's not skin off my ass, is what I'm saying. Eddie's going up. Eddie's coming down with a DDT. My voice is still fucked up from that Vince impression. <laughs> These guys are fucking me up, man. <laughs> I started off so cocky talking about having to up the difficulty. Look at Eddie, look at Eddie, look at Eddie. Fucking, what a clinic these two are putting on. Matt Hardy standing back, getting some fans. Greg Jackson. You know what I mean? Who watched UFC 253 this past weekend? By the time you guys see this, it was most likely not this past weekend, so I'm dating this recording a little bit. But did you see Israel Adesanya, the last style bender, put a fucking clinic on Buatino, Pola Costa? That, what a fucking performance that was. And I was talking to a buddy of mine, handy dandy Andy Jarek, the rough and tumble bad boy who never takes no for an answer and always plays by his own rules. <laughs> yes, that is all one nickname that we, I made up for him. I didn't make it up. Uh, so one of his friends made it up. I co-opted it. But... <laughs> uh, I was talking to my buddy Andy before the, the event... And he's like, who you got in title fights? And I was like, I got Reyes over uh, Jan, and I had Izzy over Costa. And he disagreed with me on Reyes and Jan. He nailed that prediction. I was wrong. And on Izzy Costa, he was wrong, and I nailed it. So we split the night 50-50 in our predictions. Check this out. That's the fucking franchiser. Shout out to Shane Asshole Douglas. I didn't mean Shane Douglas was an asshole. Triple German. I didn't mean Shane Douglas was an asshole when I said that. I was just trying to add a little bit of em emphasis. And I guess it would have made more sense to be like, Shane fucking Douglas. Or Shane goddamn Douglas. But what came out of my mouth was, Shane asshole Douglas. Uh oh, Crippler Crossface. He's got it locked in. Eddie is in no danger of tapping because his body is all blue. So I'm not really worried about breaking that shit up at all. I'm going to let him do some damage. Hurt that man. I'm going to upski my finisher bar a little bit. 
face buster. Ooh, you're gonna try to go after my knees, you fuck? You pizza shit? And here, I don't remember if I said this earlier, but here's my thought process is. I'm thinking we play one month in this introductory episode of SmackDown Here Comes the Pain Story Mode. So we will play our four SmackDowns, which this is the fourth one, and then we'll see what's going on at the pay-per-view. So hopefully we're booked. Big ol' suplex. Hopefully we're booked at the pay-per-view. Because if not, that'd be quite a, a letdown. Tell you what, let's get fucking nuts. If we are not booked at the pay-per-view, I will play another whole month right here in this episode. But if we are booked at the pay-per-view, that's going to be the main event of the evening, all right? Oh, my God! Chris Benoit going fucking nuts with the steel chair. Eddie Guerrero, show him something about something. Do some damage. I'm going to stand back here and get some fans. <laughs> Chris is going for the armbar. Chris... That's all well and good, but remember when you hit me with a chair? Eddie gets one first. But... Ah, oh, fuck. Fuck you. Fuck you. Shit. <laughs> no! Stay away! Crossbody to no avail. Son of an asshole, bitch! Eddie Guerrero DDT on the chair! Eddie Guerrero twist of fate! Boom! Put that guy away, ref! I guess just stand there, because I meant to press down circle and I accidentally pressed right circle. <laughs> so that didn't do a lot for me. But let's take this fucking turnbuckle pad cover off. Let's get real dangerous here. Chris, meet the steel, you pizza shit. Now tell me about this tornado DDT. Right on the chair! I know it wasn't on the chair, but we're gonna say it was. Eddie's trying to throw me in the corner because he's thinking frog splash, but. I'm not thinking Frog Splash. I'm... Shit. <laughs> that plan didn't really come together there, did it? Get off me, you fuck! Oh, God. Nothing like a big clothesline from a double murderer to ruin your day. <laughs> I'm laid out. This is big bad news. Now, Dan Dan's... You... Uh-oh, big headbutt? Yes, sir! Boom! Coming out of the sky! Chris, do me a favor. Eat shit. <laughs> One, two. Oh, man. That would have been some ultimate heel shit to steal his thunder like that. Retain the title off of his work. But Eddie Guerrero says, I don't think so. Kicks out at two. Barely gets the shoulder up. Doesn't want to bury his buddy's finish. So he kicks out at fucking 2.9. Eddie, save me, save me, save me. <laughs> He does the big cannonball flip. I love it. Get off my arm, you fucking asshole guy. <laughs> I want to do a real quick shout out to not only everybody who's in the comments every week, because I do notice the names that pop up on a weekly basis. I appreciate that quite a bit, but I want to give a shout out to the Patreon supporters as well. I know you can see their names at the beginning. Eddie, where are you going? You can't reach him from there. <laughs> You see their names at the beginning and ending of literally every video. Wham! That was a fucking death blow. Chris, check this out. But uh, I, I have to go out of my way to say, guys, you fucking rope break asshole. You really have no idea how much the Patreon support means to me and does for me. It makes a colossal difference in what I do. That's not an exaggeration. I'm not just trying to sound like a good guy and baby facing you guys. It makes a, a fucking world of difference. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I appreciate it very much. If you have been a longtime Patreon supporter, I appreciate it. If you're on the fence and you've thought about joining up and you just haven't yet, I recommend doing it. And obviously I would, right? Why would I not? But... There's a lot of shit over there. There's like over 10 exclusive podcasts. There's a whole season of Let's Play Friday that's exclusive to Patreon. There's all sorts of great shit over there. It's not just like you sign up at whatever level you want. You see no benefit from it. I do. I make all sorts of exclusive shit because I am constantly trying to find a way to make it more and more worth your dollar every time. So if you are a big supporter over there, thank you. I endlessly appreciate it. 
But now let's snap back into our heel persona. Fuck you, Eddie Guerrero. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris Benoit. Eddie's thinking Frog Splash. Hasn't been able to get up to the top just yet. Chris is thinking Armbar. I'm thinking Chair Shot. Just like this. Who's going to get it first? Any bitch could get it. But who's going to get it first? Eddie? Wham. Right to the top of the fucking skull. Chris? Let me tell you something about the twist of fate. That's what it's like. Eddie, I finally get my comeuppance on your fucking ass in my face. That'd be pretty sweet, actually. But, ass in my face in the sense that I timed that incorrectly and I missed my big moment. <laughs> you know what? That joke, the way I misspoke right there, reminds me. I got a problem. I love The New Day. I don't watch WWE, it's terrible. But I love The New Day. And I listen to their podcast because I really like those guys. How about some blood? Boom! Wide open! How about some blood? Double blood! I listen to their podcast because I love it. And I got a problem that I, I got a bone to pick with all of the New Day. They describe things that they don't like as cheeks and booty. I love cheeks. And I love booty. So who are you? To describe maybe the best thing in the world to use it as a negative what are you talking about you're out of your fucking mind Chris break up this Tom Foolery bullshit <laughs> I just had to get that off my chest because that's been bothering me for a long time Chris Benoit you set me up perfectly for a little bit of this big oh no knees to the midsection Here's the problem I have right now. Chris Benoit can eat shit. I want this win. Break his neck! I want this win over Eddie Guerrero. He's the guy who has been giving me problems from fucking day one. I could pin side effect. I could pin anyone I want. But Eddie... I gotta... He's, he's the one who... Shit, 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 shit. Oh no! The fucking animation! <laughs> I'm gonna fucking cut my head off. <laughs> that hurt. The fucking Vince voice has fucked my throat up for the rest of the episode. I was mashing buttons as I was getting up and I pressed square, which had me roll out of the ring. And then... The selling animation, because my head was red, made me sell outside. I couldn't get in the ring and break it up. Now we have a new U.S. champion. The only... <laughs> Never mind. Joke redacted. But it's, it's like I said in the beginning. It's okay. It's okay. We started off hot. Mid-card title reign. It's only going up from here. We're still in the 70s. Which is not WWE Championship territory yet. This this is make or break right here. This is backlash. Do we get a championship rematch, which we are legally contracted? It's it's in my fucking deal. It's in the paperwork. You understand? I should be getting a rematch for the title. And if I don't get one, I'm calling collusion. Look at this pyro. You don't really get that anymore. What's going on back here? Any bitch could get it. Training room. Chris Benoit, you're goddamn right I want to have a conversation with you. Am I making these episodes unnecessarily long? You're right. Matt, I don't remember asking you to stop by. Sableski? Chris Benoit's treating her like Nancy. I gotta stop. <laughs> Why did you want me to come here anyway? Hi, Matt. Sable's nice. Benoit, you're not very nice. Don't get your panties in a bunch. I got something I want to tell you. Sable, I heard you like strong men. And not only am I better... Take two. Not only am I a better wrestler than Matt, but I'm also better looking. This is exactly what Eddie said. I can tell by the look in your eyes that you want me. Interrupt him. Tell him to suck his own dick. What are you trying to do here? I'm far better looking than you. Now he's going to walk away. Sable, let's have a conversation. Thanks for helping me out there. 
Nice face move, experience plus five. I'm a heal! I'm a heal, goddammit! Are we booked? Are we even booked? Nope! We're not booked. Son of a fucking bitch. That means I have to do a whole other month on this episode. <laughs> what time are we at? We're already at an hour. How the fuck am I going to do a whole nother month? Son of a bitch. Because I look at the analytics and the fucking, when I do long videos, the average watch time is like 20 minutes, which is very impressive, I'm not going to lie. Undertaker's a new WWE Champion, but I'm going to put all this story time in and most of you guys aren't even going to see it. Hang on there, Matt. I wanted to offer you a shot at the tag team title. How do you feel about that? First of all, Jerry, you're not the fucking general manager out here. Big tittied Steph McMahon. <laughs> I don't want the tag titles. Eat my shit. Well, if that's the way you want it, sorry to take up so much of your time. That used to bother me back in the day. Uh, Jerry or JR going like, sorry to take up so much of your time. It made me feel guilty. I was like, oh, I didn't want to be mean. Okay, there's nobody back here. Are we even booked? <laughs> nope. Chris Benoit is defending the U.S. title against Edge. And he's going to defend it. He's definitely going to defend it. Rey Mysterio is in the main event with John Cena and Brock Lesnar. And Brock's going to pick up that win. Now, I committed to doing another whole month here, but that's one week down already. We weren't even fucking booked. Let's get Matt Hardy on the card. What do you say? <laughs> Who's back here? Anybody? Corridor. Okay, we can go to the GM room to talk with Steph, or we can go to the corridor. Let's find out what Stephanie's wearing in the corridor, you know what I mean? <laughs> Matt, what do you want? I'm sorry, excuse me. With her flip phone. Hello? Oh, hey, how's your room? This bitch, man. This isn't a good time to talk. No, I'm sorry, that's nothing. Listen, all you need to do is just sign the papers. And then... You, I, I'm gonna give her shit, I'm a heel. You have no idea what's important. You think you're more important than this phone call? Yeah, this is important. This is my life. It is your life. It will be your life tonight. Are we going to go one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker? <laughs> That'd be great. He's a champ. Because tonight in a non-title match, you will face Taker. <laughs> oh, dude, I fucking nailed that. Is that where Teddy Long got it from? You get it. Or take two. You got it. Now get the hell out of here. I lose a superstar point because I pissed her off, but here's the deal, man. We just got a fucking match with the WWE Champion. And if you don't think that I'm going to give this everything I got to get a pinfall victory over The Undertaker, you're fucking nuts. Check out Jericho's neck beard. <laughs> Oh, this is when the theme got changed again and it had lyrics. Do you remember the short time? It was a pretty short amount of time that Undertaker had this theme song, but it was all like one crazy long guitar solo instead of these lyrics. I remember that. Sorry, I trailed off while I was talking because I got a text. I had to find out what the fuck was going on. I'm a little bit annoyed. Undertaker is the WWE Champion. He did not come out with the belt. This is a big one. This is where we can... Oh, fuck. This is where we can get back on track. We won the US title. We lost it, what, two weeks later? But we can really set ourselves apart and make a big splash, son of a bitch, if we can pick up a victory over the WWE Champion. That's big business. So that's what the fuck shit. That's what the fuck we're gonna do. Hit that drop kick, second time's a charm. Let's talk about these fucking jackknife pins, dog. Holy shit! That was way more common back in this time for, like, one counts weren't really a thing in the early 2000s. And if you think I'm wrong, there's two possibilities. Number one, I am wrong. And I just don't remember very well. Number two, I'm right. 
and you can prove it to yourself by watching clips from the early 2000s. I feel like the one count was popularized fit within the last seven years, I, I would say. That sounds about right to me. You guys can let me know if that's true or not. Taker is building his special way faster than I am, and I'm gonna call bullshit on that. I'm a heel, so I should be calling bullshit on practically everything. But especially that. He's already got the advantage. He's the fucking Undertaker, first of all. Second of all, he's WWE Champion. Third of all, we're goddamn Matt Hardy. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> we're getting our shit in for sure. The fans are chanting for Taker. Now you'll notice that when I do uh, 616 Smackdowns, that, and most of them, pretty much all of them, have been Let's Plays so far, uh, where oh, we take a, a set game, we play, we play it for a while. You'll notice that I, what, one of the things I like to do is sit out from doing my own commentary, and we listen to the game's commentary. Well, as you may have noticed, Smackdown Here Comes the Pain took the great commentary from SmackDown Shut Your Mouth and they just cut the feature out entirely. There's no commentary in this game. There's not even a ring announcer, which you've probably noticed by now. Why did they do that? I have no idea. I think it was a big mistake. It really cuts down on the, I guess, the presentation, the immersiveness, as it were. But yeah, what a bummer, man. Because, like, just bring its commentary was so fucking bad. And then Shut Your Mouth really did a good job to improve it, and then here comes the pain, they were like, fuck it! <laughs> this is a fucking tie ball game right here, man. I got a yellow body, he's got a yellow body. We gotta keep this going, a little bit of side of... Wait a minute, I can't even hit him with a side effect? Left, left circle, left circle is the side effect. Wham! I love how the head shakes around right there. This is a great animation right here. This pickup, boom, right into the grapple. Block that punch, I don't think so. Big drop kick town. But yeah, I think they fucked up picking the commentary up. I don't know why they did that. Cross body, what do you have to say to this, Undertaker? Never mind, you have an answer for it. <laughs> but I, I just said a second ago, um, pretty much every episode, of 616 Smackdown since its premiere has been a Let's Play where I choose a game and we play through it, we get a good look at it and have some fun. The episode that premiered this show, The Evolution of Hell in a Cell, where we took a look at the first five Smackdown games, which does include this game, and we checked out how Hell in a Cell has changed over the years. You know, that video was quite a bit of work because I had to write it, first of all. I had to re record my voiceovers of reading my script. Um, I had to go all around the internet and find video clips and still images. I had to play all the SmackDown games to record my own footage because that was all my own footage. Then I had to cut it all together. Oh fuck, I wasn't expecting that fucking crossbody block over the top rope. <laughs> so that was the 616 SmackDown episode that has been the most work so far. and. Views-wise, a lot of just the playthroughs do just as good, if not better. So it, it kind of like made me think, is it really worth it to do those scripted deep dive episodes? Not just like, oh, I'd be wasting my time, blah, blah, blah. But is, I mean, is that what you guys want to see? Because looking at the, the numbers, it's not at the top of your priority list, that's for sure. I think we reversed it. Yes, indeed we did. Fuck you! I don't think so. And he still gets up before we do. Great. So you guys let me know. That Evolution of Hell in a Cell episode... I don't, I don't need to know if you liked it. I know you guys liked it because I can see the thumbs up and thumbs down. But let me know if you want or if you're looking forward to more scripted episodes like that. Because if you are... I'll do more. I'll tell you I have a completed script for the evolution of the ladder match. And that one's going to be a hell of a lot of work. So if you guys want to see it, let me know. I will make it a reality. Because I, I, I do like the script quite a bit. <laughs> but I, you know what the thing is, is I own an original Xbox somewhere. I have no idea where it is. 
I don't know what happened to it. Fuck! I have no idea what happened to it. Um, and I, I think I own Raw 2 as well, but I have no idea what happened to it. I can't find it. So when I do the Evolution of the Ladder Match episode, I was actually going to reach out to you guys to see if any of you own an Xbox and Raw 2, and if anybody would be willing to record some footage for me that I could use. That would be awesome. I would definitely give you a producer credit, gameplay credit, if someone could do that for me, because I don't know where my shit is. <laughs> Which makes getting footage a little difficult. <laughs> and honestly, I looked around YouTube to see if anybody had recorded Raw 2 ladder matches and has the footage that I need, which is basically the, the fact that it's like the only game ever made that has both ladders, the tall one and the standard one. I can't find any video proof of that. I know it's true, but I can't find any video proof of it. So even if I... Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Big choke slam. Oh, I hit the fucking back of my head on the deal! And... Undertaker just ran away for some reason. This We're in a precarious position right now. We gotta get Taker... We gotta get him hurt. Because he's, he's still dealing with yellow shit. We got a red head. That's not good. But what I was gonna say... <laughs> was, I can't even find the footage I need. So if somebody can provide me, check this out. Twist of Fate! THROUGH THE ANNOUNCE TABLE! That was fucking fantastic. I think we've had a good showing here, so even if we happen to lose, our stock is gonna go up in defeat. But that doesn't mean I'm giving up. If anybody could provide me with that footage, that would be fucking sick. I would make it worth your while. Fuck! I reversed it again. <laughs> you, you can hear me tapping the buttons. I got real quiet. I completely dropped out of my commentary because I knew I was going to be in trouble as soon as he stood up. We're still in trouble right now, man. There's so many moves that I can't hit him with because they're like, oh, my heart is not strong enough. And I guess technically that's true, but it would be nice. Big back suplex off the middle rope. Boom! Ref, what can you do for me? Oh. This is a competitive match. I'm proud of this match. I can't fucking do anything to this guy. <laughs> and I keep saying I'm proud of this match because I like I feel like at any second I'm just fucked. <laughs> oh my god. Like he could he could go for the pin at any time and I think my my night would be over. <laughs> But Matt Hardy will not die, goddammit. That's the slogan. I'm sticking to it. Even if they started Undertaker out with a fucking major handicap. They gave him a much faster finisher meter. Matt Hardy will not die. Matt Hardy will not, all, will not get the fucking back suplex deal. <laughs> I have an idea. If I can shit. Not if I can shit. Oh no, oh no! Undertaker only looks like that, you Ugh, I can't even speak. I hate this animation. Oh! How did the tombstone bust me open? That's weird. I don't like that animation because how the fuck do you explain Matt Hardy not just falling on his head when Undertaker takes both of his hands off? <laughs> you know what I mean? What the fuck is that? Like, Matt Hardy could just let go and he would have rolled out to see. <laughs> oh man, we're getting some shit in here. Taker, son of a bitch, he reversed it. That's a big back elbow. We almost have another finisher. It's that fucking running side effect looking deal. I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. Big leapfrog. Let's make it count with the big leg drop! Guillotine leg drop off the top rope! Off the ropes, come back! 
Arm drag! We are dangerously close to securing another finisher, and if we can hit The Undertaker with another twist of fate, after that first one through the announce table, I am confident. <gasps> we reversed it again. We reversed it again. I know we did. The animation's a giveaway. Boom! If Undertaker doesn't put his hand up, then you know you reversed it. <laughs> Those are the tells that you pick up when you've played this game for 15 fucking years. Longer than that now, what, 18? We got him in the corner. Another one of these big deals. Splash Mountain Bomb, how about it? Boom! That's it. We just put away the WWE Champion. Count it, ref. This is that good. <laughs> we got him in a bad way. Got him in a bad way. Middle of the ring. Tell me about the twist of fate. Undertaker cannot survive. Unbelievable. We are not going to make the mistake of trying to attack the Undertaker. We are just going to gloat. Celebrate our victory. So check this out, what we've accomplished in such a short time. Get the fuck out of here, Mike Keogh, you shithead. In such a short time, we have won the WWE United States Championship. We also lost the title. But then, Vince McMahon comes out. He's talking only about us. And we pick up a clean, clean ski victory over the WWE Champion, The Undertaker. I gotta tell you something, I think this Matt Hardy guy is destined for greatness. Wearing the crimson mask, but it's no big deal. It looks like Vince McMahon is whispering in his own ear. <laughs> Rewind that back if you didn't catch it. Opening match, Undertaker eats a pinfall loss to Matt Hardy. You better give me some superstar points of that one. Here comes Taz. Hey Matt, next month there will be an event in London and... I was told to ask if you were interested in participating. I'll participate. I see. It should be a good trip. Thanks, Taz. Alright, so we're totally going to break even. They took a superstar point away, but we earned two by beating The Undertaker. So... Son of a fucking bitch. We should have got more. We should have got plus fucking nine or ten for that. God damn it. <laughs> Picking up a win over The Undertaker? What are you, nuts? Who's backstage? Lesnar. I'm steering clear of Lesnar. That's, a, that's just that's a bad idea to go talk to Brock Lesnar. What the fuck is this? Me and Sean O'Hare against Chavo and Rhino? I don't want to fucking participate in this bullshit. I also considered doing this as Rob Van Dam. I obviously decided against it, but I thought about it. This always bothered me. What you're seeing right now, this entrance, walking down the ramp, aggressively looking side to side, walking up the stairs, getting in the ring. These are all completely... I hate that walking animation right here where the guy just walks in a fucking circle. Those are all completely generic animations. Those are not tied to any specific person. So I always felt like when guys didn't get a good entrance and they just got the generic deal i was like oh i'm so sorry you got fucked over you're finally in a video game and they don't even give you your own entrance but look rhino had his his appearance was tied to rhino but all of this is generic here we go now that he's in the ring he gets his own deal so out of the four animations for rhino's entrance two of them were generic and that's just cutting corners on behalf of yukes Let's check out Chavo here. Number one, tied to Chavo. How about the ramp walk? Also Chavo, okay, 2-0. and oh. Can we keep it going? How about the stairs or the ring entrance? You can tell they were high on Chavo here. 3-0. and oh. This is a straight four Chavo entrance. All of this was animated specifically for Chavo Guerrero. Okay, so at least I get to play as Sean O'Hare. I, man, Sean O'Hare was somebody I considered doing this, um, 
season mode as. You can tell that everybody that I'm talking about, oh, I considered being this guy or that guy. They're all guys that were not super main eventers. I knew for a fact I didn't want to play as like Austin, I didn't want to play as Rock. Uh, I wanted to play as guys who I felt like, you know what, let's give them a really cool chapter in their career. Let's bring him up top big time for this middle rope suplex. Looking good. And this is like an in-between match of all in-between matches, right? <laughs> like, why are we even doing this? Let's get Matt Hardy in here. V1, a little bit of double team action. Well, that didn't work out. I do remember, now that I think about it, that double team move specifically. I, I kind of did always have trouble timing that one. Like the drop down into the other guy's offensive maneuver. I never really got it to work out for me. But it is what it is. Tie him up in the tree a woe. How about a little bit of this? We got Chavo on yellow body already, which feels super fast, but I think it's just because we're coming off a match with the Undertaker. <laughs> How about some more double team action? What do you think? Matt Hardy opening up the ribs for a horrible fucking body shot. From Sean O'Hare. Making it happen. Tell him about this move. Gut Buster. We're going to get this torso red real quick. My plan is to never let Rhino in the ring at all. Bash him on the fucking knee right there. Shit, 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 shit. Fuck. That's not good. And Rhino has a special build up. Rewind, <laughs> rewind real fast. And watch Rhino not be able to decide who he wants to face. Between me and the referee, his head was like darting back and forth. <laughs> that was funny. That's a beautiful animation on that fucking suplex. Whatever kind of modified suplex that was. Backhand to the ribs. A little bit of gut buster action. See, this is a domination. This is a straight domination. Let's get Matt back in here. Stomp the fucking shit out of this guy. Hit him with that big drop kick in the corner. Why not? Rhino, I'm actually a big fan of yours. I like I like you quite a bit. I've always enjoyed watching you. You had some excellent matches in TNA. I'm thinking of the Detroit Street Fight with Christian. It was a fucking barn burner. And I'm putting you over to the moon because I'm, I'm sad to say I'm going to fucking kill you now. <laughs> now, Dan Dan's, I got another question for you guys. Who were your favorite wrestlers to play as here in SmackDown. Here comes the pain. Side effect. Put them down. Because here comes the pain as a great roster from Triple H, Austin, Rock, Taker, Kane, Angle, Lesnar. Then you got the WCW stalwarts like Goldberg, Nash, Scott Steiner, Booker T. I think the word stalwarts just came out of my mouth, which I don't think I've ever said before in conversation. I could have said staples, but for some reason I said stalwarts. <laughs> Is my vocabulary expanding? Maybe. Check this out. BAM! Here's what I'm thinking. We pick Rhino up. Hit him with this. Wham! I used that as my finisher in uh, SmackDown Just Bring It, I want to say. Matt Hardy, thanks for fucking nothing. I called you in to make sure Chavo didn't fuck me up, and he, you let him fuck me up anyway. Rhino's looking for that Gorski, and that's going to be a problem. We're not going to let him hit it. Oh! Big clothesline. Fuck on my brain. <laughs> oh! Did you see that? Rewind that. That was a beautiful sequence. Rhino ran at me as fast as he could, and I threw this beautiful Mirko Crow Cop high kick and just fucked his day up. Matt Hardy, twist of fate! Rhino's fucked. Go for the cover. I, ex I guess I accidentally pressed the wrong button. Whatever. Why is Matt Hardy still in here? This is fucking... Now this is an AEW. Another twist of fate. Get rid of him! Chavo. Fuck you. I timed that. Why is my... Why are my button presses not working the way I want them to? Two times I wanted a pin and didn't get it. Hit him with that deal, whatever that is. I like it. Chavo, fuck him. <sighs> fuck this fuck. 
Fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> this referee. I woke him up real quick there, didn't I? That means he was faking. He was full of shit. I also use that as a finisher in SmackDown, too. Ref, get out of the fucking corner. I need to hit Chavo. This referee is goddamn brain dead. I've had just about enough of it. Pump handle slam. Shout out to Raph. How about it? Chavo, get out of here. Now it's been too long and Rhino's done selling my shit so I can't even hit him with the fucking deal and go for the pin. Ref, count it. Shit in my ass. <laughs> Rhino, fuck you. Chavo wants the pin, he's not gonna get it because we're gonna bring Big T, Big Terry over here. I called him Big Terry because if you listen to the Major Wrestling Figure podcast, uh, which is Matt Cardona and Brian Myers' show, I highly recommend that show. Extremely entertaining. I am not a wrestling action figure collector at all. I haven't been since I was a kid. But their enthusiasm for what they do is so infectious. I love it so much. Highly recommend it. They call him Big Terry. So I was piggybacking their joke. I don't know Rhino. I would never call Rhino by his real name in real life. <laughs> It was just a joke. Just a bit. Not trying to be a douchey wrestling fan using his real name. <laughs> but that is also the third time you just witnessed that I hit a finisher and went for a pin and it registered as a different button. So, not very happy about that. Ref move. Chavo's down after the side effect. Down circle. Thank you. Beautiful. Establishing the side effect as a worthwhile maneuver, a dangerous maneuver that you can pick up a win with right there. Putting Rhino down for the three count. Mike Kyoto, how dare you touch me? I always hated this animation too, where the partner gets in the ring and they're like, oh, we won? It makes the partner look like such a doofus. <laughs> Some of you guys are probably like, you're nuts, but... Again, those are things that you notice when you've played this game for almost two decades. <laughs> you notice the intricacies of all of the, uh, the animations. <sighs> so where are we going? Are, are we in week three or are we in week four? Skipski. Ultimo Dragon versus Steven Richards in a cage match on the main event. Interesting. That would be a really good match. I would watch it. I would. I bet that would be very entertaining. But U.S. champion nowhere in sight. WWE champion nowhere in sight. But you got to get fucking Ultimo and Stevie there in the main event. Here's what's chapping my ass right now. Who's back here? Don't be Lesnar. It's Vince. Do we even... Ah, let's give him a shot. This is going to hurt my throat again. My throat still hurts. Did you need to see me about something? How are you today, sir? Or there's someone I want to fight. Now, see, I feel like a heel would how are you today, sir? A heel would kiss his ass. And the baby face would be like, you know, I do want to talk to you. I want to fight somebody. So we're going to heal it up. Matt Hardy, do you know how I've reached such a high level of success? Because I have ruthless aggression. That's why, take two, that's what you lack the most. So if you're just planning on kissing my ass, then get the hell out of here. And we lost the superstar point, but it's okay because I feel like I did the right thing. The heel would wind up looking like a fool by kissing his ass. U.S. title in the opener, Benoit Angle, going to have a Royal Rumble 03, take two. <laughs> a Royal Rumble 03 classic. Are we booked? Nope. Kurt Angle wins the U.S. title. Ultimo Dragon's on a major winning streak here. You know what I'm really noticing is, if you look at this, is we're seeing established feuds. Ultimo Dragon's in there with Steven Richards again. Edge is in there with Lesnar, which I think is more than once that's happened now. So this game is tracking several feuds that are going on, whether we're involved with them or not. But Dan Ans, this is the big moment. Judgment Day. It's our second pay-per-view. This episode's got to be fucking hour and a half long. We're going to start the show, and at this point, I hate to say, our, <laughs> our fingers are crossed that we're booked. Let me tell you much how, how much I hated this pay-per-view set. 
in 2003. Look what's behind it. See the bricks and the fire and everything? It's a cool looking set, and in front of it, just a bunch of steel girders for no reason. Do we want to talk to Goldberg? He's not even on the same show as us. Can we see what the card is? No. So should we talk to Goldberg because we might not even be booked? If we're going to talk to Goldberg, we should at least use this, these points that we have. Get that strength up. We can't afford anything else right now. <sighs> Attributes, profile. You know what? I do want to see my profile real quick. Matt Hardy, what's our record? We're 4 and 2. Okay. What are our losses? We lost to... We lost our, the title in the Triple Threat and we lost to Eddie backstage. Let me tell you something, that fucking... That backstage bullshit shouldn't have counted. Alright? Shouldn't have counted. This is amazing! I love that this has all these stats here. Jesus Christ. I'm nervous about talking to Goldberg. I'm kind of just stalling. Let's do it, we're talking to Bill Goldberg. What's up, William? <laughs> what do you want? Are you interested in teaming up with me? I want to fight. I want to fight him. To be the man, you've got to beat the man. Me! Oh, he's going to punch us in the face. <laughs> that clap. I'm sorry, I just woke up Patches the Ghosty who's sleeping next to me. I, I added that clap there because I knew it was coming. Patch, I'm sorry I woke you up, buddy. Come over here. I'm sorry I woke you up. <laughs> He's like, it's okay, you lost your superstar point. <laughs> Are we booked? Nope. Not even on the car. We got knocked out by Goldberg. Dan Nance, this was 616 SmackDown. Let's at least run through the card. Bubba Ray and Devon retain the titles over Nash and Shawn Michaels. That's a great match. Undertaker versus Lesnar for the WWE title. What do we think? I'm going to say... You know what? Undertaker's confidence is shot because we beat him. Lesnar's been on a tear. Lesnar wins the title. Told you. Triple H versus The Rock for the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm not on Raw. I don't know what they got going on there, but this is Triple H we're talking about. He pins The Rock. Told you. <laughs> That's Judgment Day, Dan Dance. Thank you. What the fuck does Jerry Lawler have to say to us now? Hang on there, Matt. I wanted to offer you a shot at the tag team title. How do you feel about that? I don't want the tag titles. Dan Dance, this was 616 SmackDown. This was episode one of our SmackDown Here Comes the Pains season mode playthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll pick it back up pretty soon. I love you. I'll see you next week. Hey, Matt. This is my hometown, you know. There's a great bunch of people in this city, and you're going to hear from them tonight. Now, Dan Dan's on this episode of 616 SmackDown, where we're picking up the SmackDown Here Comes the Pain season mode run with Matt Hardy. Do we keep our heel shit going, or do we turn babyface? So we can say... You must be really excited. Have a good show. All right? Or we can say, uh, yeah, that's great. I got it. We're Matt Hardy. We're heel, man. I feel like we should keep this heel shit going. And what gets better heel heat than being mean to good old JR? Also, look how good JR's character model is. That's a very well-defined ear and sideburn. <laughs> but let's be a heel, man. I hate to do it to JR, but we got to do it. What's his problem? What's weird is that he said that right to Matt's face. Can you imagine if somebody said something shitty to you and while still looking at them you went, what's his problem? <laughs> <clears throat> Let's get a proper introduction here. What's up, Dan Dans? Welcome to 616 Smackdown. It is the first week of June here on our Here Comes the Pain season mode. Now if we come to our guy, just as a little update, if you didn't watch the first episode of this series, uh, we are 4-2. We have... A WWE United States Championship under our belt already. Who's back here that we can talk to? Rey Mysterio. Let's see what Rey's got going on. Hey, Matt. What's up? 
We can say, let's have a match, or don't you need an adult supervision to hang around here? We're a heel, man. Let's go with it. Also, I love this blue, white, and gold aesthetic that Ray has in this game. Sure, when people look at me and you, they see a big size difference. Sizes and everything, man. I think you tied that mask on a little too tight. Or, well, let's stop the talking and see what you've got in the ring. This would guarantee us a match tonight, but it might get in the way of our JR angle that we just started. So we're just going to be a dick. Yeah, keep talking. I'll be seeing you around. I hope so, Ray. I will smash your fucking face off the wall. Do you understand? What are we doing tonight? Absolutely nothing. Fantastic. We've got a main event here between Rikishi and Sean O'Hare. One guy whose career is dead and the other guy who is dead dead. I'm so sorry. That was so rude. <laughs> but Rey Mysterio has a Cruiserweight title match. Is he going to get the job done? Nope, he's not. You want to know why? Because fuck him. That's why. Shout out to the big man Rikishi picking up a win there. I do... Here we go. This is what the people paid to see. A little bit of version one action back here. Get the t-shirt. What the fuck is this? You're on the list for the international tour. The fans will be laughing at WWE if you go. Fortunately, you are not going anywhere because tonight I'm going to kick your ass. So we just got taken from behind by Val Venus. Wait a minute. That didn't sound good. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Val Venus, you have fucked up, my good man. Check out this gut buster action. Now, I want to say that Last time I uploaded one of these, there was somebody in the comments, I don't remember who it was, I'm sorry. BAM! Beat this dude to death with the sledgehammer, who's accused me of calling the Gut Buster a Gourd Buster. That is not what- Oh, fuck. <laughs> that is not what I was saying. And I'm still not over how long the handle is on the sledgehammer. Look at this thing! It's like a fucking rake. It doesn't look like a sledgehammer. But it looks enough like a sledgehammer to beat Valvinus up with it. Let's knock these barrels over. Fuck these barrels. Let's knock Val Venus over with a shot to the dingoes. You know what I'm saying? The dingoes? What the fuck are the dingoes? <laughs> now, Dan Dans, I'm recording this on November 1st, 2020. Uh, you guys have all now seen the big announcement, which is the reveal of the history of Halloween... Can you come down here so I can slam you on this goddamn thing? Come here. Come here, asshole guy. This is this is horrible. <laughs> you guys have seen the announcement of the history of Halloween. And I hope you guys are as excited as I am. I gotta say, I feel like you guys are as excited as I am. The the re reaction... I can't speak because I'm looking at fucking Mike Kyoto when I want to be looking at Val Venus. There we go. The reaction to that announcement has been, ooh, yeah, let's get stupid up here. It has been so positive, I can't even believe it. I compared the comments on that video to the comments on some of the other... <gasps> no! <laughs> Don't do it! Okay, you had to take damage too, so it's fair. The comments on that video compared to the comments... The, the sheer amount, the volume of comments that came through on some of the other recent videos... Big spike DDT! And there's a huge difference, man. So it seems like you guys are super excited for the history of Halloween, which will premiere on 616-2020. I got a question for you guys. Remember on Halloween 6 when Michael electrocuted that guy? Uh, it looked... No! <laughs> I wanted to electrocute Val Venus, not the other way around! Oh, you pizza shit. Reverse DDT for your deeds. Check this out, you fuck. A little bit of this. Drop him on his head. Wham! Twist of fate. Ref, count it. We're going to fucking One, Europe. Two, three. <laughs> All this over an international tour that he didn't want me to go on. Unfucking believable. But some of the comments that have come through about the history of Halloween have been like, oh man, that's a series of ups and downs. I can't wait for you to cover this terrible movie or this great movie. Here we are at Insurrection in Newcastle, England. I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to cover the whole series from 1978 all the way up to 2021. I always loved this set with the big red X. I would play here all the time in exhibition mode. 
So if you did not see the announcement of the history of Halloween, you weren't paying attention. You should have been. It's going to be a great time. Look at this fucking dickhead in the ring. Here comes Val to the ring. What is Val going to say? Well, I've heard that Val attacked Matt before we came out here for this tour. Well, I wanted to say that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you guys had to see Matt on this trip out here. I tried to prevent the WWE from bringing... Take two. From being laughed at because of Matt's terrible wrestling. But since Matt is already here, we have to face the music. But have no worries. I will fight against him because I can make the match look a whole lot better. Matt is out here. It looks like Matt can't stand the trash talking. Well, Matt is insulted. <laughs> Do you like my impressions, guys? Okay, so you're here, Matt. Why don't you choose the type of match we're having tonight? Remember, you should pick an exciting match type because your style bores the crowd to death. They weren't bored when I twist of faded your stupid ass into the goddamn concrete last week, you shithead. So hurry up and choose. Well, if you'd shut the fuck up, I would. Table match, submission match, hardcore match, normal match. We gotta go for table match, right? If, if you guys were watching the show and you had these options, you'd go for a table match, right? Ooh, but I feel like the heel would go like, I've got a match that nobody's gonna see coming. The most hard-hitting, brutal, technical match imaginable. A wrestling match. I think Kurt Angle did that with Chris Benoit one time. But we're gonna go for table match because I can't resist. Okay, no problem. That's fine with me. The next match is Matt versus Val. Matt talks the talk, but can he walk the walk? Well, we sense a lot of hatred between these two. What a match it's going to be. Jesus Christ, can we just fucking get to it? <laughs> is Rey Mysterio back here? No, but Chris Jericho is. I'm not trying to fuck with Chris Jericho right now. I, he's a heel too. It doesn't really make sense for me to get involved with him. So, look at this main event action. In the middle of the card, we've got US Champion Kurt Angle, which is the belt I used to have, against Undertaker and... But in the main event, Matt Hardy and Val Venus in a table match. Now, is that because the three guys in the middle of the card just want to beat the traffic and get out of there early? It's possible. But we're going to take... We're going to take everything we can. We have a new U.S. champion. The Undertaker takes the title from Kurt Angle. But if you pay attention, the champion didn't even get pinned. Undertaker pinned the dead man <laughs> to win the title. Oh, man. Here we go. Main event time. 2000 bucks for this. I'll take that. Val Venus. I was never really a Val Venus guy, but... Maybe that's because Val Venus was not made for me. <laughs> Val Venus was a character that was created for the female viewer. Wrestling was predominantly male and still is a predominantly... Uh, have a, they have a male demographic. But Val Venus has completely lost his fucking mind. Which if, if anybody knows about what he's been up to lately, you know that. Matt Hardy is a guy who has lost his mind on several occasions, but I think we're all better for it. <laughs> and if you guys did not know, Matt is dominant at putt-putt golf. Absolutely dominant. We don't have to watch all these entrances the entire time. For instance, we can skip here. But it's fun to get, the, get a little bit of the entrances every time out, you know what I mean? Val, ooh, he thinks he's got a big dick just because he's whacking me with this suit. What the f- Why does Val Venus have the three amigos in his fucking moveset? What is this bullshit? Unbelievable. Oh, he thinks it's table time already? Alright, check this out. Bitch! Go behind and then get countered. You know? <laughs> we are a heel. So we'll, we'll, we will allow that to happen. Let's let the babyface get his early heat. Until we sneak up on him with one of these right here. Snap suplex. Because I don't need three to put you down, piece of shit. <laughs> now, Dan Dance, fuck you, Mike Kyoto. What I want to know is, did you guys see the history of Halloween announcement coming? I will tell you that of all the hints that I dropped by wearing 
a Halloween shirt in the final installment of the History of Resident Evil. I changed my Twitter location to Haddonfield, Illinois. Get away from me, motherfucker. I, um... At the end of the History of Resident Evil Part 5, if you stuck around, I actually flashed Michael Myers' face on the screen for .02 seconds. And I will tell you that with all of these hints... Double underhook, bro. That was beautiful. With all of these hints, there were only two people that caught it, that played the pause game, and then contacted me either on Twitter or Instagram to say, like, hey, you know, I saw this at the end. And I played dumb. I was like, what is that? <laughs> and uh, one of the responses came through was just like, oh, it was at the end of the history of Resident Evil. And I was like, it was? <laughs> Had to have some fun with it, but... Yeah, man. I'm just, I'm very glad that you guys are super excited about it because I am too. And it's going to be a great time. And do not fret. There were a lot of people who were so happy that I was branching out into movies and they were like, well, it's not a video game, but don't get it twisted. The video game content isn't going anywhere. There's still going to be plenty of video game stuff to go around. Uh, and I'll tell you right now that season two of Triangle X Squared Circle is in production. I'm working on it. I'm working on episode one right now. Not right now. Obviously, I'm recording this right now. But as not as we speak, either. What term? Of, what phrase can I use for this? Um, when I'm not doing this, <laughs> I will be working on that. Check this out. Can we put him away? Twist of fate through the table. Val Venus, eat my fucking balls. You're going to get attacked. None of our attacks have gone successfully so far, but I feel like we're in a good spot. I have been informed that my superstar points need to be higher than the victims in order for the attack to go successfully. And I'm betting on Matt Hardy here. Mike Kyoto, fuck you. Yes, finally! See, this is Val Venus getting his comeuppance. I choppy choppy yo pee pee, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I keep fucking up. Usually I like to edit out all of the load screens so that this loads, uh, it goes smoother. But the thing is, I keep talking through and into a lot of the loading screens. And I don't want to cut it and then it's hard to swallow. You know what I mean? <laughs> I want it to run smoothly or not run at all. Second week in June, Atlanta, Georgia. This is WCW territory. And speaking of WCW... I want to see if our buddy Rey Mysterio is back here. We've got Val Venus, or we've got Kurt Angle. Now, Kurt is a former U.S. champion. He doesn't really have anything we want right now, so not really anything to gain by going after him. Val Venus, we put in his place, put him through a table. Do we even give him the time of day? I mean, we do risk not being booked, I guess. Why didn't I go to my wallet? I didn't do that on purpose. Maybe we should go to Stephanie's office. Let's see what's going on with Steph. Looking good as hell, like she always does. What can I help you with? We can go for a title shot, a show transfer. Superstar points were what, 72? That's bullshit. Title shot, what are we in contention for? The tag titles, US title, cruiserweight title. So this is Tajiri, Undertaker, and who gives a fuck? Because we don't want to be a tag wrestler right now. Let's get the fuck out of here. I don't want to go to Raw yet. There's a lot more we can still do on SmackDown. I'm not going to give the time of day to Kurt or Val Venus. Let's see what's in store tonight. Absolutely nothing. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. Edge and Brock Lesnar in the main event. Where's Matt Hardy? Why do I have to go out of my way to make sure I get booked on these fucking shows? I'm 5-2. I'm and two. I'm a former U.S. champion. Is Eddie going to get the Cruiserweight title? Or the... Yeah, the Cruiserweight title. Why is Eddie challenging for that? Well, whatever. Since we started this, Eddie is now a US champion and a Cruiserweight champion. Kurt Angle's picking up a win in a handicap match. And in the main event, Brock Lesnar gets a win over Edge. My question is, who gives a fuck? Where is Matt Hardy? Greenville, South Carolina. We're a Cameron, North Carolina boy. Who's back here? Undertaker. We've already fucking dealt with Undertaker. We beat him one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Are we booked? Nope. 
Is it okay? So should I just start doing everything backstage? Cause this is horse shit. Or should I try to get traded to Raw? SmackDown's giving title shots to double murder suicide participants, and I can't even get booked. Main event: Big Show beats Rey Mysterio, who I started an angle with, and they dropped it like this is just real life WWE. Start program. Man, we're getting through this season mode pretty quick, huh? Because we're not getting booked. I feel like half the WWE roster. Okay, Taker is still bet. Should we just fuck with Undertaker? He's the US champ. Let's just go for it. Mad Hardy. I know you're extreme and you live for the moment. What I'm asking you now, son, are you ready to die in that same moment? Matt, what I'm saying is, we can do this the easy way. Where I smack you around like the loser you are. Then you show me the... Take two. Then you show me the proper respect and I let you walk away. Or I can hunt you down. I will inflict... His mouth isn't moving. I will inflict more pain on you than you thought was physically possible. I will make you suffer. So what I want to know is... What's it gonna be? Is it gonna be the easy way? Or the hard way? Uh... Well, we have a win over The Undertaker, and he doesn't have shit over us. So, he can eat my balls, as far as I'm concerned. Matt, you got a lot of guts. I'm gonna hunt you down and put a beating on you, boy. Hey, check it out. We're booked on the show against the U.S. champion, and the title is not on the line. Gotta love it. But, I guess we're at least booked. Matt Hardy versus The Undertaker 2... Who comes out on top this time? You're nuts if you didn't think we were going to not see a little bit of The Undertaker's entrance. Now here's a question I have for you guys. Yeah, WWE US Champion, where's the belt and why is it not on the line? What did he leave it in the fucking hotel room? <laughs> did you guys like the American Badass Undertaker? Did you like it at first and then you got tired of it? Did you never like the American Badass? Did you always prefer the Dead Man? I'll tell you something. I think the Dead Man Undertaker is awesome. But I loved the American Badass Undertaker, dude. I fucking loved it. And when he got buried by Vince McMahon and Kane at Survivor Series 2003, then he came back at WrestleMania 20 as the Dead Man again, I popped big. I liked it a lot, but I still love the American Badass. And I always kind of hoped that we would see the American Badass again someday. And while I do not watch WWE anymore, uh, can't stand it, <laughs> I did see some of the last WrestleMania with the, uh, the Boner Yard match. <laughs> That's a talking shop mania joke. I did see the Boneyard match, and I thought it was extremely entertaining. It was one of the dumbest fucking things I've ever seen in my life. But it was extremely entertaining, and it was nice to see um, the American Badass once again. So that's the question. Do you guys like the American Badass? You can like the ABA while still preferring the Dead Man. That's fine. Totally fine. Doesn't have to be one or the other. And another question, do you guys think Undertaker's really done? Or is Vince McMahon not going to let him retire? Is he going to keep asking him to do shit? Because if you watch that Undertaker documentary series, he said that he feels good, he can walk away with what he's done and what he's accomplished, but if that right phone call ever made, he cannot guarantee that he'd be able to resist it. What he can't resist right now is this ass whooping that is coming from Matt Hardy version 1. The creator of Mattitude, the leader of the MFers, we're going to make him pay. His theme song says, you're going to pay, you're going to pay. But here's the deal, man. It's autobiographical. <laughs> it's talking about himself. That was a bit of a reach. That wasn't a very good joke. Oh, he's cracking me in the fucking head. I love that move there. Punch in the face and he just walks you down. But the thing is, right there, the AI proved it. The AI didn't follow up on that move very often. They would just let it run its course. Tornado DDT out of the corner. 
Can we strike while the iron's hot? Let him get up. Hit him with that flipping wheel kick. Get up, dead man. Here we go. <laughs> Poetry in motion. I tried to run up his back, but he recovered too early. See, this is horse shit hogwash bollocks balderdash. Matt Hardy is not a fucking cruiserweight. I know he had the cruiserweight title. They did that whole angle where, like, he had to keep his weight down and it was, like, kind of a struggle for him. I loved that angle, by the way. Matt Hardy is 6'1", like, 220. He's not a tiny guy. He's not Rey Mysterio. I should be able to pick up the fucking Undertaker. I should, at the very least, be able to hit him with the side effect. You know what I mean? Let's get him in the corner. We're gonna wear him down. There's only so much we can do... So me constantly throwing him in the corner and hitting him with strikes, it's just me working with what I have. What he has right now is a finisher. That's no play now. Hit him with that fucking rolling kick. Let's take out the legs. You chop down the bottom of the tree. You yell timber as that shit falls over. You know what I'm saying? It's wrestling 101. Shit! Oh, man. Okay, I reversed it. I reversed it. Guess what, Taker? Fuck you! <laughs> Smash his face with my fucking butt. <laughs> Choking him in the ropes. It would be nice if there was no DQ, but there definitely is DQ. But I don't see why we can't throw him out of the ring. Who it? Oh, shit ass. I don't know why that did. Why did that not connect? Rewind that and tell me one reason why that didn't connect. Let's try again. Bam! God damn it. <laughs> Here we go. Go behind him. Grab him for one of these deals. Reverse DDT. I want you outside the ring, Taker. Right there. 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 <laughs> Finally. Hit him one of these. Whoop. <laughs> Throw him into the stairs. Throw him into the guardrail. Injure him big time. Boom. What do you think about it? Now we're going to throw him in the corner and beat him down. This is classic... Heel offense right here. Fuck you, Undertaker. Suck my dick. Boom! <laughs> now we can't use any weapons. Oh, man. He caught me out of the sky. No, no, no. Out of the floor. That's how you're going to break my leg. Taker, this is a work. This is all business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Son of a bitch. We need to get Matt Hardy in the fucking gym. That's what we need to do. Oh! Ooh, one of the other things we need to do is I probably have a bunch of attribute points that I haven't spent. Jesus Christ. Stop it! Defying fucking... He hit me so hard, physics broke. And my head was able to support me on that guardrail with nothing else. Trip him up. We're going to snag his throat across the top. And we're going to run in and hit him with one of these. Pin him. Pin him! Son of a bitch. Now we could say only a one count, or we could say Matt Hardy was only two seconds away from beating The Undertaker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get behind him. Oh, see, that's now that's horse shit. I can't pick him up, but I can pick him up so strongly that he can do a fucking backflip out of it. I call bullshit. Big time bullshit. One of these. One of these. Check out, what is this? It's nothing, because I can't pick him up motherfucker <laughs> stop hitting me oh no oh no tombstone pile driver this could spell the end for Matt Hardy I hate this animation it doesn't make any sense boom am I aware he actually did that to Shane McMahon one time yes does that mean I have to like it no Ooh, big mistake by the under what the fuck is he doing well it worked out we gotta get out of here. We gotta catch a breather. Gotta soak up some love from the fans. Get some fans out here. Greg Jackson, you know what I mean? Take her. What I was thinking was... Fuck. I wasn't thinking fuck. Ha! Reversal into this! Son of a fucking bitch! <laughs> These are all different moves. Oh. These are all different moves I'm attempting and just they're not, they're not landing. Here's what we can do. We can try and hurt him a little more. Come here, motherfucker. Hurt him just a little more. Before we go for the twist of fate. 
Look at that, Matt Hardy just one second away from beating The Undertaker. Guess what? Twist of fate! Drop the dead man on his head! Is that enough? I hate controllers sometimes. I swear to Christ I pressed down circle. And the game decided that I pressed fucking left circle. That is infuriating. Fuck you. Get out of my fucking face. What do you think about this, shithead? Why does Matt Hardy have that move in so many games? I don't know. He's never done it in real life. So it's you find out. It's up to you. We need to get another special because that does not require picking him up and it's a high impact move. It's probably the most high impact move we have. I think if we can hit Taker with a second twist of fate that we can put him away. We can up our superstar points. We can get closer to a WWE Championship match. And we can just get away from trying to pick up the fucking Undertaker because I'm getting really tired of it. Son of a bitch. Stop this madness. <laughs> Great. Just keep trying to break my fucking leg, Undertaker. Awesome. Really appreciate it. You know, I'm a hot prospect. I'm a young up-and-comer. And as a legend of this business, you should respect that. You should look out for future generations. Not try and put me in a fucking wheelchair. That's rude. Will I show you the same courtesy? No, I'm going to put you through the fucking announce table. Get up here. Get up here, you fuck. Check this out! Oh, that didn't work. Ha! I was saved by physics. <laughs> Get up here. You know, if he's just going to fall into that trap, should I just cheap this out? Should I milk this for all it's worth and just get a special? Oh no, he woke up! Come here. What, are you afraid? Are you afraid of going through the table, dead man? I think you are. I'll tell you what, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of the twist of fate! Boom! That's two twists of fate. That's it. Down circle. Thank you. Are you out of my asshole? I can't believe this. Off the ropes. Into this. Big running deal. One of these. Mike Kyoto, go fuck yourself. Get out of the way. This is bad. Oh, this is bad. Reversal. Fuck you. But even still, he is much closer. Ram him in the corner like Scott Steiner. Remember when that's, that was Scott Steiner's deal in very late WCW? He would pick guys up and ram their lower back into the exposed steel ring of the turnbuckle. Just like this. I remember he did that to injure DDP. He did it to injure somebody else. God, Scott Steiner was such a shithead in late WCW. It's quite entertaining. As bad as that was, it was quite entertaining. What do you think about this? Reverse DDT. Calling forth all the energy that I can from the Matitude followers. Taker, Taker, motherfucker. I was gonna say, do me a kindness and leave me alone. But he can't he can't help himself. He has to see he has to ruin a good thing every time he sees it. Well, I'll ruin his career. Not with that roll-up, because Ring awareness was not on point right there. <laughs> That's a big combo, Ski. Oh no, not another... This is really bad. A tombstone when our head is already red. First of all, this is probably going to bust me open, which doesn't make any sense. Oh, that's big bad news. Big bad news. Don't go for a pin. Don't do it. I think he did, but we reversed it because we're better than him. Asshole guy. What do you think about this? front face lock like 10 minutes deep into a match <laughs> can we submit the undertaker with this front face lock we'll call it a guillotine choke so that it's more dramatic not quite close but no cigar we are sporting the crimson mask as jim ross would say mike kyoto has gotten in my way 17 fucking times. We have reversed three specials from The Undertaker. Why is the referee standing so close to us? If I hit him one more time, I guarantee he'll disqualify me. So can he do me a... F oh, I interrupted my own taunt. 
Can you do me a favor and get the fuck away from me? Check this out. Oh, it's so hard to land that move. If you don't know Dan Dan's, that move is actually, it's like a flying head scissors, but it like never works. Oh, big leg drop from the top. You know how fucking bad that would hurt? How bad it would hurt Matt Hardy to land asshole first on the floor out there? Jesus Christ. Taker was too afraid to go through the, the announce table, but maybe he'll go through the Spanish announce table. What do you think about this? Son of an asshole bitch. <sighs> Stop trying, Matt. We need to figure out a new move. <laughs> we need something else. No! I've got a no table policy in my contract. <laughs> Perfect. Oh no! This is not what I wanted. I wanted to do the running side effect deal. Hey, we landed it! We've landed that fucking weird head scissor move. That is, like, impossible to fucking pull off. Dan Dan's, what are you playing right now? As we close in on the doom of the... Ooh, shit. Stop! This is bullshit. I couldn't reverse any of those. I want to know what you guys are playing as we close in on the end of this match. Because the second that this poor bastard gets in the ring is the second that his night will be ruined. Because I intend, what is this? Oh, slam him through the table with a Russian leg sweep. Beautiful. Let's hit him with another big leg drop just for posterity. Boom! That's the kind of damage you need to do to the Undertaker to put him away. And I think we've got him right where we want him. We're sucking him in right here. Come on, Undertaker. Ran right into it. Big mistake. Goodbye. Mike Kyoto, count it. That is two pinfall victories over The Undertaker. We're going to taunt the shit out of him. I thought maybe I should show him respect as a fuck you. Like, oh, I was going to earn your respect? Maybe you deserve. You should try and earn mine, bitch. Get the fuck away from me, Mike Kyoto. But what we're going to do is just taunt and gloat. We're not going to give him the opportunity to get anywhere near us. Definitely not going to try and attack him because he would have turned the tables. Suck it, Undertaker. V1! Now, can we just get booked next week, please? <laughs> Give us a title shot, for Christ's sake. That's two wins over The Undertaker. That was the opener. Try and follow that. Lesnar and Kurt Angle? No way that those jabronis followed us. <laughs> and we only get one superstar point for that. Unbelievable. Bad Blood. This is a raw pay-per-view, so we are not going to be involved. Unless there's some bullshit that we can pull backstage, maybe. Gotta love this pyro ski here. I do like this stage as well. With the uh, the drops of blood hanging from the ceiling. Very cool look. Great name, too. Bad blood. Nobody backstage. Nobody wants to hang out with the man who single-handedly destroyed The Undertaker. And I don't blame him. Now, it, like, like we did last time... We are going to predict the outcome of these matches. I think Bubba Ray and Devon, the opener and the main event are the exact same as the last pay-per-view. So this is very realistic WWE book. <laughs> Seeing as though the Dudleys beat Nash and Shawn Michaels last time, this is the rematch. This is where Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash are going to take the titles away from the Dudleys. Told you. I uh, go back to the last episode. I am four and zero on my predictions. I've never gotten one wrong, so that means the pressure's on. Now we have Christian defending his Intercontinental Championship against Chris Jericho and Goldberg. Now you would probably think heel heel face, the baby face Goldberg has the most going against him, but he's also a powerhouse, so he should come out on top. I'm going to make a bold prediction here and say Goldberg, if Goldberg doesn't win, Jericho will. So the only way I can be wrong is if Christian retains. Oh my goodness, the streak comes to an end. Hey man, couldn't happen to a better guy. And that's good booking too. Christian keeps the title by pinning Jericho so Goldberg doesn't lose any of his luster. Good booking. 
Last time Triple H beat The Rock, so this time in Hell in a Cell, nowhere to go. The babyface should get his win, should get the title, but I have a feeling that Triple H is going to keep the title. Yep, called it. Okay, 5-1 and one on my predictions, or 6-1, and one, I don't know. Either way, not a bad, not a bad roll. If you ask me if I want a shot at the tag titles, Jerry, I'm going to shove that crown up your ass sideways. Hang on there, Matt. I wanted to offer you a shot at the tag team. Cut to me ramming that crown up his asshole sideways. I don't want the tag team titles. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> so now we should be in July. We're not going to save just yet. Not going to save just yet. We're in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. What is in store for Matt Hardy? Who's backstage? Lesnar's backstage. We could make a statement by getting involved with Brock Lesnar, but let's see what's going on here. We got some attribute points that we should use. Um, build. Uh, we don't need to build the speed up just yet. What does technique do? The ability to counterattack. So I'm already good at that. How much damage your superstar can withstand? That is something we need. We're gonna put. Some points into our endurance, and now, see, okay, now we can we can accept that. But what else is going on here? The title info. WWE Champion, Brock Lesnar is the champion. And he's backstage. It would behoove us to not get involved ourselves in an angle with the WWE Champion. Let's go talk to Lesnar. Of course he's in the training room. Where fucking else would he be? Matt, I'm not in a good mood right now. I really don't care. Are you trying to pick a fight with me? It won't let me skip. <laughs> Fuck, we're gonna get smacked. Son of a bitch. You can always see it coming when they do the laugh off to the side. Don't take my superstar points. Okay, they didn't. Ooh, we got a fight here. We got a fight between Brock Lesnar and Matt Hardy. See, this is big business. We have now involved ourselves in an angle with the WWE Champion. And we are getting absolutely brutalized inside of the first second. Oh my god. Here's a little hidden deal that you guys might not know about. See that crack in the wall? If you Irish whip people into that kind of crack, you can further damage it. And then eventually, we can actually knock that wall down. Which hopefully... Oh no, I wanted to get a full taunt in right there. Get my finisher bar up. Check this out. There we go. Knock that wall down. And now this is all usable. I would love to get thrown into that locker right there. But we're going to do Brock Lesnar a kindness. And we're going to bully him like he did to kids in middle school. We're going to throw him in there. Which isn't... Oh, okay. See, I'll take that. That's perfectly fine with me. Have a good old time in there with, with the diva skis. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, let's beat him to death with the door. Why not? I pressed square just to see if it would work, and it does. What? Ugh, okay, this isn't working. We need to... Oh, my goodness! That was horrible. That's bad for business. We need to do some actual damage here. Now, Brock Lesnar is going to be another guy that we can't pick up. So we're going to have to depend a lot on... Fuck. See, we're going to have to depend a lot on moves that don't involve... Lifting, which if you know anything about wrestling games, is pretty hard to pull off. But this works. That's a good one. Let's throw him in the shitter. What do you think about that? Hit him with the door a couple times. Here. Take a trip to Brown Town, brother. <laughs> oh no, it didn't work! We're fighting out of our weight class here big time. Goodbye. He's getting swirly skied in there. That gave us time to... Okay, we got a full taunt in. Oh no! Big STO on the fucking floor. Bad news, Jones. Oh no, not the knees to the head. Those Pride FC style knees. Shout out to Kazuyuki Fujita. Iron head, they called him. Hit him with another one of those things because it's like the only move we have. Is there a chair or something back here? There's a fucking computer monitor for some reason. From like 1997. But I'll... Beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. Oh no. Big gut buster. Another one. Oh, that's bad for Brock's knees, though. 
You can't be 300 pounds jumping up in the air, landing on your knees like that. It's bad. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <sighs> if he was not standing up on that thing, he would have gone for an F5. But the height difference was off, so it didn't work. We are doing some damage with this fucking Dell monitor from 1996. Oh, Mike Keota gets it! Fuck him! <laughs> That's revenge for getting in my way so often, shithead. Okay, now where are we? Doesn't matter. Twist of fate! We have done no damage to him. Do you see his body fucking meter? What? Okay, there's no pinning. Where's Mike Keota? Where is my... Is the referee just dead now? Can we only win in that room? If that's the case, then I'll just do as much damage as possible in here by throwing him off of this. <laughs> oh, there's Mike Kyoto. What are you doing down there? <laughs> Dude, I had a pin and you were just nowhere to be found, asshole. Unbelievable. Okay, he's climbing up this deal. But... Oh no! Oh no! Okay, we reversed it. Into this! <gasps> Anytime we miss anything, it's bad news because he is so strong. And he can do so much damage. Oh no! That was horrible. That was really bad. I knew it was going to be bad right before I did it, but I did it anyway, so it's my asshole fault. Come here. Come here. Put him in the deal. Slam him on the ground. Now we have him in a precarious position. He's got an orange head. You do not want to have an orange head. Son of a bitch. He climbs. He figured it out way faster than Andy Guerrero did a couple episodes back. Remember that shit? Drop him off the edge. Drop him off the edge. Drop him off the edge. Unfair. Unfair. I'm calling bullshit. Yes. We will use every advantage we can get against Brock Lesnar. <laughs> the plan right now is to cook up a special... And then do it on this thing. We're going to do it through the top of this cage. That's the current plan. Throw him into... <gasps> oh, God. Big DDT. I thought he caught me and was going to give me a spine buster. I almost shit my pants. <laughs> so, Dan Dan's, I asked you what you were playing, but I kind of I kind of rolled through that really, really quickly. I don't remember if I told you guys that I have been playing, uh, when I'm not working on all this shit, I've been playing Genshin Impact. Here we go. Here we go. Twist of fate on the thing. Good enough. Go for the pin. One, two, three. That is why you don't mess with Matt Hardy, Brock Lesnar. That felt good. Oh, man. We pick a fight with the WWE champion and we beat his bitch ass backstage. You have some skills, man. You got the drop on me this time. I'll be looking forward to fighting you in the ring next time. Okay, so we gained Brock Lesnar's respect and a superstar point. So we better be booked, is all I'm saying. Unbelievable. We have picked up wins over The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. We won't even talk about Val Venus because he's a jabron. But we beat the US champion and the WWE champion and we're not even being booked. Undertaker keeps the title. Good. Go fuck yourself. This is bullshit. We have 75 superstar points now. Is that enough to get a shot at the world title? I don't know. But if we don't start getting booked here on SmackDown, I'm going to request a trade to go to Raw. Because this is dog shit bullshit. Fuck Kurt Angle. I don't want to talk to Kurt Angle. He has nothing that I want. Can I get a world title shot? No, I cannot. Do not compete. SP, 75. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to check the calendar. And if we're not booked, I want to go to Raw. Not booked. We got a cage match between Kurt Angle and Big Show. And the guy who has beaten both of your champions isn't even fucking booked. What the fuck does somebody have to do around here to get some recognition? If I'm not booking myself and shit, I'm not even being used. Get me out of here. 
Get me the fuck out of here. You want to do what? I, I just don't understand why. Because you don't book me! I just want to make sure that you really want to go through with this. You really want to transfer over to Raw? Okay, now she's making me fucking feel bad. <laughs> and if I stay here, at least Stephanie McMahon is hot. Eric Bischoff is not my type, let's put it that way. <laughs> Do we give her one? Let's give her one more chance. We'll stay here. Yeah, you can call Raw the mediocre show. Give me something to do. I don't want to leave SmackDown. I just need to fucking work. Nothing. Nothing. And there was nobody backstage for me to talk to. So it's not even my fault. They're just not using me. I'm losing it, Dan Dans. I'm fucking losing it. It's the go home to the pay-per-view. Nobody to talk to backstage. Am I on the show? A cruiserweight title match with Eddie Guerrero. I don't want the... You know what? We'll take it because at least we're being used. Great. It's Eddie Guerrero. It's the WWE cruiserweight champion. A guy that we've already beaten for the US championship. Now we're going to beat him for another belt that I don't want, which is way too fucking big. Look at the size of that thing. So what's our plan here? Do we win this title and then just see where it carries us? Because at least it guarantee well, it should guarantee that we're going to be used. Dropped him on his head right there. I don't regret it. I'm getting text messages left and right. I mean, at least facing a guy like Eddie Guerrero, I can hit some of my offense on him. Mike Kyoto, get out of the fucking way. Side effect! Not every move I go for is going to be me stopping and not being able to pick the fucker up. Dan, as I want to know about frustrating situations that you guys have been in while playing... Oh, that's an excellent reversal there from the Tino Heat. I want to know some frustrating situations you guys have been in regarding video games. Because I'm trying to be entertaining. That was a fucking beautiful heel kick over the top rope as well. <laughs> I'm trying to provide an entertaining show here, and if I don't get booked... I can't wrestle, and if I can't wrestle, then why the fuck are you guys watching a playthrough of Season Mode? <laughs> Drop on the guardrail out there. Beat his brains in! We need to be on the shows. And I just find it highly fascinating that after saying that I wanted to go somewhere else, I wanted out of my SmackDown contract, Stephanie talks me into staying and then doesn't even use me on that show. Doesn't even have the decency to rearrange the card to find a spot for Matt Hardy V1. The originator of Mattitude. The lack of respect I quite frankly find, look at this neck breaker, the lack of respect I find disgusting, to be honest with you. <laughs> so now we're just gonna beat the shit out of one of her tried and true champions. We're gonna see how she likes that. Samoan drop from a white guy onto a Mexican. We're getting everybody involved. All creeds, colors, nationalities. <laughs> Check this out. Boom in the corner. Bring him on out. Talk about the twist of fate. Now that will do him in, but guess what? I'm not even close to being done with this guy. Eddie Guerrero is going to wish he never had that Cruiserweight title. He's going to feel the same type of embarrassment he did. Big jumping tornado DDT. Same type of embarrassment he faced when I beat him for his US title. Because there's just one thing that Eddie Guerrero can count on when he gets in the ring with Matt Hardy. And it's that he will lose. And that's a promise. What do you think about this, Eddie? Huh? Drop you right on your deal. Get you in one of these. Hit you with the side effect once again, Eddie Guerrero is not having a good night. Do you see his special meter? Do you see how low it is? He has hit us with zero offense. We've been in here with The Undertaker. We've been in here with Brock Lesnar. You think we're intimidated by Eddie Guerrero? I don't think so. This guy's nephew ran around with a goddamn horse on a stick that he called Pepe. 
think I'm afraid of that. Big back body drop. Right after we give him a fucking concussion with those punches to the head. I think it's just about time to put him away. Hey, Eddie, come and see me. Eddie, come and see me. Just to get one of these. Twist of fate. Drop him down. Mike Kyoto, give me the title. There you have it. Beat the shit out of him. We are the new Cruiserweight Champion. Our superstar points should be high as fuck at this point. This attack should go through. And if it doesn't, at least give me a rematch with Eddie so I can build some more heat. You know what I'm saying? Give me something to work with. It didn't work. <laughs> it did not work. Chair shot to the head! Classic WWE booking. But here's the deal. We are the new WWE Cruiserweight Champion. Take the title from Eddie Guerrero. Fuck the rest of the card. Nobody cares. Superstar points up to 77. It's time for a pay-per-view. Do we have a rematch lined up with Eddie Guerrero? I hope we do. I will destroy him. I will retain the title. And then shortly thereafter, I will be throwing this belt in the fucking garbage. <laughs> Because I want a shot at the WWE Championship. I have proven that I can take down Brock Lesnar. I have proven I can take down The Undertaker. I can ascend the mountain. I can stand at the top and look down at the jabronis below. Do we want to talk to Eddie Guerrero? No, we don't. I will beat his brains in, but I don't want to talk to him. We're not even booked. Wait, is this a Raw pay-per-view? No, it's not, because the, both sets of tag titles are on the line. So we just didn't get booked again with the Cruiserweight title. Dan Nance, we will continue this journey next week on 616 SmackDown. There will not be a big break between episodes two and three of our Here Comes the Pain season mode. We will indeed pick up next week and we're going to get to the bottom of some shit. You understand? I love you and I will see you then. What's up, Dan Dans? Welcome to 616 SmackDown. This is the third installment of our SmackDown Here Comes the Pain season mode playthrough. Now, there's two things you need to know. Number one, we are here at Vengeance. Now, I had to replay the entire last episode because I thought it saved and it didn't. But, fear not, everything is where it was left off. We ended the last episode with Matt Hardy as Cruiserweight Champion. We are still indeed cruiserweight champion we are right where we left off here at vengeance last time we were not booked so should we go into business and get ourselves booked i think that's probably the move on the previous episode i beat eddie guerrero for the cruiserweight title when i had to replay through i beat tajiri for the cruiserweight title so let's just say we're not booked on this pay-per-view let's get booked i've seen you ah uh, fuck take two <laughs> I've seen just how tough you are, Matt. I guess I just don't have what it takes to be your opponent. Now who's coming up here? Mr. Kurt Angle, the Olympic gold medalist. So you better be prepared tonight because Kurt and I are going to destroy you. Oh, man. Would the heel beg off and say, wait, I'm sorry about last week? Or would the heel say, bring it on? I feel like the heel would try and weasel his way out of it. Because I'd beat the fuck out of Tajiri with a chair after the match. So the heel would try and beg off. Yeah, I thought that would scare you. You're pathetic. Just get out of here. Fuck! So does that mean we're not booked? <laughs> fuck! I hope that doesn't mean we're not booked. Oh man, I didn't play that right. Now, who's backstage? Nobody. What's tonight's card, brother? What's tonight's... F are you... F Guys, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I feel like this is not entertaining. U.S. title, Fatal 4-Way. God, imagine if we were booked in that, right? Here we go. Cruiserweight title. We've already had this match twice, too. But it's something. A cruiserweight title defense? I'll take it. Cruiserweight title defense. Matt Hardy puts the title on the line against Eddie Guerrero. Now, Dan Dans, I ask you every week. I'm going to ask you again. What are you guys playing lately? Full disclosure, I am recording this uh, about an hour and a half after I recorded the last episode. So it's still November 1st. I have not had any time to play anything. By the time you're watching this, I have a PlayStation 5. 
that's kind of fucking crazy. Because it came out on the 12th, and this is going to air... Do I have a PlayStation 5 yet? I don't know. I don't know what date it's going to be. <laughs> what I do know is that we're going one-on-one -on -one with Eddie Guerrero, and you're going to notice a lot more reversals here, because to spice this show up, Samoan Drop, to spice this show up, I upped the difficulty. I went through the main menu, changed it from normal difficulty to hard. And if we still are just running through these fools, I will go in there and I'll change that shit to SmackDown difficulty. And we'll get real fucking nutty with it. But last week I was just pounding jabronis left and right. So now we are gonna, we're gonna up this shit. And we are gonna see what happens. Eddie Guerrero wants this Cruiserweight title, but we're not gonna give it to him. And you know what? Maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way. I am looking at the Cruiserweight title like it's a burden because I want a shot at the WWE Championship. But maybe we should be a proud Cruiserweight Champion. Maybe we should hold this title and make it the most important belt in the company. Am I looking at this the wrong way? I think the only thing I can actually be frustrated about is when we don't get booked. That's what, that's what I should be worried about. We need to get booked. Let's pin him with the feet on the ropes! Oh, that's as near as a near fall gets. You know what? I don't think I've ever actually beaten anybody with that jumping tornado DDT. I don't think I've actually actually ever beaten anybody with that feet on the ropes pin. Maybe I should try. Because we are heel after all, and I should be dueling heelish, doing heelish things. I said, do I almost. <sighs> I hate getting tongue-tied and I can't say what I'm trying to say. Let's put him in the corner. Let's hit him with one of these. Get behind him to give him one of these. I love this move. What did Matt Hardy call that? Was that the ricochet? I think that's what he called that move. Wasn't really a big fan of the animation in general, but I did like that move quite a bit. Feeling kind of fire pro -y right now. I feel like I should let Eddie get some offense in to make this a better match. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to make this look like I'm still fighting against him, but I'm going to let him get some shit in. He's got that big Mexican surfboard locked in there. Now, am I going to try to reverse this? Nope. Big flapjack tossing me sky high. Go ahead and put me wherever you want me. Get some shit in. Let's let him get a near fall. See, now that's exciting. <laughs> Got some back and forth action here. Off the ropes, hit him with the back body drop. Eddie's in a bad way now. He's got a red body. He's gonna go through and get this. We're just gonna let him land it, you know what I mean? Rolls through, leapfrog across the back, into a jumping heel kick. That was incredible. That was a great little sequence there. Go ahead and hit me with something. Oh, let's just pretend we dropped, we avoided that on purpose. <laughs> You know, let them get their shit in. Make it an exciting match. Now, how are there any of you guys in the comments who have uh, an Xbox One... What is it? Xbox... Xbox Series X. God, their names are fucking horrible. Do, you, do any of you have that pre-ordered? Or are any of you getting a PS5? Let's get that conversation going. And what next-gen game are you most excited for? I have applied German suplex dropping him on his head like his name is fucking Rick Steiner. I have applied through, um, what is Mike Kyoto doing? I'm not even trying to kick out. You don't hear me tapping. But Mike Kyoto's not counting this. This is fucked up. I guess that's a glitch. Now we're going to kick out. Wow, that was something else. We should have a new Cruiserweight Champion. Let's use that in our uh, ongoing storyline. But now Matt Hardy rolls him up! Not enough. Not enough. I have applied for a review code for Godfall through whatever company it is that's handling uh, Godfall's fucking social media stuff. Big ol' side effect. Drop him down. So they have not gotten back to me. It's been over a week. I actually I DM'd them and they res they like gave me an auto response. I DM them again. And they gave me the same auto response, telling me how to DM them. So don't know what to say on that front. Godfall is the game I want to buy the most for PS5 right up front, and um, 
you know, hopefully they give me that review code. I would love to review that for you guys. Rolls them up again! Not happening. Eddie Guerrero pumping the brakes on this Matt Hardy victory. Go ahead and get some shit in. Hit a frog splash. Why not? Go for a frog splash. Here we go. Up top. Maybe he's looking for Lasso from El Paso. Jerp! Oh, that's a back suplex. Drop me on my head. I think we need to pump the brakes on letting him get some shit in. Because now we are in the zone. Oh, where he can actually do some damage. and Lasso from El Paso! He could steal this one. We're not going to let him do it. But he could. I don't think so. You're not going to get this one from us, Eddie. This Cruiserweight title will remain around the waist of Matt Hardy version 1. It will be the most important belt in all of WWE. You heard it here first. What is this? This is that fucking weird move! <laughs> I don't even know what to call that. Check this out, Eddie. Throw you into the deal. Can we steal one? Oh, God! I officially think you cannot get the win like that. But you can get it like this. Twist of fate! Almost broke his neck on the impact. That's how you pick up a win. Your winner and still WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Matt Hardy. Matt, show him a thing or two about a thing or two. Just kidding. We are going to celebrate this victory like nobody's business. Carry that Cruiserweight Championship. Loud and proud. Eddie Guerrero doesn't know what hit him. I'll tell you what hit him. It was called the Twist of Fate. Look at that beautiful championship around the waist. I dare anyone to try and take it. Anyone, I say, goddammit. We're on a roll now. We are on a roll. We're going to keep this train rolling. Brock Lesnar picks up a win over Kurt Angle in a submission match in the main event. Patches Lugosi is on the move, going from one side of the couch to the other. What's going to be his final spot? What do you think? You want me to share the blanket with you, buddy? Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> He's finding his perfect sleep spot. There you go. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? <laughs> you guys can't see it, but like the, the blanket was like all balled up, and he stepped over it to sit on me. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Do we go back? I don't want to talk to the fucking Undertaker. I'm sorry, I don't. We keep facing Eddie Guerrero and the Undertaker over and over, and I'm fucking tired of it. What's the card look like? <laughs> Why would we have been on it? Why would we have been on it? Edge and Big Show in the main event. Fucking fantastic. Moving along. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Dan Dans, by this time, I think you guys have seen the MVP baseball video. Fuck it, let's talk to Brock Lesnar. We've already dealt with him too, but it's the same shit over and over. This is the same angle we did before. But now he's going to punch me in the face. There it goes. Now we're going to fight again. Oh, they take a superstar point. Unfucking believable. Are we on the card? We're facing Eddie Guerrero again. There's two ways I could play the sand dance. I could pretend that this is the greatest big Frankensteiner. I could pretend that this is the greatest season mode playthrough of all time and what a treat it is to see so many matchups between Matt Hardy and Eddie Guerrero, a classic Tornado DDT. Or I could be realistic and be like, I'm sorry that they keep booking us against the same fuckers over and over. Heel kick? Go ahead. I tried to let him get that heel kick combo again, but he fucked it up. Um, is this the worst season mode playthrough of all time? Is it? Should I abandon this? <laughs> like, do you guys not give a shit about this anymore? Should I just play other games? It's, I'm so... I can't even begin to tell you... Uno, amigo! <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you how uh, frustrating this is. Because we're not seeing cool storylines. Look at that roll through into the fucking... That kind of looked like a heel hook. 
They just keep giving us the same shit over and over, and I'm fucking tired of it. Mike Kyoto, go fuck yourself. Break his back! Smash him in the corner, drop him on his head. I'm telling you, Mike Kyoto, I'm not going to be careful with you. If you don't get the fuck out of the way, I'm going to hurt you. Side effect! That's how I'm going to hurt you. You know what? Let's get real fucking weird with it. Where's the belt? Did they put the belt out here, or is that a later game? Give me these. What's up, Eddie? Huh? Come here. Latino, go fuck yourself. Boom! Smash him over the head. One more time. What do you think? Wham! That would kill somebody. And you know what? Maybe that's what we should be doing right now. They keep putting us... Drop on his fucking face. They keep putting us in these same bullshit positions over and over. We're going to take matters into our own hands. And we are going to injure people so that we can no longer be booked against the same fuckers week in and week out. It's time to put a stop to this madness. Eddie, son of a bitch, don't, don't hit me with that. Get up here. Come here. I'm going to show you something. Huh? Get up here. Get up here. He didn't even drop his fucking hammer. Come up here. You can't reach me from there, shithead. Go ahead and try. There you go. Ass wipe. How'd that feel? Huh? Come up on the fucking table. Come up on the table. <laughs> We're gonna hurt these guys. Just... Oh, God. You know what? You know what? You deserve this. Frog splash on Eddie. Pin him with his own shit. Kicks out of his own shit. You want to know why? Because it's a bullshit finish. I didn't realize that his head and body were orange, I thought they were red. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone for the finish had I realized that. Hit him with the ricochet, just like that. But I told you, we're gonna hurt these guys. Matt Hardy is here to make a statement with shit like you're about to see. Drop him down face first. Got the steel chair. What do you think about this stuff, Eddie, huh? Shit! DDT on the chair! <laughs> Guess what? It's not enough! Twist of fate for your deeds. Huh? Shit, wrong button. Here you go. How do you like it? Huh? How do you like it? Get up. Bash him over the fucking skull. That's it. That is it. I don't want to hear about Eddie Guerrero anymore. Winner and still WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Matt Hardy. Bloodied, bruised, beaten, and broken. But can Eddie deal with the storm that is to come? We didn't get rid of that chair. We still got it. Son of a bitch, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work at all. Boom! <laughs> but you see, that's all the energy he had. I assure you, after that match, Eddie Guerrero went to the hospital. Uh, we won the battle. We won the war. All that good stuff. <laughs> SummerSlam is upon us. Do we trust that we are booked on this card, or do we look backstage and go into business for ourselves? I think... I think we're going to have to look backstage first. We are the Cruiserweight Champion. We carry, carry that belt proudly. I would like to be involved in something bigger. Who's back here? We got Trish and Eddie. How you doing? Let's talk to Trish. Goodness me. What do you, what do you want? Oh my goodness gracious, it's John Cena. I'd love to get involved with Cena. I think he's he's on SmackDown, right? Or is he on Raw? You know, Trish, I was watching your match the other night. You were there in your 
Bride Patties. <laughs> it's not Vince. It's just an image I haven't gotten out of my mind ever since. And the other night at the pay-per-view, just the way that you won your match, I mean, you just looked like such a woman. And I'm sure you saw my match. I mean, just being in the ring and all... Take two. I mean, just being in the ring and all the physical interaction makes me feel like such a man. This is weird. <laughs> and I was just wondering a few moments ago if maybe, just maybe, you'd, uh... If we could get together tonight. Now, I could say you need to back away from Trish, or I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> uh... Okay, so this heel shit is not working out for us very well. Should we do start doing some babyface shit and see what happens? Let's defend Trish. Not even necessarily to turn babyface, but just because we would like to spend the night with Trish and fuck John... And not fuck John Cena. We would like to spend the night with Trish and we will fuck up John Cena, <laughs> to be clear. You need to back away from Trish. She says, thank you, Matt. What? Who the hell do you think you are? You've gotten in my way for the last time. I'm going to beat your ass. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Listen, man. I don't even know if we stood up for Trish or if we were just trying to find a little spot for, for a good old Matt Hardy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I don't mind taking on John Cena. This is, a, this is an opportunity to do something big. We have not faced John Cena yet on this playthrough. And forgive me if I'm a little hasty with saying, like, do you guys even want to keep watching this? I'm just frustrated, man. I'm frustrated that I want to be involved in big shit. But I guess that's what happens when we don't start. Son of a fucking bitch. I guess that's what happens when we don't start with, um, a top guy. We started with a mid Carter, but I did that on purpose. Why does he have two specials already? That's bullshit. He's getting DDT. He's getting preferential treatment. And I'll call the cops about it. <laughs> Come here, you fuck. Beat you down with the sledgehammer. What do you think about my flying elbow? Not much, apparently, because he just walked away from it. Can we get on this motorcycle? How do we get on the motorcycle? I don't remember. How do we get on the motorcycle? Fuck you. Shit. Shit. Okay. He's, like, invincible. Every move he does fucks my body up in a major way. So here's the plan. I think we need to get him onto... Oh, yeah, buddy. We are motorcycle bound. <laughs> what the fuck? Get out of the way, Earl Hebner. Come here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Come here, you fuck. Got him. Got him. Where should we throw him? Let's throw him into, uh, into this thing. Fuck you! <laughs> now, can we grab him again and throw him into the electricity? Come here. Come oh, no! Son of a bitch! He's choking me out! John Cena, like the goddamn Terminator, just grabbed me. Oh, oh no. You hear me ready to reverse those finishers? Oh, no. <laughs> We're going back and forth. Go into the electricity, you son of a bitch! Got him! <laughs> I will always pop for the electricity spot. Now, we, we just built our finisher meter up pretty big there with that taunt, but what I would like to do... Fuck you! What I would like to do is get him up on top of the truck, and then... Oh, yeah! Let's rake his face across it. Boom! That's some head trauma for you deeds. Kick him. Kick the shit out of him. John, get up on top of the truck, because now you're fucked. You have to hurt yourself to come down. Boom! Look at that. Some might call that cheating. I call that playing smart. He had the unfair advantage of starting with two goddamn specials. Boom! What do you think about that? And what do you think about the side effect on the concrete? Put him away, Earl Hebner. Fuck. I had a feeling that wasn't going to work. <laughs> Shit! Oh no, he's choking me out again! Son of a fucking bitch! Wow, come from behind victory for John Cena. Okay, either way, that was a pretty babyface move. To stand up for the girl in a losing effort, but we did the right thing.
Are we booked on the card? Now I can take it or leave it. Actually, we are a four-man battle royal for the Cruiserweight title. Shelton Benjamin's not a Cruiserweight, but look at this. Defending our championship on SummerSlam. One of the big four. I'll take it. We got Eddie Guerrero, Latino Heat, who we have faced numerous times here in this season mode. We've got Tajiri, the man who, in this timeline, the second timeline, I defeated for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. You can't forget about one half of the world's greatest tag team, Shelton Benjamin, challenging for what would be his first ever Cruiserweight title. And the man of the hour, the tower of power, too sweet to be sour, the WWE Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Matt Hardy, version one, who was a in a gifted class. He was in the gifted class in elementary school. We'll check out a little bit of this entrance because you got to see the gold around the waist. And we have changed our ways. I've decided with that Trish Stratus angle, we have changed our ways. We are now a babyface. And it's up to us to maintain that babyface reputation. So we're not going to be attacking anybody after the matches anymore. We are going to be doing everything we can. Boom! Tornado DDT. To get more fans, to get over. Now, it said, it said four-way cruiserweight. What an excellent dropkick by Eddie after the go-behind. That was beautiful. It said four-way cruiserweight battle royal. So th is this an over-the-top deal? I'm not really sure. Let's find out. Or is it like we're old-school style with the video games? We're stuck in the ring, but it's elimination. I'm not sure if it's elimination. I'm also not sure who the fuck Tajiri thinks he is. Okay, we can't get out of the ring because that Irish whip was so close. It would have at least sent him over the top. But we gotta get down to business. We have three opponents here. Snap suplex on the former Cruiserweight Champion. We came into SummerSlam a champion. We're gonna walk out a champion, goddammit. Dan is, I wanna know how many of you... Ooh! We had the tights, which is not very babyface but I can't control the fucking moveset. What do you want from me? What I was going to say, sorry, I got distracted by that pin. I was like, is this going to work that early? What I was going to ask you guys is, um, how many of you guys have played SmackDown Here Comes the Pain recently? Because it's, it's one of the all-time greats. And I just want to know, do any of you guys still have a PS2 hooked up and you still play this game? Or do you just look back on the memories fondly? Now... I should say, and someone asked me a couple weeks ago at this point, because um, I, I said before I'm playing this on a, on a PlayStation 3, they asked how that was possible. This is a PlayStation 3 launch model, it's a 60 gig, those were backwards compatible not just with PS1, but PS2 discs as well. So that is how I am able to do this. And I actually got this console for free, believe it or not. <laughs> it's a long story. But it's coming in handy now, especially because my PS3 Slim actually died on me earlier this year, which was quite unfortunate. I had a ton of save files on there from older games that I don't have anymore. Big swinging DDT plant him on his head. Now you tell me who's having the better output here. Eddie Guerrero and I clearly, judging by our fucking health meters, are the ones doing the damage. We're beating the shit out of each other. Where, big moonsault from Shelton, but nobody home. Shelton, Benjamin, and Tajiri over there playing fucking pitter-patter. Nobody's hurt. Tajiri just now got the yellow body going. Check this out. Chicken wing suplex. What do you think about it? But Eddie Guerrero is one of the guys that I really need to do damage to early. and Get him out of here as quick as possible. Because if you're looking at overall ratings, he is by far the best character in the game. I would assume. I don't fucking know off the top of my head. Snap suplex. We have built up our first special. I'm actually going to hang on to that for a little while. Look for Shelton. Super kick. Super kick on Tajiri. Can he make something come out of it? Not quite. Tajiri's not ready to go just yet. Thanks, Shelton. Thanks for completely getting in the fucking way of the camera. No one can see my fucking awesome elbow drop off the top. We're suplexing Eddie Guerrero all night long. 
We've hit him with like Cinco Amigos by now. <laughs> Let's introduce him to another corner. Tornado DDT. And because I'm feeling fucking froggy, let's hit him with a little bit of uh, front face lock action. A little bit of guillotine choke action. I guess there's no submission because they didn't even give me a chance. Look at Tajiri getting power bombed by Shelton Benjamin. Eddie, check out this gut buster. This is, this is a fun match. I am having a lot. We have turned it around. We have turned the corner on this season mode playthrough. I have decided. We are embracing the Cruiserweight Championship. We are embracing this face turn. Everything is coming up V1 on this fucking playthrough. Look at Tajiri diving across the ring with that drop kick. That was fucking beautiful. Eddie Guerrero, nice knowing you, pal. Twist of fate. I don't know if there are rope breaks. There are not. I can't believe you, you motherfucker. Eddie Guerrero burying my fucking finish. Unbelievable. This is what you get. This is what you get for that. Made me waste my finish. Check this out. Roll him up. Say goodbye, Eddie. Foo! I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about that at all. Ricochet for your deeds. Drop him down in a big way. Heading up top. Big diving elbow. That's it for Eddie Guerrero. Eddie wants this Cruiserweight title back, huh? Get out of my face, Eddie. You know what, Eddie? You brought this on yourself. That's a big side effect. Good night. Finally. Eddie Guerrero taking the offense of the fucking decade before it's time for him to go. And then there were three, the former champion who's putting a blitz on Shelton Benjamin. Spinning heel kick. Tajiri has big things in mind. Oh no, now he's looking at me. Fuck you. Turn your attention towards me. Now Shelton's got a problem with me. This is breaking down. This is breaking down big time and I love it. Get away from me. Everybody get away from me. To Jerry, kick him in the fucking head. Kick him in the head. Don't worry about me. I want you guys to fight. That's what I want. You know what? Fuck Earl Hebner. <laughs> I accidentally grappled him. Shelton doing damage to, to, to Jerry, trying to fucking twist his head off his shoulders. I'm going to stand back here and get some fans a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys, have we turned the corner now? Are we in a good place with this season mode playthrough? I feel like we are. I'm sorry if I was complaining too much. I'm sorry if I was too overly frustrated. But Shelton Benjamin, super kick! Super kick on Tajiri. Put him away, Shelton. One, two, three. That is beautiful. So the former champion has been eliminated. But I'm sorry to say Shelton Benjamin is not long for this world. Twist of fate. He'll kick out, but let's pretend we're surprised. How could he kick out of the twist of fate? <laughs> Shelton Benjamin's on a roll here. We need to do everything we can to slow down his momentum. Because we have seen what the super kick can do. DDT! We know that that super kick is lethal. And we do not want to eat one of those... That is for sure. Get him off the ropes. Big back body drop. Excellent. I love that animation. Because they go so high. And you know that that bump has to fucking hurt. Get him down. Do some damage. Get him in the corner. I want him to face this way. So we can hit him with this big old splash. Mountain bomb. A Matt Hardy classic. Drop him down. Shelton Benjamin is in a bad way, and guess what? It's about to get worse. Twist of fate! That is how you retain your title. This was an awesome match. This was an awesome match. We're going to pay respect. We are compounding 
That's a raw referee. That's why we're being mean to him. <laughs> we are compounding our baby face turn, not only by standing up for Trish, but now by respecting our fallen competitor, Shelton Benjamin. Any day now, guys. <laughs> Put her there, pal. You did a great job. This is what a baby face looks like, ladies and gentlemen. Boom! There it is! The mutual respect! Shelton's model's really good in this game. So is Scott Steiner's, dude. God, Scott Steiner is so huge. I almost played as Scott Steiner for this playthrough. What do we have for the rest of the card? Benoit versus Undertaker in a cage for the U.S. title. I'm going to say Benoit retains. Nope. God, my predictions are dog asshole this, on this episode. We have Lesnar versus Kurt Angle in Hell in a Cell. Interesting. A cage match. And a Hell in a Cell match back-to-back -back on the same pay-per-view. I'm going to say Kurt Angle takes the title. Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop predicting. <laughs> That's what, You know what? That's what it is. I have worked so hard, Jim Ross. Don't offer me a shot to tag titles. Matt, do you have a minute? I heard you wanted to discuss something with me. So what's on your mind? Tell him you want to form a faction... Tell me you want to work as a single superstar. Well, that's what we've been doing the whole time. Would it be interesting to form a faction? Hmm. Or is this a fork in the road moment and there's going to be results on either side? As a good guy, I feel like I don't really belong in a faction. But I don't know. We're going to work as a single superstar. As some of you are probably screaming at your fucking computer right now. All right, I'll let Mr. McMahon know about your plans. Survivor Series is in November. Fuck! <laughs> That's what it was. Why didn't you tell me that first? I'm sure you have a good match. Oh, I hope that didn't just, like, ruin our plans going forward. September 1st, we're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Cruiserweight champion of the world. Matt has just arrived in the arena. This is this could be big. We've got a vignette here. That's a nice car, JR. He rolls in style. Kurt Angle. The man who lost his WWE championship at SummerSlam. Now that's a nice car. Top of the line, no doubt. But it doesn't come anywhere close to mine. Huh. The okay, so would the babyface might stand up for himself and fucking pop him. I think we pop him, right? JR. Matt started it! Uh, I didn't start it. Kurt Angle started it. I guess his car is a sensitive issue. A fight has broken out in the parking lot. So we're going to say that that was the baby face standing up for himself. He's had enough of getting pushed around by the main eventers who think they're better than him. We are the Cruiserweight Champion and we take this shit seriously. Right? Fuck you. <laughs> Who starts a match with a Rolling Thunder? And yes, I know in wrestling, Rolling Thunder is RVD's fucking double somersault move. But in martial arts, it's a somersault kick. Get up here, Kurt. Side effect on the car. Boom! We got the worst of that. because we. Oh, look at that. Knocked the hood off this son bitch. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, that dude, this is awesome. Ricochet on the car. Incredible. Hit him with one of these. Oh! Big leg drop. Let's get on the motorcycle again. Fuck it. Last time it was fun. <laughs> come here, asshole. Come here, come here. God damn it, it's so hard. It's so hard to time it. Come. Oh, how is that even possible? God, John Cena and Kurt Angle have otherworldly strength when it comes to dealing with motorcycle driving opponents. Double underhook suplex. Fuck you, Kurt Angle. Suck it. Let's get in the forklift, too. Fuck it. What do you think about, uh, what do you think about, uh, this? Huh? What do you think about that? <laughs> what a waste of time. That was so stupid. What? Diving crossbody. You know what, we've already seen the parking lot, so I would like to, first of all, reverse you. That's how you do a back suplex, shithead. I would like to see a new area. If you don't mind. 
I think this is going to bring us to the area with the cage. Did it? I don't know where we are. I, I can't tell. Big old snapmare. Oh, look at that! Can he get back up here from there? He can. How about it? What a fucking strange ordeal this is. <laughs> Come here. I got something to show you. Smack him with the garbage can. Put him inside. Toss him around like the pizza shit he is. I might have used that exact same line last week. I don't remember. Now we're throwing him in that deal. Get some fans. And when he comes to get me, I'm going to press the button over here. I'm going to hit him with the shit. Come here, fuckface. Oh, yeah. That worked perfectly. <laughs> Man, babyface Matt Hardy's on a tear here, huh? Hit him with the deal. Boom. <laughs> oh, no. Dan Ads, what are your favorite weapons in wrestling? Garbage Cans, my good buddy, Jeremiah Wilkins, host of the Guillotine Entertainment Podcast, which you can listen to on Spotify or SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts. He recently told me while watching an episode of AEW Dynamite, he was like, man, I missed Garbage Cans, because there was a match where there was a big Garbage Can spot. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I feel like I haven't seen the Garbage Can come out in a while. Which leads me to that question. People shit on the garbage can because it's so cheesy and, like, they're so flimsy. But, oh, shit. Kurt's got specials. But I think they're cool. They sound good. Oh, I forgot Angle can hit the ankle lock off of a kick reversal. Which is awesome. We can hit all of our moves on Kurt, too. Neckbreaker on the floor, which is not going to be good for his three-time surgically repaired neck. You know that's true. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Get away from him. This is this is not good. He's doing all kinds of damage with his weapons, the cheat and fuck. <laughs> no! No, no, no! Angle slam! That's bad. That's big time bad. One, two, oh, man. We eat a loss backstage. I hope that's not going to have major ramifications... I don't want to go back out to the parking lot. I just got my ass kicked out there. I hope that's not going to ruin the storyline. Let's spend some of these attribute points. How much damage we can withstand. We definitely need to up that. Because I feel like we get hurt pretty easily. So we spent our points. Are we on the card? Are we defending our championship? We are not. We're not on the card, but that's okay. Because we had a, an angle start. Get it? An angle? At the beginning of this show. So I'll take it. And if you notice... Kurt wasn't on the card either. So that one's not so hard to swallow. We're in Ames, Iowa. Who the fuck is from Ames, Iowa? Are any of you guys from Ames, Iowa? <laughs> Undertaker's back here. We've dealt with him enough. Are we on the card? We are main event action against Rikishi. That's an opponent we haven't faced yet, so I'm going to go for that. Look at Lesnar picking up a win over Mysterio in the opener. But here we go. Main event action. Matt Hardy versus Rikishi. Next. Is this not one of the greatest intro songs of all time? It's so good, dude. I recommend everybody listen to the Something to Wrestle podcast with Bruce Pritchard. It's uh, one of those shows put out by ad-free shows. Mr. Conrad Thompson is the host of. They, I just recently went through their backlog and I was listening to the episode that they did on Rikishi and their Superstar Profile episodes are so good. They're so good. Now we're not going to watch through Matt Hardy's full entrance. We're just going to get a little bit of a taste. Just a little bit of a taste. Because we want to see that Cruiserweight Championship that we're so proud of around the waist of the leader of Mattitude. Matt survived superstar in the Matt survived superstar in the rumble? What the fuck does that mean? Is that supposed to be like Matt survived 28 other superstars in the Royal Rumble before being a I don't know, that's a fuck up. That's a major fuck up. You got to think this is big business though. Main event of SmackDown against Rikishi. 
Oh! <laughs> Uh, we're going to call Rikishi the heel here because he just played that to perfection. I had a whole idea lined up. Look at that big ass leg drop. I don't appreciate that. I had a whole thing. Quit smacking your stupid stinky ass, you fuck. What do you think about this? Roll him up. One, two, three. That's it. Ring the bell. Okay, that was a goddamn... That was way more than a three count. Mike Kyoto. That's Rikishi's heelish actions coming into play there. Now we're going to have a hard time with this match because this is another guy that's just way too big for us to pick up and be thrown around. So we got to find out what does and doesn't work. Mike Kyoto, back the fuck up. You're way too close. And I'm not going to get DQ'd just because you want to fucking be close enough to Rikishi to smell his dumb butt. <laughs> Poetry motion. And we dropped down on top of him. That was fucking brilliant. Fuck you, Rikishi. Oh no. Oh no, the body kicks. Look at this. Picks him up. Slams him down. Don't give him the power move replay. That's bullshit. I can't hit any of my power moves. He's too fucking big. DDT! This is good. This is good back and forth action so far. I'm only going to let guys get shit in. I'm going to tell you if I let him in. That's not a good position for Rikishi. We had Trish earlier on the fucking screen. We couldn't have got her to do that. We got fucking Rikishi doing it. <laughs> I'm only going to let guys get shit in if I tell you about it beforehand. So, if I don't tell you, that means they're just landing their shit on their own dime. Big head butt! This is bad news. This is major bad news. Into the DDT! Man, we can't get any- Mike Kyoto! He punched me in the fucking ding ding. You're not gonna do anything about it? I'll do something about this! <laughs> there we go. Yellow body on the big man. We're gonna keep the pressure on him. Now we can pick him up. Take advantage of that animation. Which is not tested for the weight limits. Punching me in the deal again! Unbelievable. Throw him in the corner. Stomp a mud hole in his big ass. Fuck you, Scotty, too hotty, did not survive the history of SmackDown. <laughs> that's a that's a callback to a joke you guys may or may not remember. Punch his fucking lights out. We need to get that head yellow. We got to do some major damage. Check it out. Fuck. Stop it. Matt Hardy has no body kick technique at all. <laughs> Dan Dance, what are some games that I have not covered yet? Bash his face. What are some games I have not covered yet here on 616 SmackDown that you would like to see? That's what I want to know. Some games I haven't played yet. You guys asked for full season mode playthroughs, and I am delivering with these very videos. Triangle X Squared Circle is on the way where we will have more back suplex on the big guy from the middle row. That'll shake the ring. There are more long term, uh, long term, more long form put retrospectives on the way in the form of Triangle X Squared Circle. So fear not on that front. Let's take advantage of the moves that are not weight limit tested. Hit him with the Splash Mountain Bomb. A feat of strength by Matt Hardy. Drop him down. But what do you guys want to see? Give me more input. I want to know what you want to see. I want to give you guys what you want. Yeah, Mike Kyoto, you'll call my rope breaks. You won't call his fucking ding-ding punches. Unbel the favoritism around here. It's unbelievable. That was a major striking combo. Son of a bitch. I took a big risk there by not... Uh, fuck it. Twist of fate! Goodbye! I, it's not going to be enough, but let's try Oh my goodness! Twist of fate out of nowhere! Gets the job done! Matt Hardy, version 1, the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, gets his first SmackDown main event against the big man Rikishi, puts him down with a twist of fate out of nowhere. We are going to keep this momentum rolling. 
Survivor Series is just a couple months away. Hey Dan Dans, I'm going to interrupt my own shit here for a second to let you know that I was a guest on the most recent episode of Wrestling Game Rewind, which is the brand new show over on adfreeshows.com. If you don't know Ad Free Shows, they are the hosts of Eric Bischoff's podcast, Tony Schiavone's podcast, Bruce Pritchard's podcast, Arn Anderson's podcast, Jim Ross's podcast, and much, much more. They're rolling out all sorts of new content. I'm very happy to be involved with Wrestling Game Rewind, and uh, hopefully this is just the start of things to come. Check it out. Oh my goodness. Matt's night is over as we see him leaving the arena. He's driving himself? Look, he can't start the engine. What? It's a forklift! Oh, fuck. I don't remember this. Kurt's driving it! I do not remember this at all. Wait, is he going to? Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> Matt's car is high in the air. Oh my God. Is Matt really in that car? This is what Austin did to Triple H at Survivor Series 99. He's trapped. Oh no, oh no. That is enormous. That's a big bump. That could be a career ender right there, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, we're involved in a big storyline. Kurt smashed the car and Matt as well. This is horrible. Oh, man. This is big business now, dude. We're fucking rolling. We're in a big storyline with a challenger, former WWE champion, the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. Oh, we're fine? <laughs> Matt arrived at the arena. He must have come straight from the hospital. I wonder if he took the bus. It must have been a short bus, JR. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh man. Undertaker's backstage. We're involved in a big angle right now, so I don't give a fuck about Taker back there. Ah, oh, I got hiccups now. We're going to open the show against Rhino. The Man Beast. You know, Rhino is a guy who I've really always enjoyed watching. Always. I, Rhino never has bad matches. Every time he's involved in something, it's going to be entertaining. Are they going to be fucking Kurt Angle, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels classics? No. But Rhino is always going to entertain you, dude. And the fucking gore is still one of the coolest moves. There's two spots on the card you can't be mad about having. Having? Take two. There's two spots on the card you can't be mad about having. That's the opening spot and the main event. Now, why is the opening spot so important? Because you want to start the card off with a bang. You want that show to kick off with such an exciting match that the fans are going to know, oh, this is what we're in for for the rest of the night. And that's the position that we have here. And we're going to take that ball and fucking run with it. We are the WWE Cruiserweight Champion. Title not on the line here, obviously against Rhino, who is a big boy we both missed there. But we're involved in this deal with Kurt Angle now, which is fucking awesome. How many of you guys, you can let me know in the comments, how many of you remember these... Oh, gut wrench power bomb! How many of you guys remember these Here Comes the Pain storylines, and you know where this is going? Because I don't. All I know is that I'm, I really am happy that we're involved in this storyline now. And I'm hoping that we can parlay it into a shot at the WWE Championship. Double underhook suplex. Really get some cool shit going in this season mode playthrough. Dude, I was so down in the dumps about this. I was like, this is, this is fucking, it's not going the way I wanted it to. He does not want to be thrown off the ropes. He won't allow it. Open over the top. I was starting to be like, this is just, it's not working. Get in the ring. But we turned, we turned the corner. We turned fucking baby face. That made a big difference. We embraced the fact that we are the Cruiserweight Champion. I don't know why I was poo-pooing the Cruiserweight title. That was a big mistake. Pump handle slam by the Man Beast. Who I'm noticing, his finisher meter is progressing way quicker than ours is. And I would like to call bullshit on that. Bullshit big time is what I would like to call. I love that big spinning elbow strike. Throw this man in the corner. Show him a thing or two about a thing or two. 
We gotta worry about Rhino. High angle back suplex. We gotta worry about Rhino having a, uh, a finisher like he does now. Because we don't have to be groggy for him to hit that gore. DDT! He can hit that shit out of nowhere. That's bad for business. So we have to be as protective as possible. Splash Mountain Bomb! Gotta be as protective as possible. Bring him out of the corner. Drop him down! Back suplex for you deeds. Dan Dan's, it might be up right now. It probably is. I haven't talked about it yet because when this is airing... <laughs> who knows when this is airing? But the... Let's check out this Tornado DDT. Wrap around. Put him away. The For You Deeds t-shirt is live. Uh, ooh, he was thinking gore. Oh, he went for it. He fucked up. What a dummy, stupid idiot. And then I miss a crossbody after calling him dumb. The For You Deeds t-shirt is live. Side effect over on ProWrestlingTees.com slash 616 Entertainment. You guys have asked for it. For You Deeds is one of the catchphrases that I throw out most often around here. And now, look at this big spine buster. That's bad. If you want to rock a For You Deeds shirt, you officially can. Nobody home for the elbow. Somebody home for the low blow. But check this out. Ooh! That's the first time the AI has reversed one of our finishers, and I do not appreciate it. I do not appreciate it one bit, I'll tell you that much. Bring him up for the back suplex. That's going to do some damage, alright? That's going to do big time damage. We have Rhino in a precarious position, which maybe I'm using that phrase too much, but it is what it is. We are getting that special meter full. Look at this. Sides. What, what the fuck do you call that move? Why don't I remember what you call that? <laughs> We're getting that finisher meter in order because it's almost time BDT to put Rhino away. Throwing the V1 signal up. All the fans know what it's time for. Come get it, Rhino. Boom! You ran into your own demise. Twist of fate. Say goodnight. What a victory. What a victory. Baby faced the shit out of him, Matt. Mike Kyoto, you didn't call those low blows. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> We're going to show respect to the Man Beast Rhino. We've got no problem with him. The problem we have is with the Olympic gold medalist, the former WWE champion, Kurt Angle. But Rhino, let me get some fucking fans here. I extend the hand. Are you going to take it or not? You are going to take it because you're a class act. We had a great match and all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wonder if we're going to get more development on the storyline here. I bet we will after the card is over. Big Show and A-Train defend the titles against the world's greatest tag team. In the main event, Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. Lesnar picks up the win, presumably with an F5 right in the middle of the ring. Matt appears to be leaving the arena. It's too bad he doesn't have that nice car of his anymore. Look, Kurt is here! I smashed up your car, so let me give you a ride. Dude, this is so cool. This is great. He threw Matt into the trunk! I'm taking you straight to hell and dropping you off. Where's he going? Oh, dude, I'm fucking loving this. I am loving this! We can't stop. We must continue. Denver, Colorado, the go-home for the September pay-per-view, which I don't know what it is off the top of my head. <laughs> Kurt Angle's in the ring. Where did he take Matt Hardy last week? Tonight, Matt is not backstage. I put him out of his misery. I'm sorry to let all the fans down. JR, it's Matt! What? What is it? <laughs> this is so Oh, dude, the monster truck! Oh, shit, we have to be JR. A monster truck! <laughs> He's going for Kurt's car! Which is exactly the same car I was driving. Hey, that's my car! Don't do it! Why would we not do it? This is awesome. Kurt's car has been smashed by a monster truck! 
Oh, dude, we crushed the shit out of that thing. That's Kurt's pride and joy. You bastard. My car. He's hitting... <laughs> He's hitting it once more to make sure it's demolished. I think it was undrivable the first time. <laughs> oh, man. Crushing that shit to death. His brand new car is now worthless junk. Oh, man. Do we face Kurt Angle in last man standing? A cage match or a table match? We've already seen... A table match. Last man standing is fun, but I think... We should go for the steel cage. He wants the Unforgiven match to be a cage match. He has no other choice. This whole feud started from the boasting about their cars. Now it'll be a match for the ages. Dude, this is so good. Play through the whole card. Doesn't matter. We weren't on it. But we have the biggest angle on the card. Unforgiven, Los Angeles, California. Let's give it a save ski. We have picked up so much steam. I was worried that this was not fun to watch, that this was boring. To quote the great Jim Ross, business has picked up. Oh, buddy. Two opposing forces in one ring. Their future hangs in the balance. Kurt, I'm going to hunt you down. What a thundering right blow that was! You can see the pain in his eyes! This is hatred! Pure hatred! Some actions can't be forgotten. Welcome to the end. History is in the making. That was awesome. That was fucking awesome. This is big business, dude. Matt Hardy versus Kurt Angle. Unforgiven. Goodness me. I'm excited, dude. I'm big time excited. It doesn't even matter who's backstage. I'm not going to fuck with it. It's Jericho. We're already involved in big business, but do we have enough points? It's a cage match, so I feel like we should up our speed. It's not much, but it's something. We're going to need that speed inside the cage to climb out. Now, I feel like a win is imperative here. Ooh, we don't even have to get out because it's pin and give up. Goldberg defending his title in a fatal four-way. Defends the title successfully with the pin over Kane. Sorry, I'm getting a bunch of notifications right now. Now, the WWE Championship, Tag Team Championships are on the line in a TLC match. World's Greatest Tag Team versus Big Show and A-Train. I'm going to say World's Greatest Tag Team takes it. See, this is why I'm not making predictions anymore. But now, the main event of the evening. Matt Hardy versus Kurt Angle in a steel cage. This is the biggest match of our career up to this point. Main event of a pay-per-view inside a cage against a former multi-time DDT. Against a former multi-time WWE Champion. And Dan Dan's, once again, if you have not picked up the For You Deeds t-shirt... I think that's a pretty cool design. I think you guys will really like it. But then again, I thought you guys would like the 616 uh, heart shirt. And <laughs> at the time that I'm recording this, nobody has bought one. So <laughs> it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Big belly to belly suplex for my deeds. I'm not going to make a for my deeds t shirt. Nobody asked for that. You guys asked for a for your deeds t shirt. <laughs> Look at the technical prowess being shown by both Matt Hardy and Kurt Angle. Big <gasps> German suplex for your deeds. I was going for the big back body drop there, but it was not to be just a one count. I don't think so, Kurt. It's not going to be that easy. Get this man in the corner. Hit him with the ricochet. That's not good for your rib cage or your spine. Now, I said earlier, I believe it's imperative that we win this. And I'm sticking to that, because as JR told us not too long ago, just a couple weeks ago, Survivor Series is indeed right around the corner. And I was worried that we gave away our chance to be in an angle when I did not want to form a faction. But luckily that's not the case. But if we want to have a big role at Survivor Series, we're going to have to ensure that we stay winning. Oh, that's not a great way to stay winning. It dropped on your head. 
by Kurt Angle. Not good. But we'll drop him on his head for good measure. Dan Nance, I want to know about some of the best matches you've ever had in wrestling games. I want to know. Leave a comment. Tell me where some of the best matches you've ever had. Kurt's not playing here. Oh! Hit him with that shot. I upped the difficulty. Drop him on his head again. And I can... It, it feels like I upped the difficulty when I'm in here with guys like Kurt. It felt the same against Rikishi, too. Like, I felt like I should have steamrolled him, but I didn't, and it's because I put it on hard. But we're doing as much damage as we can here. But we can't let him build momentum. That's important. How about this? Boom! Up, coming up off the top. Crushing his fucking skull. Do I feel bad about it? No, I don't. What do you think about this? Drop him on his deal. One more time. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm not going to let Kurt Angle get in any shit. Earlier we let Eddie Guerrero get some shit in. Boom! We are not going to extend Kurt Angle the same courtesy. Because he... No offense to Eddie, but Kurt has a much better chance of uh, getting the getting the drop on us. He has a special. That's not good. Diving elbow, spinning elbow for your deeds. And Kurt is the only guy that has beaten us in, in quite a while. Stop. Knock him down. Ooh, that was too close for comfort. That should have done more damage. When I knocked him off the top of the cage, that should have done big time damage, but it didn't. Twist of fate! Drop that man down! Mike Kyoto, make the call! Oh, man. Please use your finisher as the ankle lock. What are you doing? I was standing up. <laughs> He did that just to insult me, I bet. <laughs> Please use your finisher to go for the ankle lock. Because that, I'm not really worried about. But if he hits me with an angle slam, my body's already orange. That's bad. And see, dude, it's fucking nuts. Boom! That's like the tenth time we've hit him with that DDT. Go for the cover. His body turned red off that DDT, so I was like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. We might be able to make something happen there. Hit him with the side effect. Oh my goodness. Get that meter up. Talk about the ricochet. Put the guy down. Boom! We're doing damage here. That's what matters. Ho! Oh! Big leg drop. He tried to roll out of the way, but no dice. <gasps> <laughs> that finisher meter flashed and my asshole puckered. <laughs> Backbreaker for your deeds. He is laid out. Okay, we're not going to get that second taunt in. There's no time. Kurt, we're going to roll you up. Can we steal it? Oh, man. Big cross body. The win is within reach. Big diving elbow. Talk about one of these. Oh no, 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 no. Get down, get down. I was gonna say, how anticlimactic would that be? We've got him in a bad way. Pick him up. Hit him with the twist of fate for the second time. That's going to be enough. One, two, three. Yes! Unbelievable! Matt is victorious. He got his revenge for the destruction of his car. Oh, they're taking him out, dude. And look at him. Kurt is leaving on a stretcher. But at least he gets to ride in the ambulance. That's always fun. <laughs> Matt won the, the, the take two. Matt won the disastrous match. Dan Dans, this seems like a great place to say thank you very much for watching. I will catch you next week on 616 Smackdown. 
I don't know if we're going to continue this or if we're going to throw in a mixer. I'm not sure yet. We will see. But I love you. I'll see you next week. What's up, Dan Dans? Welcome to 616 SmackDown. We are continuing Matt Hardy's season mode here. And SmackDown, here comes the pain. Hold on, we got JR here. Tonight, SmackDown is here in Las Vegas, Nevada. There are so many chicks in this arena. Why do I have to sit next to you, JR? <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. By the way, I heard Seth McMahon has something special planned tonight. That means there is cause for concern. All right, as I was saying, my name is E. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh shit! It's SmackDown Roulette! I mean, it's supposed to be Raw Roulette, but we're here on SmackDown. Let me get my fucking intro out of the way. My name is Ian. Welcome to 616 SmackDown, the final unopposed episode before 616 Nitro debuts next week, and then we have Brand Warfare head-to-head. -head. Let's talk to Stephanie. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're here in Las Vegas, Sin City. You all know it. So I've decided to add a little Vegas flavor to SmackDown tonight. This is SmackDown... Take two. This is the SmackDown Roulette Wheel. This will decide all of our matchups for the night. Now let's decide Matt's match. Oh shit. Are we gonna get a fun one or are we gonna get some bullshit? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. A steel cage match. That's a good pick. I'm excited about that. It is going to be an incredible night. Stephanie with those eyes, man. Jesus Christ, you're freaking me out a little bit. I mean, I'm still into it, but you're freaking me out. Yeah, I'm, whatever. I'm still in. Dark hair, green eyes, good-looking woman in a suit. It does it for me. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Is anyone else into that? Does anybody else like a chick in a suit? Because I do. I can't explain it. You see Becky Lynch show up in a suit to that fucking red carpet deal last year, whatever that was? Might have been the SmackDown premiere. She was looking damn good. It's time... For the highly anticipated Diva Beauty Contest. This is the true highlight of my career, baby. Matt will be tonight's judge. I get a cage match and a titty competition. This is pretty cool. All right, I think that's enough talking. Let's see some action, starting with Tori. I mean, I'm not mad at Tori Wilson. I've always been a fan of Tori Wilson. Uh, if we're just telling stories here while she's doing this horrible can dancing animation, I used to have Tori Wilson's uh, Playboy photos on my PSP back in the day. <laughs> I figured out how to like download photos or put them on my PSP. Look how small Jerry's hand is! Go back a couple seconds, look how weird his clenched fist was. <laughs> this episode is a mess. Man, Sable, I, you know what? No disrespect, Sable, you're never gonna hear this anyway. I was never a Sable guy. I was never into Sable. I was into Tori. I had a Trish thing. I had a uh, I had a Lita thing. I think Mickey James was uh, the woman who taught me that I like thick thighs and fat asses. We're getting pretty personal in this episode, huh? <laughs> King, I think you're forgetting you're on the payroll right now. So Matt, who do you think the winner is tonight? Tori wins. No contest. The winner is the lovely Tori. Tori, here's your trophy from myself, the king. So what does Sable do now? She just goes home and fucks Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Thanks a lot, king. This truly means a lot to me. Yeah, I'm sure it does, Tori. Here's your fat ass trophy. <laughs> Look at his little hands. He's got Donald Trump hands. Oh my goodness gracious, that's funny. That was one slobber knocker, folks. Thanks for joining us, man. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, is that good for the ratings, or is Nitro going to take it? <laughs> we got nobody backstage, but, you know, they're all busy. They were watching the Diva Beauty contest. But look at this, middle of the card, steel cage match with Kurt Angle. Now, here's something that bothers me. The fucking roulette wheel was supposed to decide everybody's matches. Did two out of the three matches really get the fucking roulette wheel to land on regular match? Rey Mysterio picks up a win over Steven Richards, and now Matt Hardy is going to take on Kurt Angle. Next! Jesus Christ. I didn't know we weren't going to get entrances there. I wasn't ready. I was looking at my fucking phone. <laughs> this is a big opportunity here. Head to head with Kurt Angle in a steel cage on SmackDown, on 616 SmackDown. Mike Kyoto, how dare you? 
I hope we're in a commercial break right now. Nobody saw that. Off the ropes. Bring him back. Oh, shit. German suplex for Madiz. We need to win this. Big discus punch. We need to win this match. We have been going up the ranks. We're getting our super superstar points higher and higher. We've had this angle going with Kurt Angle. What not that what we did on the last episode? Didn't we drop him and his fucking car from the heavens or some shit? <laughs> I don't know. That was like three weeks ago. <laughs> but Dan Dan's, I hope you are big dro Oh, reversal on the drop kick. Hope you guys are excited for this episode. I hope you're enjoying this episode. Jumping Tornado DDT. I did two back-to-back -back weeks of 616 SmackDown with uh, the Here Comes the Pain season mode that we've got going here. And I I was a little surprised with the, the views. I, I feel like I thought for sure anything Here Comes the Pain would be surefire big-time business. Look at this flipping double leg takedown. But they were lower than I expected, so I took a break from Here Comes the Pain, but here we are, back to form. You know, we gotta finish this this Matt Hardy uh, season mode. We started the storyline, and I'll be goddamned if we don't finish it. Can we get him this time? There! There we go. Big arm drag. Gotta be causing damage to the head here. At the time you're watching this, you know that 616 Nitro has been announced. It is going to be, well it is, the second weekly wrestling game series here on YouTube.com slash 616 Entertainment. I hope you enjoyed that pilot episode, which not only had, here we go, Spike DDT. Not only had the big reveal, the big news, the breaking news, but it also featured the one-on-one -on -one competition between The Undertaker and Sting. Now, I think that might be the best match that has ever been on the channel. And I didn't play it, I simmed it. Check out this side effect, rack them up, boom, drop them down. What do you think about that, Kurt, huh? You shithead, bang, bang, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Gave him that yellow head right there like we pissed on him. <laughs> Put him in the corner. Mike fucking Kyoto, will you go get a life? Will you go somewhere and be stupid, you ass wipe? I can't have this guy getting in my fucking way all the time. You know what I mean? Big corkscrew plancha off the top ski. Kurt Angle might be the Olympic gold medal wrestler, but that doesn't mean that we can't lock in a front chin lock right there. A little guillotine choke action. Not quite a guillotine. You can have it fully locked in. There's a back body drop for you, Deeds. Let's get some fans here. Greg Jackson. Son of a bitch, I was so close to finishing that animation for that taunt, and he interrupted me. I don't appreciate the interruption, Kurt. You motherfucker. <laughs> He's reversing all my shit here, too. That's okay, I'll reverse it right back. Spike DDT! What do you think about that? Let me finish my fucking taunt this time. He's not going to. I know he's not going to. You asshole! Oh no, rear naked choke! That's how John Cena put us away in the fucking, uh... Uh, parking lot deal. Now Dan Dan's... Oh, what's this? Fireman's carry. Enough of the mumbo jumbo. I wanna know. Shit. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. Get up. Boom. 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 I was worried there. He climbs way faster than me. That's hog shit, dog shit. I don't appreciate that. Snapmare. Drop kick to the back of your stupid head. Why did that give him a fucking red, uh, orange body and not head? I don't know. Maybe the snapmare did more damage. Double underhook suplex. Here we go. Up top. Use this. Boom! As a downed move. I always love that because it's like a crooked ass front flip senton. Anyway, what I was going to say was... <laughs> enough mumbo jumbo. I want to know what you guys have been playing lately. I ask you every week and I don't want you to think that, oh, he's just he's just asking because it fills time. I want to know what you guys are playing. Oh, no! Oh, I, I thought he was going to drop us with an angle slam ski right there. I ask every week because I'm, I'm genuinely curious with what you guys are playing. And more often than not, you guys give me some really interesting results. Sometimes you guys are playing retro shit. DDT! Sometimes you guys are playing the, the newest fucking games I don't even have my hands on yet. So that's what I'm interested in. I will let you guys know. Don't even dare. I thought he was going to go for the ankle lock, but he, uh, he thought better of that situation. 
Mike Kyoto, go fuck yourself. I don't even feel bad anymore. I not a, not a single bit. Gut wrench. Drop him down. Get out of my fucking way. Corkscrew Plancha. I've been playing uh, Tony Hawk Remastered. All right, what's the official title? Tony Hawk 1 and 2, I think. Tornado DDT. And let me tell you, in two sittings, count them, one, two sittings, I have already not only 100%ed Tony Hawk 1, but I am listening with the DDT again. Just kidding. Running side effect. I know that's like a clothesline sort of deal, but I'm calling it a running side effect. I 100%ed Tony Hawk 1 in two sittings, and I'm like halfway there. Shit! Oh no. Oh no, get up, get up, get up! He's climbing far away! Matt, get up! Matt, get up! Matt, get up! Oh my Jesus Christ. Kurt, no more fucking around. Oh no, he reversed the twist of fate! That's bad news. DDT for your DDDs! Fuck you! <laughs> Let me finish my taunt. I need all the special I can get. Stay away, stay away, stay away, stay away. Got it. Bitch. Tell me about the side effect. Shit. <laughs> Take two. Tell me about the side effect this time. Boom! <sighs> I'm like halfway there with Tony Hawk 2 already. And uh, I love those games so much. I will never not love those games. I go back and beat Tony Hawk 1 like every year or two. It's just so good. It's so good. I'm also playing Spider-Man Miles Morales. Oh. Why is- Oh no! He tricked me! He tricked me! Angle slam! Matt Hardy, I need you to get up, brother. I really need you to get up. If you ever loved me- Okay, we did it. Kurt Angle is a motherfucker. Let me tell you about this ricochet. That's for your rib, 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 fucking rib cage. I was trying to work a joke in there, but I, I wound up just stuttering, so I don't mind that. <laughs> Let's stomp on this guy. Throw him in the corner, maybe off the ropes. This has been a really good match. Let's not, let's not, uh, sidestep the fact that this has been a fantastic match. I'm trying to tell you guys what I'm playing. Guess what? Twist of fate for your deeds. Let's get the fuck out of here and win this match. Get our superstar points up. I'm tempted to jump off the top, but Jeff Hardy taught me that's a bad idea. What a victory. Look at him walking away like nothing happened because it ain't shit. I am very, very proud of that. Big win over Kurt Angle in a steel cage on SmackDown. Brock Lesnar picks up a win over Eddie Guerrero in the main event. We got our superstar points up to 80. I think that means... I think that means we can get a shot at the WWE Championship now. Or is it the World Heavyweight Championship? What belt is on our show? It's the WWE title. This is exciting stuff. This is big business. Is anybody backstage? We've got... Got The Undertaker, but you know what? I would like to talk to Stephanie. I want to talk to Stephanie <laughs> about a title shot. What's up, you good-looking woman, you? Request title shot. You are heavily involved in a storyline. Please come back when you have some free time. Okay, that's fine. Come see me again anytime. Oh, I will. Don't, don't get it twisted. We're involved in a storyline, so we're not really going to worry about whether we're booked or not. So fuck The Undertaker. In the main event, Matt Hardy versus Kurt Angle once again. Uh, am I annoyed that it's a rematch? Yes, but we might get some angle ski action going on here because we got Matt Hardy versus Kurt Angle. What's going to happen when these two tangle once again? Next! I like working those next in there <laughs> for whatever reason. I don't know why. It just feels official, doesn't it? And it helps me figure out where I can drop ads in the video and I, you know what I want to say thank you to guys to you guys real quick nobody really complains about the ads that I put in here and I appreciate that you know I work hard on this show every week so it's nice to make a, a, just a little bit of YouTube money from it and I try not to get egregious with it I try to do it kinda like a TV show would so it's like between uh, between matches maybe you'll get a commercial break but I do want to say that I put up my full playthrough 
of Mortal Kombat Armageddon's Conquest mode. It's almost a five-hour video. And I was really surprised that YouTube let me monetize it at all because it is Mortal Kombat. But being that it's not like a fatality compilation and you can't even do fatalities in the Conquest mode, uh, I forgot we're still the Cruiserweight Champion. <laughs> I was able to monetize that video. And I did not go through and place the ads like I normally do. So I usually choose where the ads are going to go. On the Conquest one, I forgot to go through and place them. And I got a complaining comment that was like, there are so many fucking ads. And I'm thinking, like, who's this dickhead? But when I actually went in and I looked at the ad placement, like, in my analytics, he was totally right. YouTube had placed ads like every three fucking minutes on the first hour and a half of that video. So if you saw the Mortal Kombat Armageddon Conquest Mode video and you were like, I cannot believe how many ads he put in here, I didn't put those there. Those were placed by YouTube. And by the time you are hearing slash watching this, that has been rectified. So I do apologize for that. But yeah, for... Big thank you, you guys, for not minding that I slip ads in here every once in a while. Uh, it, it's nice to see a couple bucks for the work. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I mean, let's be totally real about it. Um, I have a lot of support over on Patreon from you guys, and I, I greatly appreciate that. So, through YouTube and Patreon, you guys make this, uh, you guys make this fucking awesome for me. So, adding the extra show with 616 Nitro and working on some of the big stuff I haven't told you about yet. That's me trying to make shit awesome for you as well. And I think that's why this community is as fucking tight as it is. But now let's uh, slip back into our wrestling character. Matt Hardy brings Kurt Angle up. Big back suplex off the second rope. And King, you can see that Kurt Angle's body is already yellow. Probably because last week these two men went through a German suplex. These two went through a hellacious cage match against each other. A match that spiked DDT. Matt Hardy defied the odds to come out on top of. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so funny? I did that on purpose. Wouldn't it be so funny if uh, you're watching like uh, AEW or... Oh shit, I did the same move again. But it's an effective move. Back suplex off the second row. You're watching AEW or Raw or whatever it is that you fucking watch. And the announcers are like, you can see Kurt Angle's body is already yellow. <laughs> You'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? That was an awesome drop kick, And the cell animation to fall to the side like that was also really cool. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with Kurt Angle. This could come back to bite me in the ass. Shit. Snap suplex. Great animation. This could come back to bite me in the ass. Oh no, rear naked choke locked in. But I feel like I have Kurt Angle's number. I've taken the controller away from the microphone area so you don't have to hear me tap it. Because if I don't, that's what you're going to hear. <laughs> I feel like I have Kurt Angle's number. And I feel like this storyline that we're involved in with him. We've dropped him in his car off a fucking crane. Isn't that what we did or did he do that to us? I don't know, I have such a bad memory, but I'm not worried about this guy. Olympic gold medalist wrestler? Yeah. Oh, right in the deal. You know I don't appreciate that. Is he an Olympic gold medalist? Yeah. Is he a multi-time world champion? He is. But we're Matt fucking Hardy, all right? We are V1 cross body block. Let's let this man get up. He's going to charge us and we're going to hit him. Hopefully we can connect with the head scissors. Oh, no. We, we did hit him, but not the way I wanted to. Hey, you played right into my second hand here. Put him in the corner. Beat the fucking dog shit out of him. Fuck you. I don't care about your medals. Suck it. V1. No, uh, no count out out here. King, I am I'm worried that, these, uh, that this capacity crowd is going to realize that our announce table is completely see-through. I wouldn't worry about that, JR. <laughs> what do we have? Oh, fuck. Ooh, I got an idea. Side effect through the announce table. A fucking thing of beauty. Let's try this head, this head scissors deal again. Come on, Kurt. Turn around. Fuck. Let's try it one more time. Take three. 
on this very hard to pull off head scissors move. Shit! <laughs> I made the mistake. Look at this fucking like side STF. He didn't even crank it. He just did one pull and tried to twist our head off our goddamn shoulders. Belly to belly suplex. I love that animation because the guy doesn't fall flat back. He kind of lands on his hip, which looks horribly painful. Rolls him up. One. Two. Not enough. Not enough to keep the Olympic gold medalist down. I love this move, too. God, there's so many great animations in Here Comes the Pain, isn't there? Throw him in the corner. Hit him with one of these. Let's get behind him. Shit, I wanted to hit him with a, a fucking uh, ricochet out of the corner, but no dice. I need to remember that we're in here with Kurt Angle, and he's not a big beef boy. He's not a meat man. So we can uh, we can hit him with some power shots, or some, some heavy grapple moves, I should say. Where some of these other guys, look at this backbreaker. Drop him down! So many of these other guys are so heavy, like Undertaker and Lesnar, that we can't even pick them up. But Kurt Angle, we can get pretty creative in here. So let's throw him in the corner. Get him out of the way. What the fuck is with that big elbow? Got him right where we want him. <laughs> Discus punch. Nobody home. Kurt Angle goes for the grab. Matt Hardy says no. Into a twist of fate. And that is how two weeks in a row Matt Hardy is going to pick up underdog victories over Kurt Angle. Get him away from the ropes. I waited too long. I was so concerned about him being in rope break position that I missed my shot. But that is why we have moves like this and fuck. He's going to try to trick me with the fucking angle slam again. I know he is. Reverse DDT ski. I got an idea. I got an idea. Kurt Angle is the heel here, right? He's the dirty player. So what we're going to do is we are going to out dirty the dirty boy by doing one of these. That's not what I meant to do at all, but the Splash Mountain Bomb is such a great move. Out of the corner, boom! What do you think about that? Kurt, what do you think about this? Shit in my ass. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did we get it? Did we get it? Did yes, we reversed it! Clock him. Clock him again. Throw him into the corner. Shit. I haven't been able to go for the move I had in mind yet. Fuck. <laughs> One of these days, it's going to work out. We need him in the corner facing backwards to do it, though. Here. Fuck. All right. I don't know what button it is. Full disclosure, big back suplex. You know what? That's concussive force. That's enough to do it in. No, it's not. My, my idea was because Kurt Angle, big DDT, because he's the dirty fighter, I wanted to do the feet on the ropes move. Oh, shit. And pin him with a cheat the way he would try to do to us. But it's not really working out. I'm having a hell of a fucking time pulling it off. Stop hitting me in my shit. It's, it's only 2003 right here. Matt's got to have three kids later in life, you fuckface. You're going to ruin it. Tornado DDT. Kurt Angle's in a world of trouble. Hit me in the fucking balls one more time. I fucking dare you. <laughs> you shithead asshole guy. Fuck. You know what? No more games. No more games. Drop you on your deal. Off the ropes. Into the fucking a German suplex. No good. That's no good. This is another great match, man. These are back-to-back -back awesome matches. Let's go to the top. Teach him something about the leg drop. Oh! Off the top rope. Somehow, he's up before we are. There's, there's a shot for your deal once again. No simpy, as Scott Steiner would say. No simpy for your deeds. Oh no, this is what I wanted to do! One, two, three. You motherfucker! I cannot believe he stole that. But what a great finish that was. What a great finish that was. I'm in control. 
almost the entire time, and then he cheats. Feet on the ropes. King, look who it is. Well, here comes the man himself. He has a more evil look than usual tonight. Matt, you have all the potential in the world. You're making quite a name for yourself here in the WWE, and I'm quite happy for you. But you're still not the best wrestler the industry has seen. My throat hurts. So I want to help you become an icon in this industry. You can become the best ever, and I can take you to that next plateau. Oh, man. Vince McMahon, the chairman, offering his hand, offering a deal to Matt Hardy version one. I'm very scared. If I hit X, I don't want to accidentally do something because I feel like they're going to bring a menu up and fuck me. So, do we shake his hand or do we knock him out? Well, we were a heel and we turned face and that's when our fortunes turned around. Vince McMahon is a pile of shit. We're sticking with the babyface route. So, Vince, you know, thanks. Fuck you! Get the fuck out of here. He knocked down the chairman. What an answer. This could be the end of his career. This is big business, Dan Dans. We may have lost the match to Kurt Angle, but we did knock out the chairman. We're in a big storyline right here. Taz, what do you want? Hey, Matt. Next month, there's an event taking place in Manchester. Are you interested in being a part of it? Yeah, sure. Well, I see. It should be a successful event. You're goddamn right it will, because I'm going to be there. Our superstar points have fallen to 79, which I do believe takes us out of world title contention. But I'm not that worried about it, because we're involved in this big angle. And I'm expecting a cutscene right here. There seems to be a man who doesn't know who I am. And that's... Take two. And that man's name is Matt. He made the biggest mistake of his life. And people will remember it for years to come. They will also remember him as the man who was beaten by A-Train. Oh my god! A-Train is here! He was called out by Mr. McMahon! He's brighter than Matt. He knows who Vince is. Matt, now I will make your life a living... Yeah! <laughs> that hurts my throat so bad. You'll think twice before treating Vince McMahon like that again. I need something to drink here. I need something to sip ski, dog. This <laughs> shit hurts. I check who's backstage. Just out of habit. You know what I want to do? I want to look at our superstar stats, and I want to know what our win-loss record is. Check this out. 16 and 5. I can deal with that. I can deal with 16 and 5. I love looking at the stats. We have faced Eddie Guerrero five times, Kurt Angle four times, Chavo Guerrero three times, Tajiri twice. <laughs> oh, man. Cruiserweight champion, U.S. champion. Look at this shit, man. Look at this. We're, I, obviously, we're still we're facing Kurt Angle every fucking week. <laughs> that you know, that's WWE booking. That's just how it goes. So tonight we're going one on one with A Train. This is going to be tr the U.S. title in the opener. Kurt Angle demoted to the second match where we are in the main event. You know what, Kurt Angle? Fuck you. That's what you get. Undertaker gets a pinfall victory over John Cena to retain the U.S. title. Kurt Angle keeps his momentum rolling with a win over the Big Show, but now we have Matt Hardy in the main event against A-Train next! Did you guys get into Albert at any point in his career? Whether he was Albert, A-Train, uh, King, uh, Lord Tensai, or, or just Tensai? I feel like what I were, will remember him most for is the A-Train... God damn it, I can't speak. I feel like I will remember him most for the A-Train run in 2003-ish. He had some great matches as A-Train. He was involved in some big angles. Obviously, I think a lot of people have seen the gif of Brock Lesnar F5-ing A-Train. He landed right on his fucking head, which could have been catastrophic for a guy that large. But, you know, we've got the Cruiserweight Champion, Matt Hardy, on his way to the ring. 
And if we're looking at the Matt fact here, Matt often wonders how they did WrestleMania without him. And Matt, I wonder that too. Look at that beautiful belt around the waist. Do we need this entrance? No. Let's get to the match. What do you think about the big elbow to start, Dan Dans? And what do you guys think about the games that are right over the horizon? You know, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 right around the corner. Is anybody excited for Cyberpunk? I definitely am. Discus Punch right into some of these. Bing, bang, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> we've seen several delays for Cyberpunk at this point, but that has not for... Uh, a second made me not want to play it. And if you guys don't do this, maybe you're not like me, but when I was younger, I used to get so excited for shit, whether it was a movie or a game, that every day I would like count down the days of like how close it was until I could experience that thing. till I could have it, you know? And as I get older, I don't allow my sh myself to get serious for anything. Not to get serious. Take two. I don't allow myself to get excited for anything until it's practically here. You know what I mean? Fuck! He held onto the ropes. I missed my dropkick. He's going for the power bomb, but I think I reversed it. No, I didn't! Power bomb! For my deeds, that's no good. Cesaro swing! Yes, Albert was doing it before Cesaro. And now the fucking stretch muffler. This is no good. Or the Brock lock, whatever you want to call it. He's beating the dog shit out of us. This is bad. Okay, so we need to motherfucker. We need to get our asshole together here because we were involved in this huge angle. We've been dying to get involved in a major storyline. Here we go. Drop the guy from the second rope. That's a lot of weight coming down. What do you think about that, A-Train? You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I don't allow myself to get uh, super excited for things until they're practically here. So, while Cyberpunk has seen several delays at this point, it's okay for me because I, I was never buying into the hype yet. And I don't mean that as in I don't think the game is going to be good. Fuck. I mean that as in um, DDT. As in for me, it wasn't close enough for me to really get excited anyway, but... Now, man, I'm recording this on November something, 29th, 30th, and it's real close, man. It comes out December 10th. That's the day after my birthday. December 9th is my birthday, so if you guys want to uh, wish me a happy birthday on the Twitter ski, whatever, it's at IDS616. I'm going to be there. You know what I mean? Or maybe for my birthday, you guys powerbomb again. Did we reverse it? We did. DDT! Fuck you. Now, I don't know if you saw his body bar up there, but that turned his body orange and his head yellow at the same time. Talk about the twist of fate! I don't think it's going to be enough, though. But we're going to try, damn it. Yes, we got him! One clean twist of fate. Beautiful. And we are going to... Hold this over his head. Get the fuck out of here, Mike Kyoto. You're a Vince McMahon puppet. I know you are. So go eat shit somewhere with a spoon and like it. <laughs> My birthday is December 9th. And if you guys want to get me a birthday present, sign up to patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. <laughs> one Vuana. Vince McMahon, what do you think about that? Oh, no cutscene for that one? No cutscene of Vince McMahon losing his shit. Superstar points back up to 80. We are back in world title contention, which makes me happy. And after this, I think we got a pay-per-view ski coming up. Because this is week four. Who's backstage? Undertaker. Not worried about you, brother. I've beaten you several times. We are in the... Oh, fuck. Okay. We're in the main event with Big Show this time. Vince McMahon is putting us in the ring with every nasty fucker that he can possibly think of. In the opener, Rhino Charlie Haas and Tajiri beat Val Venus, Rikishi, and Eddie Guerrero. Rey Mysterio takes on Brock Lesnar to no avail. Lesnar keeps his momentum going. And Matt Hardy takes on the Big Show in the main event. You guessed it. Next! Alright, I'll keep this loading screen in because that's our boy. Remember this old theme song? Damn, that pyro went off right in front of him. We have one strap Big Show here, who's looking pretty fucking svelte. 
It's got the Fu Manchu going on, also known as the three-sided dick duster in certain circles. <laughs> well, he's looking pretty good here. Not looking good enough to pick up a win, I'll tell you that much. He's going down tonight. That's for damn sure. What kind of mat fact are we going to get this time for the reigning WWE Cruiserweight Champion of the World? At the time I'm recording this, it was yesterday, but how many of you watched my... Uh, I must said Matt Hardy. How many of you watched Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. face off? I don't know if you guys are big boxing fans like I am. I'm a combat sports fan in general. Uh, real quick, let's hit this Matt fact. Matt's favorite sushi is freshwater eel. Not my favorite sushi. I'm a tuna, tuna sashimi sort of guy. I actually had tuna sashimi for dinner two days ago. The beautiful Tara Darcy and I ordered some. We had a nice dinner in. <laughs> but yeah, I've said it before. I'm a big combat sports fan. Uh, I love MMA, kickboxing, boxing. Big fan. Um, I always loved Mike Tyson and Roy Jones growing up. Kind of like when I got into my late teens and early 20s. Now, they were both... Mike had been long retired by that point, and Roy was way past his prime by that point, but that was... Um, I got into combat sports when I was, like, 15. And one of the things that you do when you first get into something... Look at this, breaking the rules, dropping the big show down! 500 pounds across his fucking sternum, and then he hits me right in the deal, of course. For his deeds, he gets a spike DDT on the floor... When you first get into something, you go through and you, like, research the past. You research the greats. And two greats in the history of boxing are Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. I think anybody would tell you that. And obviously Mike uh, was slash is more famous than Roy Jones Jr. Not always for the right reasons, but don't get it twisted, guys. If you don't know, Roy Jones Jr. is one of the greatest boxers of all time held titles in many different divisions. And he was a guy who started as a middleweight and got all the way up to becoming the heavyweight champion. Heavyweight champion. Roy's not a very big guy. And that, that there are a lot of people who think that that was a really bad move and that kind of facilitated DDT on the ramp. Roy Jones going up in weight and then coming back down may have been what facilitated the downfall of Roy Jones' career and the end, big elbow, I'm mean, not waiting for him, the end of his prime, because it happened very suddenly. But um, when they announced that Mike Tyson and Roy Jones were going to fight, my first thoughts were, this is horrible. I hate when fighters who are finally comfortably retired come out of retirement, because fighting, it's not fucking pro wrestling. It's the real deal. And in the real deal... It's not an old man's game. It's a young man's game. And the young lion is always, in real life, almost always going to come and eat the old king and take their throne. That's just how it goes. But the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? It's an exhibition. They're not going to try and kill each other. And this, look at this big suplex on the big show off the second rope. Can we get big show with the head scissor deal? We're going to try this over and over. I'm such a mark for this move simply because it's hard to pull off. Get up, show. You're making me look bad. Fuck. <laughs> All that waiting for just something that looks like it was a Sabu move. Shit. Big Show is giving me more trouble here than I expected. But um, the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? It's an exhibition. And he, that's the thing, too, is people are like, oh, Mike Tyson's going to kill Roy. And at first, I'm like... Guys, it's an exhibition. They're not going to be throwing as hard as they can. It doesn't count on their records anyway. Um, so don't really worry about it. And then we see how hard... Here we go. <laughs> Shit. We see how hard Mike Tyson was training for this. And even Roy Jones Jr. on Joe Rogan's podcast was like, Man, I thought I was getting Mike on three weeks notice. <laughs> like, this isn't the fight I signed up for. <laughs> But um, it started to get marketed as like a real fight. I'm like, God damn it. I don't want to see one of these guys take heavy brain trauma. They've been out of the game for so long. Just stay gone. What are you doing? But then, right before the fight happens, shit! Oh no, final cut. Final cut. That's bad. We might be fucking dead. We might be dead. 
Get away from me, show. You fucking ass. We got the fuck. Oh no, we have to be so careful here. They started marketing as like a real fight, but then the, the rules came out. And once again, I was like, okay, it's an exhibition. But Mike and Roy did not hold anything back. They tried to the best of their abilities. And long story short, because I've been harping on this for a while. Both guys can be proud of themselves. They have nothing to be ashamed of. Ashamed of. For guys in their 50s, they look fucking amazing. I can't believe how good Mike Tyson looked after being out of the ring for 15 years. I can't believe how good Roy Jones looked, being retired for three years, but he has so many miles on his body, man. Um, I'm happy for both guys. You know, they called it a draw. It doesn't matter either way, because it's an exhibition. It's not going to be on their records. So if you're complaining about that, it doesn't mean anything anyway. Um... But yeah, I'm just happy for both guys. And Mike says he wants to keep going. He wants to have some more exhibition bouts. And as long as he's not going out there and getting hurt and he actually is having, like, a good time. Hey, man, he's in his 50s. He's at the end of his... At he's way past the end of his athletic rope. You got one life. If the guy wants to have fun, who the fuck am I going to be? Son of a bitch, we just lost this match. Who am I going to be to say that he shouldn't be out there doing it? As long as... the they're keeping it as safe as possible. Matt Hardy, we gotta kick out, brother. Come on. Oh, fuck. Man, we're trading wins and losses on this episode. And I'm not very happy about it. But maybe this looks good for the angle. You know, we gotta think about the storyline overall. We're walking out. With our head held high the best we can. The match is over and now Matt is heading back. That was a pretty difficult match. Wait a second! It's A-Train! Oh, I'm doing the wrong voice. It's A-Train! He smells blood! This is the man that couldn't beat us. So, of course, he's hitting us from behind. Matt is down. He's helpless. This is nothing compared to what will happen at No Mercy. Especially when it's in a... God damn it, another steel cage match. He announced a steel cage match to Matt, who's out cold on the floor. I don't think he heard him. <laughs> Man, we got another cage match on this episode, huh? Back out of world title contention with that loss, unfortunately. But, doesn't matter anyway, because the story continues. We are here at No Mercy in Little Rock. Take two. Little Rock, Arkansas. We're going to start this show up and get the pyro ski going here. The suspense is at its peak. Pain that has never been experienced before. Are you ready to accept your fate? He's had enough! <laughs> My impressions are horrible. A-Train ain't gonna stop! That was the beginning of the stunner animation. A message has been sent! There is only one winner. Tonight is about control. They will give each other all they've got. My throat hurts so bad after doing this episode. This is a cool stage right here. This was No Mercy 2002's stage. And No Mercy 2002 in real life. A fantastic event. Fantastic event. I noticed we had some built up attribute points here. We should use them. How much damage we can withstand. That, we're going to put points into that. Because we're facing big boys now. And we need to be able to take as much damage as possible. Who's backstage? Anybody? No. But that's okay. I think this will be the main event of this episode of 616 Smackdown. Look at this. Top of the fucking card here. Do some predictions. Can we make up for our horrible predictions last time? Jazz defending the women's championship against Stacey Keebler. I'm going to say they put the belt on Stacey and her fine ass. Nope. <laughs> Not going to happen. The Dudleys defend... The World Tag Team Championships against Batista and Ric Flair in a table match. This is where Evolution take the titles. Motherfucker. Man, I started this series on a roll. But none of that matters because in the main event, Matt Hardy takes on A-Train in a steel cage. And it's up next. See, I was ready this time for your bullshit. I knew you were going to skip those entrances on me, so I was ready. We know we can beat A-Train because we've beaten him already. This victory, oh, he's being tricky. This victory will put us back into world title contention. 
and I would love to leave no mercy and this episode of 616 Smackdown being in world title contention. That would be fantastic. From behind, okay, there are officially no pins, no give up here in this steel cage match. It's always a question. You always got to wonder. Poetry in motion. <laughs> Not a lot of people know you can do that. When a guy is down on all fours like that, you can run up their back, and if you time DDT, if you time your button press of X correctly, you can launch into a heel kick. And every time my opponent winds up in that position, you'll notice if you watch me play for long enough, I can't resist. I see them down there, and I have to go for it. <laughs> I just have to. There's a big roaring elbow right there. Put the boots to him, you know what I'm saying? Throw him in... He does not... Oh, look at that jumping front kick! Beautiful crane kick. Oh, he did it again! Crane kicks back to back. Shades of Lyoto Machida on Randy Couture. Hard body slam right there. Never really liked that animation. Just looks weird. But now we have a yellow body. Son of a fucking bitch. We can't pick up this big bastard. We have a yellow body, which puts us on equal playing field. Uh-oh. Power bomb with A-Train. I'm not very happy about that. I don't want to be on equal playing field. I don't want to be on equal ground, equal footing. I want to be in charge, goddammit. And his special meter, if you watch, this is some grade-A bullshit. Because his special meter is ticking up faster than ours is. Big side slam. There's collusion going on. I smell it, and I smell it real bad. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. Get off my fucking brain. What do you think about this? Big old fucking... What did I call that? A roaring elbow last time? Hit him with it again! He doesn't know how to block it. So we'll just keep using it. It's hard being in here with fucking A-Train and... Shit. Oh no, I tried to reverse it. You could hear me tapping the buttons, but to no avail. He's going to try and climb, but I'm not going to sell that for very long. I'm just, I'm yellow. You know what I mean? You big fucker. I, there's like no moves I can do to him, so I have to try and hit him. These work. I have to try and hit him with a bunch of fucking, like, strikes. And, oh, got the knees up. And moves that, like, I don't have to pick him up for. Why you, you keep trying to climb? When, like, I'm barely hurt at all. I'm not, I see, I like, I get behind him and I would normally go for a ricochet. Here we go. That DDT pays dividends. I would normally go for a ricochet when I get behind him, but I know it's just going to lead to the animation where I can't fucking pick him up. So we're just going to work on his body. We're going to get that body red. We're well on our way with all of these attacks. Throw him in the corner again. Because actually, throwing a guy in the corner does a great deal of damage. Look at that body's red. Beautiful red body. Get in the corner. Shit. <laughs> What's our plan of action? Well, we're going to get in the corner. Shit. <laughs> Big elbow. Landed at that time right into his fucking piece of shit heart. Look at that beautiful combination. He's hurt, but he's not hurt enough until he eats the twist of fate for his deeds. Matt, get out of the cage. Please get out of the cage. I need you to climb like your life depends on it. This is how you pick up a victory in the main event of a pay-per-view. What a... Oh, look, we got some cutscene action here. Matt made it out of the steel cage. Hey, A-Train is out too. This is bullshit -ski. At the same time, they're arguing over who got out first. What's going to happen? The officials are discussing it right now, and I think they're going to make a decision. We've concluded that both competitors got out at the same time. We've decided to have a rematch. What? A rematch, King? They must be exhausted. I think Vince might be involved in this. Yeah, you think? Motherfucker. Okay, so we... Two, three cage matches on this episode of 616 Smackdown. What am I going to do for the thumbnail? Should it be Matt and Vince and a fucking steel cage? And this is grade A bullshit right here. I had his body red, and now they have us both double yellow. Get up, Matt. Get up, Matt. Fuck you. 
But I like I, I really can't complain because this is cool as shit. <laughs> like I'm all, me complaining is a work. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being entertaining. Shit. Okay. Our body is orange already, which I'm. Oh, I'm not happy about. He's gonna try to climb again. I can tell because he's walking his stupid ass with a purpose. What the fuck was that? Did you see that? Rewind that. The fucking, my controller just had me like walking at Mike Kyoto for some reason. I don't go for Mike Kyoto. He's the one who gets in my way. Don't get it twisted. Kick him in the body. Orange body into the corner. Smash him in the corner. And you know we want to throw him into the corner as many times as possible. Because as we covered earlier, getting thrown into that corner does damage. Got these stomps. Hit him with that big elbow. Can we take the pad off? You are goddamn right we can. You know what? Is that a heelish maneuver? Yeah, but we're in here with Vince McMahon's crony. So fuck him. That hurt his head for some reason. Unbeknownst to me. I am taking no chances. Big DDT. I want to hurt this guy. Oh! I want to hurt this guy. I want to hurt him bad. He's got a red body. Into the corner. Smash him into the corner. This is making me very happy. We are doing... Oh, shit. We're doing big time damage to this big fat son of a bitch. But the question is, how many moves do I have in that corner position that I can actually hit him with? Our special meter is filling up. Oh no, this is a really long taunt animation. Please get it. Please finish the taunt. Yes. Beautiful. He's going to get up and he's going to walk right into... Oh, I don't know. The twist of fate. Get the fuck out of here. Picking up our third Steel Cage victory on one episode. Albert, thanks for coming. You heard that bell ring. Look at these two! What a pile of shit this is. This is reality! They should know who has the power. Who's they? Me? Matt Hardy? Vince McMahon never ceases to amaze me. Fuck these guys, man. I hope this isn't the future of the WWE. Spoiler, it is. Damn. Okay, do we get double superstar points for that? I doubt it. Oh, we do! Okay. Two superstar points... We are in a very healthy position now in world title contention. Dan Dance, thank you for tuning in to another episode of 616 Smackdown. What's up, Dan Dance? Welcome to 616 Smackdown. My name is Ian. This week on the show, we are continuing our Smackdown Here Comes the Pain season mode. And look who it is. Feels great to be home, huh, King? We got the doctor of thugonomics, John Cena, on his way to the ring. King says, what does he want? Tonight, Mr. McMahon will not be attending the show. He has important business to attend to. I'm jealous of Mr. McMahon, though, because he doesn't have to come all the way out to this rustic yeehaw hell. The people in this city are crazy. You guys all love this has-been Jerry the King Lawler. How sad. Why don't you come out here and give this ovation by actually wrestling? Get this ovation. Whoops. How about that, King? <laughs> Don't listen to him, King. I know. What's wrong, King? You too good to wrestle in your hometown? Yeah, I wouldn't want to embarrass myself either. Alright, it's on! This is a lot of narration to start the show. I would rather just have a match to start the show. Good, you'll be in a handicap match. He can't have everything his own way? King, calm down. I can't stand listening to him disrespect my hometown. I don't give a fuck about my hometown. <laughs> Don't worry, JR. I'm gonna punch his. I'm gonna punch Hit's lights out. We just discovered a typo, and here comes the pain. This was the goat. This was the greatest of all time. Ten out of ten. With that typo, this is now a five out of ten. Dog shit game. <laughs> oh man, Dan Dan's. It's been a while since we have uh, played a little bit of Here Comes the Pain. So let's check on our superstar stats. Here we go. We are the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Matt Hardy. We got 81 superstar points. We have an overall record of 19 and 6. I can live with that, man. I can live with that. We have a bunch of matches with Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle. 
We are on a big time, uh, not a big time winning streak. It looks like we lost a match to the Big Show. And then we won two straight cage matches. Those were both over Albert. 19 and 6, not bad. And I think we're going to get involved, Ski, with this John Cena the King deal. Ooh, god damn it. We're defending the Cruiserweight title against Tajiri. Why are we not involved in that main event? That's bullshit. This would be a great opportunity to lose the Cruiserweight title, but we're not, we're not playing like that. We're not going to live our life feeling like we're saddled with the Cruiserweight title. We're going to defend this title proudly up next. I always like Tajiri, man. I liked his entrance music. I liked his in-ring work. I, I would pop huge for the Poison Mist each and every time he did it. I'd always give my creative character the Poison Mist because I thought it was so cool. I don't know about you guys, but when me and my friends would wrestle in the pool, we would all do the Poison Mist with the pool water. Which, is that a little bit gross? Yeah, kind of. Looking back on it, I don't really wish that any of my friends had been spitting in my face. But... I mean, we got over it. <laughs> and I actually do remember the poison mist becoming a problem. I remember specifically my brother being like, if you fucking do the mist to me one more time, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. <laughs> we got a Matt fact here. Matt was in the gifted class in elementary school. Good for him. Obviously, he's gifted enough these days to be the WWE Cruiserweight Champion. You don't, you don't just wake up one day Cruiserweight Champion. You earn that shit. It has been a hell of a ride so far. Between 616 SmackDown and 616 Nitro going head to head. I don't know where the war stands right now. At the time I'm recording, spoilers, at the time I'm recording this, it's December 29th. I'm getting a little bit of head ski. Here we go. Off the ropes. He's coming back. Big ol' arm drag. But right now, where it stands on December 29th, and maybe it looks very different now, it was 2 and 0. Oh. For 616 Nitro. 2 0. Oh. So, our long standing, highly celebrated king of weekly wrestling game content, 616 SmackDown, you know, this new 616 Nitro show shows up and just starts eating SmackDown's lunch. What the fuck is that about? Look at this! Look at this! Frankensteiner off the top rope by Tajiri. We're not gonna let him get away with that. Little low blow ski, it's alright, it's alright. Snap suplex for his deeds. I thought he was going to hit me with a low blow ski right there and I was going to say, you know what? That's fair. We gave him one. He's trying to get some shit in and eventually maybe we'll let him do it. But right now, I'm not very happy about this. What do you think about the DDT? Still strange to me that that hurts the character's body and not their head. I mean, I suppose they're going for like a spinal cord sort of thing. Get out of the way, Mike Kyoto, you motherfucker. The referee is standing moonsault. The referee is always in the fucking way. Oh, I was looking for a drop kick. He hits me with the spinning wheel kick. Let's let him get some shit in. What do you think? Oh, look at this rush. This rush. Spinning wheel kick once again. The fucking blitz from the Japanese buzzsaw, Tajiri. Tajiri was so good, dude. If you guys have never seen some of Tajiri's ECW work, that's when he was at his absolute best. And I'm not shitting. Here we go. Splash Mountain Bomb. Walk him out of the corner. Drop him down. And that hurt his head. Why did that hurt his head? Shouldn't that have hurt his body? Tajiri, in my opinion, was at his absolute best in ECW. I think that's when he was doing his best work. And I'm not saying that to belittle or shit on his WWE run from like 2001 to 2002. And he even had good shit in 2003 and 2004, don't get me wrong. But his WWE run in 2002 when he was involved in like the Cruiserweight title feuds, really great stuff. Someone drop! We started this season mode playthrough as a big time heel. And things weren't really going our way. And we, we turned over a new leaf. We turned babyface. We won the WWE Cruiserweight title, we started getting involved in main event storylines. And here we are now, defending our title, BIG TORNADO DDT! Defending our title against the Japanese buzzsaw Tajiri. Now we're waiting for this guy to get up, we're waiting him for him to- OH! He countered me there a little bit, I'm gonna have to live with it though, but check this out. 
Whatever he's going for, he- Oh shit, he actually got me. Boom! That looks fucking great. But here we go. Building up ahead of steam, actually... Fuck. He's out- he's outsmarting me here. That's why we hit him with the old ricochet to slow him down. Up to the top rope, how about one of these twisting fucking corkscrew? Matt Hardy's never done that move in his career. <laughs> oh, there it is! Tajiri goes low. He saved it up, but he hit me with it. He wants to get all lucha on me, and that's fine and dandy, Tajiri. You know what? Get your lucha shit in. Go up to the top rope where you can't possibly reach me. That's where you fucked up, because now it's time for... Fuck. <laughs> he hurt my deal. I said, now it's time... Where are you going, you asshole idiot? What's he doing? He's got a table! You know what? You just... I was talking about ECW earlier. Matt Hardy is known for being extreme. Check out the side effect. Tajiri, you just made this match so much better. Because, you know what? I wouldn't have thought to grab the table. But since you brought it into the ring, I think we can close this match with a... Twist of fate through the table. Thanks for coming. <sighs> hey, there we go. They brought us a new table. I got real frustrated there because I very clearly pressed down circle and it registered as right circle. So now, take two. We're going to close this one out with a twist of fate through the table. That was definitely take one, not take two. Down circle. Thank you. One, two... Three, that's how you retain the WWE Cruiserweight title. We're going to show some respect because we are a babyface. He's down, he's hurt, but he is not to be forgotten. This is the Japanese buzzsaw Tajiri. This is the former WWE Cruiserweight champion. We're going to treat him like the champion that he is. Did we have to put him through two tables? No, we did. We didn't have to, but we did. But that was his idea. That's not our fault. He brought the table in. Now, are we going to get involved in this main event? I think we should. Here we go. Jerry, the shirtless King Lawler. Hairy ass chest. He looks like he's laminated. He's all shiny. Matt, what's up? If you don't mind, I'm busy getting ready for my match. I need to focus. You walked up to me, ass wipe. I'll offer assistance, even though you were trying to make it seem like I was bothering you. Yeah, I appreciate that. What am I, I'm gonna say no? This is a chance to get even more superstar points and get into contention for the WWE Championship. It's Matt Hardy and the King versus John Cena and Sean O'Hare, and it's next. Sean O'Hare, we've talked about him before on 616 SmackDown. What could have been, they even gave him the jabroni generic entrance here. Look how weird his legs look when he walks up the stairs. Doesn't his legs look weird? This theme music sucks. Listen, Sean O'Hare could have been something, and he wasn't. Look at the size of his thighs! Good God, his proportions seem weird in this game. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Do you guys have any idea how big of a John Cena mark I was in 2003? By the time 2004 came around, early 2004, I, mean, I think I was still into it. Um, I eventually did get tired of him just like everybody else did. It wasn't his fault. It's WWE's fault for doing what they did with him. But god damn was I a John Cena mark in the early 2000s. Now they've got us coming out next. And we're going to take a look at what the map fact is. But we're not going to watch this full entrance. Because we want to see the king. Jerry the King Lawler. Matt loves English muffins. Now, I can't be mad at that. If you don't like English muffins, you can get fucked. Do I prefer a bagel? Yeah. But if I'm thinking muffins, I'm thinking banana nut. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> we want to see the king. Oh, they don't even give the king an entrance. Unbelievable. Son of a bitch. I'm pissed off. I wanted an entrance for Jerry the King Lawler. Now, I know he's not playable in the game. Boom! Drop him on his deal. Let's throw him off the ropes. Hit him with the big back body drop. 
And they even fucked up his attire. There's no deco, no trim, nothing on his on his tights whatsoever, which I find odd. But let's see what kind of double team move we can get the king involved in here. Cena, go in the corner. Let's, son of a bitch! Knock it off. I got big plans. Here we go, here we go, here we go. What's this? Oh no, the king! Well, it was an attempt at poetry in motion. <laughs> Now, I'm not controlling the king here. This is the AI. So we're gonna see how the king does against John Cena here in a 2003 setting, unless he's gonna tag me in immediately. Yeah, he is, but that's okay. Look at Cena's body, it's already fucking orange. He's t Dude, the king is so powerful. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no! Devastating full Nelson slam. By the doctor of thugonomics, John Cena. He's wearing those pump-up fucking sneakers. You remember those? Remember the fucking shoes that had the like the the ball in the lip, and you would grab it and squeeze it, and you would pump up the sneakers. I remember those were very out of style already by the time John Cena started wearing them, and I think he did an interview on like WWE Confidential or something. If anybody remembers that, and. Uh, they were asking him, like, where do you find all these sneakers? And he was like, actually, I don't even think they make these anymore. So I'm not going to tell anybody where I get them, because then I'm not going to be able to find any of them. And I was like, you know what? That's smart. That's smart, John Cena. Don't be giving away all your shit. <laughs> That's like, here's a little tidbit, completely unrelated to wrestling in any way. But for any of you out there who are Seinfeld fans, which if you know it's good for you, you are... Uh, Kramer started making, wearing like vintage clothing, he started making it so cool and so popular that eventually the designers, the costume people for Seinfeld, weren't able to go to like thrift stores and vintage shops anymore to find outfits for Kramer. They had to start making them custom because a lot of people were seeing Kramer, some on drop, people were seeing Kramer wearing cool ass vintage shirts and slacks. And they started stealing them all. Buying. I, I shouldn't say stealing. They started buying them all. Love that DDT animation. So good. So the costume designers had to start custom making all of Kramer's gear. Isn't that interesting? No? Okay. I'll go fuck myself. <laughs> now, Dan Dan's, it is post-Christmas at this point. By the time you're hearing this, it's, it's very... Uh-oh. I thought he was going for the FU. By the time you guys are hearing this, it is... It's even more... Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Protoplex! What did he call that move? What did John Cena call that the back suplex bomb thing? Kick out, Matt Hardy! Are you my asshole? I cannot believe that. I can't even believe that. I normally edit out loading screens. But that took me by surprise. The Protoplex with an orange body gets a three count? And now the king gets his shit pushed in the middle of the ring? What the fuck, man? I'm not happy about that at all. This was a bonus for me. I was supposed to get an extra superstar point. Now we go in and job with the king? God damn it. I'm so upset by that. And I'm the one who had to eat the pin. So I gained zero superstar points. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about that in any way, shape, or form. And now here we are at Rebellion. Thank God for fucking Rebellion. Goddamn UK pay-per-view. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be in the UK. Don't get me wrong. But what are they going to have me do? Face fucking Tajiri again? This better be something exciting. Get big pyro ski to start the show. Oh, goodness me. Taker, we heard you had a major announcement tonight. Yeah, I have something to tell all these chaps out here. <laughs> these chaps, Undertaker. Tonight you will see a great champion at work, the U.S. champion. And I have a challenger in mind. Um, let's see. Matt, you. Wh who, the, who talks like that? I have a, a great challenger in mind. Um, let's see. Matt, you. <laughs> that barely even makes any sense. I will give you a chance to challenge me and the U.S. Championship will be on the line. A match has just been made and the U.S. Champion will be in it. 
Well, the U oh, King's here. He's he recovered. He's out of the hospital. Look how weird the coach looks. Well, the UK fans have to be pumped about it. They get a chance to see the US champion in action. What about the cruiserweight champion? I'm the WWE fuck Triple H. I'm the WWE cruiserweight champion. God fucking damn it. How about that? We need to up our shit. Endurance, submission, technique, the ability. That's the ability to counter. I'm... Uh, speed. Let's, let's up our speed. Shit. I'm pretty confident in my reversal abilities without having to up that at all. But man, that means we went from 19 and 6 to 20 and 7. That's too many losses, man. Eddie and Chavo versus Big Show and A-Train. Eddie and Chavo are gonna win. Son of a bitch! Man, my predictions are just, they've gone to hell in a handbasket. <sighs> okay, the US title's on the line. We're about to become a double champion if we can pull this off, but it's not gonna be easy. We have two wins over The Undertaker, but he's still hard as fuck. He's so overpowered in this game. It's the US title on the line, Undertaker versus Matt Hardy, and it's next. You know we gotta pop in real quick, just for the Matt fact. Matt survived Superstar in the Rumble. Now, we've had that one before, we have commented on how it doesn't make any sense, and I will say that some of you in the comments are under the impression that that was supposed to say Jeff Hardy. But as you guys know, Jeff Hardy was pulled out of this game after he was released from his IWE contract, and maybe they just didn't really go through and fix that. We'll never know, but that is, I guess, a worthwhile theory. This is where the trouble starts. It's Big Evil, it's the Red Devil, it's the WWE US Champion. It bothers me that Taker does not come out with the belt. I don't know why he doesn't have the belt. It could be around his waist, they easily could have put it there. Or they could have had it hung around his neck. He would do that sometimes when he rode the motorcycle. But, either way, you know what? He's not going to need to wear the belt anyway after this one because he's not going to have a belt to wear. We are taking that title back to Cameron, North Carolina. Matt Hardy, version one, double champion. Get used to it. So we could, oh God. If we win this, that would make us a two-time WWE Cruiserweight Champion and a two-time WWE US Champion. And if that doesn't put you in contention... What? Oh no! I accidentally tapped square. I wanted to do this. Oh, there it is. I thought he nailed me. <laughs> if that doesn't put you in contention for the WWE title, I don't know what does. There's a big dive off the top rope. Referee's down. What does the opportunist do when the referee goes down? They get a weapon. Introd oh no. <laughs> I felt like Triple H trying to get away with the fucking sledgehammer and Undertaker's like, I don't think so, pal. Here we go. Oh yeah, how about that? Wrap him up with that sledgehammer. Now this is no DQ, right? Because it's a title match? Yep, it's no DQ. You like how I was just willing to risk it? Big cross body for you deeds. Oh no, I was gonna try to hit him with those with those shots to the fucking brain. Didn't work, but this will DDT for you DD deeds. He's not he's not going for it. Every time I go for those up circle punches to the head, he is not having it. And one of the problems that we have to worry about here, that we don't normally have to contend with, is the fact that Undertaker is a is a super heavyweight. He's a big guy. Meaning that most of our offense is not going to work at all. It works for him. He can do that big arm lift bullshit thing. But we're not going to be able to DDT. That's one of the few things we can do. And we finally got the punches to work. Fantastic. We're not going to be able to hit the fucking side effect. I don't think we can. Can we? Nope. That's When you go for a side effect, they show a, a gut wrench animation that doesn't work. So, most of our offense, that was an excellent counter right there. I am a champion. Most of our offense is not going to work, which is going to be a problem. What I need to do, what does this one do? That's like a running clothesline slash side effect sort of deal. Check this out. Damn it. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. You know I love to hit this move, Dan Dans. It's so hard to pull off. 
Get up. Get up, you fuck. Here we go. Son of a bitch! Let's try a third time. What do you think? Third time, we're gonna get it. Yes! Finally! Oh, that move is so hard to pull off. They need to be right next to you, but not moving. Because if they're moving at all... Psych twist of fate! He's only on yellow. It's not going to work. But what if? What if? Out of nowhere. One count. Off our finish. Fantastic. <laughs> Dan Dan's, what are you up to lately? I'm going to ask you what you're playing. I'm going to ask what movies you're watching. What are you guys up to? It's post-Christmas, so I know you guys got a whole bunch of new shit to work with. And I want to know about it. Had, did any of you get Cyberpunk? Did you experience issues with it? Did you request a we Take two. Did you request a refund? Did you get the refund? Did you not get the refund? I want to know all about it. Um, I have requested a refund. I haven't even necessarily had a lot of problems with it because I played the PS4 version on PS5. I just don't like the game. I did not like any of the three hours I spent with it. I found it extremely dull. But if you have any cyberpunk stories, I would like to hear about them. And if you've seen any... Oh, no! If you've seen any good movies lately, I want to hear about those as well. Into the barricade goes Taker. Lift him up. Drop him down. See, there are certain situations where you can exploit the, um, the weight limits and they won't register. Big chair shot to the head of The Undertaker. Get up! Get up. You're not so tough when I got to steal, are you? Check this out. Chair shot to the dome once again. One more for you, Deeds. A little bit of DDT action on the chair. One more. Ooh! I got one more for you. Stay away from me. Boom! There it is. There it is. Ref. Not enough. Wasn't enough to get the job done. But you know what? This will be Twist of Fate. That's the second Twist of Fate after a chair shot barrage. Give me the U.S. title. Son of a fucking bitch. Sledgehammer for your deeds. Come here. What do you... Ooh. You know what? This has better range. Boom! <laughs> you walked right into it, you silly fuck. God damn, he didn't even stay down long enough to get a pin. Taker is not to be trifled with. DDT! How many times can we compress this guy's spinal cord before he calls it a day? Because that US title, I told you in the beginning, is coming home to Cameron, North Carolina. I'm not sorry about it, Undertaker. You had your reign. Oh no, he's working up a special. Shit. No! He's got a special. He's got a special. He's selling the head. But we cannot off... We cannot risk... Shit! Here it is. Here it is. I don't think so! I was just about to say we cannot risk being groggy in front of The Undertaker from this point out. Oh, no. Because he had a special. But we blocked it. And you know what? He's not going to be able to block this. Roll him up! I hate rope breaks. I hate rope breaks with a passion. Big mistake. Get out of town. Taker, what about this? Pulled it off twice in one match. Are you out of your ass? I can't even believe that. Please let me finish this taunt. Please let me finish this taunt. Yes, we got it. Here we go. That's three twists of fate. Three of them. We have a brand new WWE US Champion. We are not going to risk attacking The Undertaker. I don't think so. Undertaker's down. He is feeling the pain. And hey, he called us out. This is his fault. That US title was feeling pretty good around his waist. But you know what? It feels a lot better around the waist of Matt Hardy version 1. What a rebellion for this UK crowd. What do you think? But see, what the fuck do we do now? Because now we have two belts. And I still want to get in contention for the WWE title. And we have two belts already. I don't want to... I always think it's unrealistic when you have every belt. But you kind of always fall into that problem, don't you? 
Main event, last man standing, world title, Triple H versus Austin. I want Austin, but it's going to be Triple H. Yep. Son of a bitch. But hey, I was right about a prediction for the first time in forever. That puts us up to 83 superstar points. You know what that means. We are getting closer and closer to, work, to WWE title contention from what I've been told. 85 is the point that we have to reach. How long is this season mode? <laughs> is it two years? Here comes Mr. McMahon. He looks serious. Something's going to happen. Yes, I think so too. Matt should be very careful. Careful about what? Carrying around both of my belts? You don't want to clang them together and scratch them? Is that what I got to be careful about? I got to listen to some old wrinkled up motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's going on here? We are in the main event against John Cena. I don't think we've had... Ooh, you know what? This is great. I actually really like this. Because backstage, John Cena choked us out. Remember a couple episodes ago? Might have been last episode. I don't remember. He choked us out backstage. And he got a pin over us in the tag match. So... We're going to get a little bit of revenge ski here. We got new WWE Tag Team Champions. Charlie Haas, Shelton Benjamin, the world's greatest tag team, but we're not concerned with that. We're concerned with Matt Hardy versus John Cena, which is up next. Big time business. John Cena, Matt Hardy, one-on-one. -on -one. I am pre I love that DDT as well. God, the DDT is one of the best moves. Here's the thing, Dan Dans. If you create me... In one of your wrestling games, which some of our some of our resident Dan Dans have, I know Dan Hauser from Retro Station 1989 created me, and uh, I don't remember what move set he gave me. But here's the thing: if you create me in a wrestling game, make my finishers the Diamond Cutter and some sweet looking DDT. You know what I'm saying? Check this out: big someone drop. Stop him up here. I guess it always kind of... I love that move, too. It's kind of like the stroke. It doesn't look very good in this game. The animation's kind of bad, but I'm still for it. <laughs> it always bugged me a little bit that Matt Hardy wrestles with his shirt on in this game. Because at this time... I mean, I get, he wrestled with his shirt on sometimes, but most of the time he didn't. So I don't, I don't really know what they were going for there. If they, if they gave the alternate attire of shirt and no shirt, I would switch back and forth. I would love the opportunity to do both. Just like I would love the opportunity to hit John Cena with a Splash Mountain Bomb. Someday we will. Oh wait, there it is! <laughs> that was cheese dick. But I couldn't help it. Let's do that head scissors deal again. I can't stay away. Here we go. Oh, botched it. We should have left it alone. We hit two of them. We got greedy. I was going to say, let's let Cena get some shit in, but fuck that. He has two wins over us. He's not, get, he's not getting anything in. Not if I have anything to say about it. And trust me, I do. Oh! <laughs> oh, no. Now he's trying to break the arm! Can't do that. That's hogwash nonsense. Oh, drop me on my head. Fucking fantastic. Gotta love it. That's a running side effect for you deeds. And if that wasn't enough... Pick him up. Hit him with... God damn it. I wanted to hit him with another side effect. Just like this. Boom! What do you think about that? Dr. John Chenna. <laughs> that was something that uh, my podcast co-host, the artist formerly known as Mike Charles, for whatever reason one night, we were watching Raw, and he referred to John Cena as Dr. John Chenna, which I found quite funny. <laughs> Look at this, look at this, look at this. Neckbreaker! We got this guy in a bad way. You know what I'm saying? Dan Dance, I do, I do want to throw out, it is December 29th, uh, in the last couple episodes of 616 Nitro and 616 Smackdown. Although they were after it took place, I didn't say anything about it because they were pre-recorded for quite some time. This is the first thing I'm recording um, that will hit the channel since the very unfortunate news of the passing of uh, Brody Lee, a.k.a. John Hoover, came out, uh, a.k.a. Luke Harper. Absolutely horrible. 
tragic, only 41 years old. Um, I don't, what the hell am I going to say? You know, I never met the guy. I was just a huge fan. And I just, I think it's great that you see literally everybody who ever met him in the wrestling business all have the same fantastic stories to tell about him. Loved watching him in the, in the ring. Was incredibly entertained by him. Tragic loss. Much love to Brody Lee and his family. Wanted to throw that out there real quick. Back to business! Twist of fate. Referee, make it official. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Double champion. Picking up the win, and here comes the boss. Last time we were face-to-face -face with Vince McMahon, I punched him in his fucking face. Matt, I received an anonymous phone call today. This person informed me of an outstanding warrant. Apparently you have an outstanding arrest warrant in the state of Kentucky. Fuck Kentucky. So I made sure I reported it to the proper authorities. <laughs> That's why I wasn't here last week. Anyway, the police are here tonight in the building. I suggest that you turn yourself in and go with them, Matt Hardy. Why would he use my full name? Why is that cop walking like that? Look at him. He's not even walking like a human being. Wait, these, these twins? These cops are twins? What are the chances? <laughs> it's triplets! We got triplet cops! An arrest warrant? What's this all about? <laughs> Mr. McMahon didn't say what the charges were. This could be a damn setup for all we know. Find yourself a good attorney. We'll see you in the courtroom. <laughs> the voice hurts my throat every week I do it. <laughs> oh man, 84, 84 superstar points. We are creeping further and further. One more win. Puts us in contention for the WWE title. Good evening, this is Vince McMahon. First off, I want to apologize to our fans that we had a criminal in our company. But now, finally, our company is back to normal. You can now watch the program in peace. I'm glad this altercation is over. And please enjoy our program. That was cool. <laughs> that was cool. I don't remember how this plays out. I really don't. Look at that smile. He's so happy that Matt is not around anymore. You people, you will never see Matt wrestle in this ring again. Because he is a criminal. <laughs> We're all model citizens here. Well, oh, the lights went out. Oh my, the lights went out. It's completely dark inside. I can't see anything. Calm down, King. Well, it is likely. What is it? That's Matt! Did he escape from jail? Oh my goodness! A shot to Mr. McMahon, who is now losing his presence of mind! This is fucking awesome, dude. I don't remember this at all. It looks like he wants a match with Vince! Why is he saying that as a question? Alright, you got your match? <laughs> Mr. McMahon accepted the match. They will collide at Survivor Series. This is crazy, JR. Matt made a shocking return. What will happen next week? This is heating up. This is heating up big time. I didn't even have to have a match that week. <laughs> Here we are in Cincinnati, Ohio. We got another SmackDown. Are we starting out with the cutscene? What kind of match am I having with Vince? I don't know. I don't remember at all. Are we on the card this week? I also don't know that. Or is this just going to be storylines? We are on the card. And we are facing Sean O'Hare in the main event. Let's guess what's going to happen here. Chavo and Tori versus Steven Richards and Sable. I am going to say Chavo and Tori pick it up. Hey, two in a row. Kurt Angle versus The Big Show. Kurt Angle picks up the win. Three in a row. We're making a comeback prediction here. And in the main event, Matt Hardy takes on Sean O'Hare. You know what to do. Tune in next. Sean O'Hare 
You were cool in WCW. Look at the... Oh, I love that move! I thought he was going to hit me with the Franchiser. But that was like a like a rock bottom into a sit-out spine buster. Very cool move. Not cool enough to get the follow-up on me, though. I don't think so. Look at this back-and-forth action. Sean O'Hare bringing it. Really bringing it. Rolling through into a leg lock. But we're not going to let much come of this because with this win, we will step into contention for the WWE Championship. Finally, that is not something that we are going to let slip away. Not a fucking chance. We're in November. The next show is Survivor Series. You think I'm going to let Survivor Series come and go without making a big impact? Not a chance. Not a fucking chance in hell. <laughs> So Sean O'Hare's got to be the sacrificial lamb here. That's the only that's the only way around it. Come here, brother. Come here. Check this out. Check this out. Neckbreaker for your deeds. That's what you get. Now I'm fairly certain. Boom! I'm fairly certain that DQ is on here. Because it's not a title match. But if it wasn't, I'd be getting fucking silly right now. Let's do the head scissor deal. Get out of the way, Hebner or Kyoto. You fucker. Why did he have to stand so close to me and distract the shit out of me like that? <laughs> Face Buster! I wonder how this episode is going to do. I, just, I took a big break in between episodes 4 and 5 of the SmackDown Here Comes the Pain Season mode. Because as I've explained to everybody in the comments who has asked, asked, like, where did it go? Why'd you stop doing it? It's like, well... I didn't stop doing it. There is going to be more. Check out this back suplex off the second rope. That's a big bump. It's like I didn't stop doing it. I just have to give it time to cool down. Because if I do them in succession or just in general, each installment of the season mode is getting less views than the one before it. And it's not all about the views and the clicks and everything, but I do want it to be seen by as many people as possible. You know? So, I wonder how this one's going to do. Did the break do this some favors love that ddt or is this gonna just be a run-of-the-mill episode the channel has been on an uptick lately which i'm very grateful for you guys have been showing up for 616 nitro and 616 smackdown ddt in a big way lately and i greatly appreciate that and that means to me that shows me that you guys are really enjoying uh, both of these shows. Guess what? You will not enjoy the twist of fate! I am not certain that that would have put him away because he's just now on double orange and I'm not about to let Sean O'Hare kick out of my finish. So we are gonna we're gonna do a little bit more damage before we go for that final cover. What do you think? Good plan. Boom! Was that heelish? Yes. Do I care? No. Roll him up, Matt. Put him away. Shit. Only a one. See, now I'm glad I didn't go for the pin off that first twist of fate. I don't want this guy kicking out of my finish. It's not going to happen. No disrespect to Sean O'Hare. I know he's not with us anymore. But it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Check out this big old Samoan drop. And that's going to give him the old red body. You love to see it. We're going for the head scissors. I don't give a fuck. Nope. <laughs> that didn't work. That happened during commercial break. Nobody saw it. Poetry in motion. Oh, I botched it. I botched it. It's okay. We are getting very close to being able to put him away. Dan Dans, at the time that you're watching this, I think the season two premiere ricochet time... Boom! The Season 2 premiere of Triangle X Squared Circle, the wrestling game retrospective series, is right around the corner. In that first episode, we are covering WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game, the 1995 classic. You guys have asked me to cover it for quite a while, and the time is drawing near. I'm really excited for you guys to see that one. I'm very proud of it. Check this out, check this out. Arm Breaker! And you know what that means. We're not going to put him away with the arm breaker. That is the setup move. He's going to get up. He's going to run at old Matt Hardy version 1 and he will regret it. Boom! Who called it? I called that shit. 
Twist of fate, middle of the ring, nowhere to go, make it official. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you know what? We are going to attack him. And I know what you're thinking. Matt Hardy's a babyface. Why would the babyface attack a guy after the match? Here's why. Number one, Sean O'Hare is one of Vince McMahon's cronies. Sean O'Hare was on that team, along with John Cena, that beat down myself and the King. He's one of Vince McMahon's cronies, and this is a message to Vince. Look at these mounted punches. This is a message to Vince McMahon. This is what's coming at Survivor Series. Tonight, Matt and Mr. McMahon will sign a pay-per-view contract for their match at Survivor Series. Matt is already in the ring. Yeah, they just carted Sean O'Hare's corpse out of here. He looks ready to go. Mr. McMahon is coming out. It will be a historic night. My heart's racing. Oh, chair shot. Is that Mr. McMahon? Where did he come from? Vince fooled us. This is a cheap move. Vince, oh, that's King. Vince is going to sign. You came here to sign this, right? Oh, we're busted wide open from the chair shot. He's ruthless, King. Here, sign it. <laughs> Look at your blood on the contract. Do you know who you're dealing with? I'm the most powerful man in the world. I'm the one and only Vincent. Kennedy McMahon. This is my company. There is no chance that I will lose. This is completely deviated. This, that's like a, I did a mixture of King and JR right there. I'm fucking lightheaded from that Vince voice. This is completely deviating from the normal course of events. Matt will be seeking revenge this Sunday. Jesus Christ, my throat hurts from that. There we go. With that victory, we are in WWE title contention. Now, Dan Dan's Survivor Series is up next. You guys ready for this? In New York, New York. Are we going to get a pay-per-view package here? The bomb is ticking away on this feud. A showdown of monumental proportions. You will experience extreme pain. Matt, Matt, Matt. <laughs> Mr. McMahon ain't gonna stop. A blow which we'll never forget. There is no escaping. Blood will be sacrificed. It's survival of the fittest. Big business. Matt Hardy versus Vince McMahon at Survivor Series. Now, now I feel like I fucked up because the thumbnail for the last show is Vince McMahon and Matt Hardy with the steel cage background because of the triple cage match. Not the WCW style triple cage, but there was three cage matches. <sighs> I'm gonna have to do Vince and Matt Hardy on this thumbnail again. We got the main event of Survivor Series. How about it? We got a six way hardcore time limit match for the hardcore title. RVD defending against Kane, Christian, Booker T, Chris Jericho, and Kevin Nash. I'm gonna say Chris Jericho is gonna win but I would like Nash to win. Oh, Booker T, I was close. I was one guy away. A ladder match between Shelton and Charlie against Big Show and A-Train. Obviously the small guys excel at the ladder match. How do you know, how do you know, how do you know? Fucking nailed it. Hardcore match, main event, Matt Hardy versus Vince McMahon. This is big business and it is up next. Oh man, no entrances. They didn't do entrances at all. They skipped right to it. And Vince McMahon's looking to put the boots to us? I don't think so. How do you catch a guy's foot who is mid somersault? I'm not sure. But this. Man, Vince is not easy to deal with here. Up and over the top rope. Now, here's the thing Is Vince McMahon playable in this game? 
I don't know if he is. I don't think he is. I don't remember that being the case. So that means drop him right on the grapefruits. <laughs> Here we go. Backbreaker. But if Vince McMahon is not playable, that means that we've had two non-playable characters on this episode. Jerry the King Lawler and Vincent Kennedy McMahon. And both of them are going to suffer losses. Because the King did not pick up a victory in his tag match and he got his shit pushed in. And Vince McMahon now, I'm going to beat the ever-loving fuck out of this guy. I'd also like to do that in real life. But I think we should introduce a weapon. What do we got? Steel chair. How about it? Hey, Vince. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh what are you going to get? Sledgehammer? Guess what? Tough shit. Boom! What do you think about that, fuckface? Break your stupid... God damn it. All right. Well. There you go. I'm smarter than you. You brought the sledgehammer in, I'll use it against you. Why did neither one of those connect? I'm not really sure. Oh, no! You're, you're, not, you're not using the sledgehammer on us, pal. That is absolutely not going to happen. We are going to beat the shit out of you. And you are not going to enjoy it. But, ooh, this is a weapon war right here. Oh, dude, the sledgehammer is so long. He just hit us with a fucking Mortal Kombat uppercut. Headlock takeover from the chairman of the board. Guess what? Twist of fate. Boom. That's enough to put him away, but I'm not done yet. I am not done with the guy. Well, I can't hit him in the ribs. Both times I've tried to go to the ribs. It just doesn't work out. Shit. Huh? You think you're special? What, you th what about this? Boom! Devastating shot with the steel steps. Do it again. Why not? Crack him over the skull. Now, are we going to get a table? You're goddamn right we're going to get a table. Vince, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Boom! Corkscrew through the table. Give me another one. Give me another one. Is it over here? Where's my table? There it is. I want another table. You want to know why? Because I got big plans. <gasps> I got real big plans. I got real big plans. The kind of plans that you guys can't even imagine. Fuck shit. <laughs> Up here. Vince, come here. Come up here. Come up here. Ooh, get up here, you prick. What do you guys think about this? <gasps> We're gonna have to hit that. Ooh, that was cool. He fell right off the back of the table. We're gonna have, have to hit that with a little bit of take two action because I have big plans come here get up here stop ruining my plans oh no back body drop on the floor vince come here this is gonna be great it's gonna be big money we're gonna draw big numbers with this no doubt about it come here ass wipe the second i throw it away he he, he fucking comes out of the ring come here Come check this out. Stop walking into the ring. Making me look bad for the Dan Dance. We're trying to pull off an awesome fucking move on this main event of 616 SmackDown. Come here. Here it is. Here it is. Big business, big money. Twist of fate through two tables. Oh, through one table. Why didn't that work? Well, twist of fate through one table. And now... Twist of fate through another table. You know what? That was great and all. But he's not bleeding. He made me bleed. I signed that contract in blood. I can't imagine letting him get away without seeing some of his own blood. You know what I mean? Come here. What, the, what do you think you are? What do you think you are? Try as you might, you are only... Son of a bitch. Boom! 
He's only delaying the inevitable, and he's got to know that. Neckbreaker, good for you. Do you feel good about that? Do you feel good about that? Look at Vince McMahon diving over the top rope. This is more entertaining than it had any right to be. Is it not? I think it is. There's a big roaring elbow. Vince, Vince, here's where you meet your maker. Big shots with the steel steps. Goodbye. Boom! Look at the blood shoot out of his head. You want to see it again? Oh, yeah. Mortal Kombat fucking blood shooting out of his head. You know what? Let's, let's do more tables. Let's do more tables. Come here. Come here. I got a big plan. I don't want the stairs. I want the table. Get up, you prick. Come here. I said, come here. You're n oh, no! Oh, no! Big shots! Big shots from Vince McMahon! That was dangerous. That's what we get for fucking around as much as we are. But I don't regret it. Stomp a mud hole in him. Fuck you, you piece of fucking shit! <laughs> I'm not abandoning that table plan that I had because I actually, I think it's pretty good. So I'm thinking we put him through a, another table just like this. Oh yeah, that was excellent. Pick him up. Talk about a spike, twist of fate on the floor, and that's going to do it. Good night. What a match. What a victory from Matt Hardy. V1. I've got to be the number one contender for the WWE title. We have two belts as it is. If they, gotta, if they have to strip me of those to make me number one contender for the WWE title, you know what? It was a... It was a journey that was worth going on. It was a mission accomplished. Look at that. Picking up a victory in the main event of Survivor Series. Dan Dans, I hope you had fun with this episode of 616 SmackDown. I promised we would keep going with the Here Comes the Pain season mode, and we did. There is much more to see in the future. I love you, and I'll see you next week. Welcome to 616 SmackDown. You know what it is. We are continuing the SmackDown Here Comes the Pain season mode with Matt Hardy. I want everyone to listen to me. Everyone knows what happened to me at Survivor Series. If you didn't see the last episode, I beat the shit out of Vince McMahon at Survivor Series in a hardcore match. Absolutely murdered him. Everyone knows the result of the match between Matt and me. Tonight, I am here to admit that my rage towards Matt has gone too far. So tonight... I am here to clear up any misunderstandings here in public. So Matt, come on out of here. I'm so glad my lungs are getting better and better and I can do my Vince McMahon voice. You know what I'm finding is that going outside and breathing the cold air kind of fucks with my lungs, but my speaking is I'm damn near getting back to normal and I'm so thankful for that. Matt showed up. He looks wary. I don't think he trusts him for one second. He has had enough. He can't be too cautious. Oh, goodness gracious, Dan Dance. We got a standoff here. I accept your competitive toughness as an athlete. And I'm willing to let go of some of the things that happened in the past. I want to forgive and to forget. <laughs> Why would he stress that word that hard? If you want to forgive me, I want to be friends once again. I don't believe this. I don't believe it either. But you can't say no to Mr. McMahon. He's extending the hand, isn't he? Goodness me. I don't want to be his friend. You have a point. Oh, they made me shake his hand. I didn't have a choice. Now I jumped out of the ring and I looked tired. <laughs> Why did they make me shake his hand? I would... Wait! Here we go. Here's the payoff. What are we going toward? No, Matt. I truly want to thank you, and I also want to say... You're fine! Ow. That hurt my throat. I gave it everything I got, but that hurt. 
Now get the hell out of here! That's not right! He just stringed him along and then fired him! He just had a last second change of heart, JR! We won't be able to see Matt's face around here again! Goodness me, what a turn of events. What do we got on the card? We got Rey Mysterio over Sean O'Hare. We got, we got, um... And then we got Undertaker and Kurt Angle beat Big Show and Charlie Haas. Oh, man. Look at those superstar points, though, dog. That's 85. You know what that means? That means we are in contention for the WWE Championship. It's December. We are nearing the end. We're in the final stretch here. We only have a couple months left of this season mode. And I want a fucking WWE title shot. This is one of the most joyful moments in my life. I don't ever have to see Matt's face ever again. I added an ever in there. Oh shit! Stephanie's here. I should follow the lines. King, it's Stephanie McMahon! Vince looks a little confused as to why she's here. Oh man, I don't want to do a Stephanie impression saying hi, daddy. <laughs> hi, daddy. I just got back from a meeting with the board of directors. They gave me this letter to give to you. In short... It is a suspension notice. Due to your recent inappropriate behavior and abuse of power, you have been suspended. This letter was signed by the CEO. But don't worry, a temporary replacement has been found for you. Come on out. Oh my goodness gracious, we are now the chairman of the board. This is big bad business. Oh, Matt, I thought he was fired. He made his big return as a chairman. They're shaking hands, firmly. You're goddamn right we are, because now you can go sit on your ass, Vince. Vince has a disgusted look on his face. Oh, what a right hand! He gave him a shot right to the mouth. That was awesome! He's a fighting chairman. Matt shows some finesse in his first situation as a chairman. Hey, man, whatever... Big, bad, busty Stephanie McMahon in a business suit wants me to do, I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? Damn, we're flying through December here. We haven't even had a match yet. Let's check out the car. Ultimo Dragon over Shelton Benjamin. And then Undertaker over Big Show. <laughs> Give. I'm, I'm the chairman. Can I book my own fucking title match? I'm in contention. I want a WWE Championship match, and I want it now, goddammit. Did you call me? I made you who you are, Matt. So don't get too carried away. Just remember that. I can assign him to a handicap match or assign him to a special referee match. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to be the special referee in his match and I get to beat the fuck out of him? I'm not really sure. They're not very clear. But I would like to see him in a handicap match. Fuck him. Are you serious? You should reconsider, Matt. Fine. <laughs> this is starting to hurt my fucking throat. This is a lot of Vince dialogue. What's going on back here? Nobody's going, doing anything. Do we have any attribute points that we can use? We do. Um, which one? How much damage your superstar can withstand? We're already at a nine. I don't think that's a big deal. Let's up our strength, and then we'll... Uh, submissions. We don't need those as Matt Hardy. Technique, ability to counter. I guess so. We'll just... Just to fucking spend them, you know? Let's get to this card, Ski Dog. Hey! We got a Cruiserweight title match against Rey Mysterio. Now, don't forget, we have two championships. I have the fucking Cruiserweight belt and the US belt I gotta carry around everywhere. So, you know, th again, this would be a great place to drop the cruiserweight title because i don't want all the belts that's unrealistic but we're gonna we're gonna defend it proudly against Rey mysterio up next who didn't love Rey mysterio in this era right around the time he showed up in wwe that was 2002 and he was still doing the fucking rocket from the entrance ramp popping up out of nowhere his gear was a different color every week. It was awesome. Ray was so over. He was just so much fun to watch, man. And then him finally showing up in a WWE video game. 
was super fun. You could finally do all of Ray's crazy moves. But here's the man of the hour, the tower of power, too sweet to be sour. You know what I'm saying? Matt Hardy, version one, the reigning, defending WWE Cruiserweight Champion and US Champion, but we're, we're going to sweep that one under the rug for the time being. <laughs> We got a Matt fact here. Matt has over 46 Matt take two. Matt has over 46 million Mattitude followers. What was that? Is that MySpace? Twitter and Facebook didn't exist yet. So where are you getting this number from? Huh? That's what I want to know, Matt. Look at that cruiserweight belt looking real good and shiny. One of the good parts about going up against cruiserweights is we get to use all of our moveset. You know, when we face a guy like Undertaker or Big Show, there's only so much we can do. Check it out. Backbreaker! There's only so much we can do because we are technically a cruiserweight as well. They don't let us do all of our moves. Into the ropes. Gotta love that. Arm drag there. Tossing him right up over the top. I, ooh, I tried to reverse that punch. Didn't quite work out. He's looking for that big drop ski. Oh, goodness gracious! Oh, shit! Can you imagine if we got him that fast? That would have been fucking amazing. Now, Dan Dan's, I do realize it took a long time. I love this move. Sunset Bomb! Or call it the Code Red. Call it whatever you want. Let's let him get a two count off of that one. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll let Ray get some shit in here. Can't let him get too much. Not too much. Because if we fuck around too much and he accidentally wins... Then uh, we're gonna our superstar points are gonna go down, and we're not gonna be in world title contention anymore. And I'm not trying to do that. Let's see if we can land this head scissors move. Yeah, dude, we got it. How about it? Boom. Shit ass. Oh, drop me right in my head. That's a dangerous German suplex. Was I just in the middle of saying something? Because if I was, I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> Which probably happens way too much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying I do realize it took a long time to get to a match on this episode. But I hope you Dan Dan's enjoyed the storytelling. Because that was pretty cool. We got a lot of dialogue between Vince McMahon and Matt Hardy. We got Stephanie McMahon involved. It's a big business, dude. And with those two weeks coming and going so fast, this season mode, man, I think it's a year long. And if it goes from the day, the show after WrestleMania to the next WrestleMania, and we're halfway through December, there's Armageddon, Royal Rumble, No Way Out in WrestleMania. There's four months left. So we are trucking through. It's It's been a fucking, it's been a long way to get through this season mode. I've had a lot of fun with it, and I hope you guys have as well. Ray's putting up a bit of a fight here. He now has, check out, this ricochet. He's got a red body, so we can do big damage. Corkscrew off the top. We can do big damage really anytime we want. Oh, that's heelish. Let him go, let him go, let him out, man. I don't want to win, the I don't want to defend the title that way. We're baby face ski, you know what I'm saying? Oh, up and over the top, but we hung on. See, the Royal Rumble's coming up. That's Matt Hardy practicing right there. Check it out. Oh, no! He reversed my twist of fate! That's bullshit -ski. And now, see, I didn't hold on that time. We got the Royal Rumble coming up in a matter of weeks. And if we see our boy DDT on the floor... That's bad business for Rey Mysterio. If we see our boy Matt Hardy go up and over the top rope like that, both feet touching the floor, that's not going to be good. Because it, it appears as though I have to win the fucking Royal Rumble in order to get a title shot. I've done everything they've asked of me. Check out this leg drop off the barricade. Oh, nobody home. Break my asshole bone on the floor. I have my 85 DDT. My 85 superstar points. I have reached the fucking limit that I'm supposed to to get a world title shot. And they're not giving it to me. So we will win the Royal Rumble, and we'll get our title shot, but as soon... Uh, we'll do that as soon as we hit... Wow, he reversed two twists of fate. Oh, Rey Mysterio knocks out the referee! Accidental, obviously. He's a baby face. He looked great. He looked a baby face. 
How many of you are fans of The Room? <laughs> because that's what I was quoting there. Oh shit, I just leg dropped the rep off the top rope. Big drop kick. Something's going on here. Why have I sustained... Big rib breaker. Why have I sustained no damage? I don't have a yellow head, I don't have a yellow body, but Ray has had a red body for like 20 minutes now. <laughs> and his head is orange. Something's not adding up. Check it out. DDT! Let's put him out of his misery. Not every match needs to end with a finisher. Ray, you fucking moron. I tried to let you off easy. I tried to let you get out of here without suffering. Look at the atomic drop. Check it out one more time. Atomic drop right into the twist of fate. Now, Ray, you didn't have to suffer that. You brought it on yourself. What a match. What a defense of the title. Matt Hardy, still Cruiserweight Champion. We're going to show respect to the master of the 619. Mike Kyoto, you are so lucky I'm letting you raise my hand right now. I know you're a Vince McMahon puppet. I didn't like it from the start. I'm going to give you a break this week because I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good fucking mood because I'm the chairman, goddammit. Ray, get up. You're a legend. You're a legend in the sport. You, you deserve all the respect in the world. Now shake my hand, short stuff. <laughs> I like your gold outfit. It looks like it was expensive. It means you're drawn big. I'm happy for you. Here's where the big business comes into play. Undertaker picks up a win over John Cena. And now Vince McMahon is going one on... Not, I guess one on two. I almost said one on one. He's going one on two with Kurt Angle and Edge. And if he wins, I'm going to fucking kick myself in the ass. Thank God. We're going to assume that Kurt Angle made him tap out with a vicious ankle lock. Because that makes me happier than anything. He's not limping, though. The night is pretty much over. You must be done with your business. What? You want me to drive your car? Who do you think you are? I'm not a damn chauffeur. Sorry to hurt my throat. All right. Give me the damn keys. Is he going to hit me with my fucking car? Okay, I guess not. 86! 86 superstar points. Give me a title shot. Goddamn fourth week of December. <laughs> We're going into Armageddon, goddammit. Who's backstage? Undertaker, eat my shit. I've beaten you so many times. You know what? What is my win-loss record? You guys know I'm a stats junkie. I want to know how we're doing. 25 and 7. I am not, I'm not mad at that. 25 and 7. What kind of what kind of streak are we on? Shh. Okay. 1 and 0, 2 and 0, 3, 4, 5. We're on a five match winning streak with a record of 25 and 7 as a double champion. I can fuck with that. Going up against Charlie Haas in the main event. What are we doing gifting this guy a fucking main event? I do like Charlie Haas in real life, but Something's going on here. There's going to be some bullshit ski. There's going to be some fuckery afoot. When Matt Hardy takes on Charlie Haas. Up next. I always enjoyed this uh, entrance music. For the world's greatest tag team. Unfortunately, Charlie Haas has the full-on generic jobber entrance. Every piece of this is generic. None of it was captured for him. And now he gets to meander around the ring. Now that we don't have a championship on the line, and we are a double champion, I'm wondering what belt we're going to come out with. Which belt is going to be around the waist? U.S. title, cruiserweight title. Before that, we do know that Matt loves English muffins. Very important. Can't forget that. There it is. That's that WWE U.S. championship belt. The design that lasted from 2003 until 2020 when it was finally replaced with a new design. I'm a belt mark in case you didn't know that, guys. <laughs> I'm hoping we can put Charlie Haas away pretty quickly here. Uh, with a twist of fate. We're definitely going to make him feel a twist of fate. 
Nice to, nice to see you, Charlie. I don't know how many main events you've had in your career, but uh, don't get used to it. Get used to this, though. Ricochet! That is what he called that, right? I say that every week. Nobody ever really corrects me on whether that is or isn't what Matt Hardy called that move. Because I really can't remember. Got him in the corner, Ski. Man, he does not want me to grapple him when he's in the corner. Oh, you asshole! What if we let him just get the win right now? As like a surprise out of nowhere sort of thing? Not gonna happen, though. Dan Dance, what are you playing? That's what I want to know. This weekend, 616 Nitro, we counted down, we ranked the WCW video games from worst to best. I hope you enjoyed that episode. A little bit of a change of pace, not the normal let's play. It was a written, scripted sort of ordeal. Big back suplex off the second row. So I didn't have the chance to ask you guys what you've been playing, so I'm going to ask you now. Got any deep RPGs you're into? Are you a survival game kind of person? Maybe you are a tower defense guy? I want to know what the fuck you got going on. And you know what? I'll share something with you here. I'm having a real problem with video games lately. Uh, I was playing a lot of Ghost of Tsushima before I went down with COVID. And I was having a good time with it. Jumping Tornado DDT! But, um... When I was sick with COVID and I had such crazy fevers... I was hallucinating a lot. Check out this Tornado DDT. I had insane hallucinations. And some of the things that I kept hallucinating over and over was Japanese architecture. I have no idea why. And uh, katanas, the swords. I have no idea why. My fevers were so high, I couldn't sleep. And the second I closed my eyes, I would start to hallucinate. And I saw so much... Just Japanese imagery. It was insane. So, uh, I kind of don't want to play Ghost of Tsushima for a while. I've had an overload. I'm, I'm going to have fucking COVID flashbacks when I see all that Japanese architecture and stuff. He's trying to grab the tights. Get the fuck out of here. But So, I'm having a, a big video game problem. The only game that I've run through was Habroxia 2, which I hope you guys watched my review on. An excellent game. Highly recommend it. Big someone drop! I ran through Hibroxia 2, I got that Platinum Trophy, that was my 69th Platinum Trophy. By the way, boom ski in the corner. Let's head up. Nope, I was gonna go for the head scissors, here we go. Do -do 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 -do. Stay right there, boom, gotcha bitch! Twice in one episode once again. Um, but ever since then, man, I can't really get into any games. I don't know why, I look at my shelf and my brain is telling me, check out this, fuck you. My brain is telling me to twist up fate! Boom! I don't feel comfortable going for the pin because I think he'll kick out and I want to protect my finish. So we're not going to go for the win just yet. <laughs> my brain is telling me to play Bioshock 2. I'm not sure why. I just played Bioshock 1 again uh, for the fourth time. Got my second platinum trophy in it. I love Bioshock to death. I've played Bioshock Infinite three times, another game I love to death. But I have not played Bioshock 2 since it initially launched on the PS3. And something about it is just calling to me. And that might be the game I settle on that I finally settle into and play for whatever reason, I don't know why. But man, it's been a solid week now of just staring at my shelf, not knowing what to play, not knowing what I'm feeling. I, ch I checked out Maneater, the shark game, because it's free on PlayStation Plus this uh, for January. It was. We're deep into February at this point, I think. And uh, I wasn't feeling it too much. I played it for a couple hours. I don't think I'll go back to it. Big back body drop. I tried Black Desert Online. I applied for a, a code for that one, and I got one. The developers gave me one, which was very cool. Uh, I don't like the game, so... I'm not gonna play that again. I'm not gonna do a review on it or anything, so I, I hope they're not mad that they gave me a code and I'm not gonna do a stream or a video or a review or anything on it. I didn't agree to do that. <laughs> it was a possibility, but I don't like the game, so I'm not gonna do it. I made, dude, my character I created was so fucking hot. She looked amazing. And then I played the game for 10 minutes and I was like, this is not, this is not what I want. So Black Desert didn't work out. I'm just, I'm in a weird, I'm in a weird game zone, Dan Dance. 
the uh, the wrestling games that I play all the time. Check out this side of fuck you. That's twice you reversed that on me. The wrestling games that I play for these shows are my comfort food in the game department lately. Big DDT! And, uh, I don't know, man. When's the last time you guys went through a gaming funk? Tell me about it so I know I'm not alone. Get the fuck out of here with that dropkick. You want something? I got something. What's with these guys reversing my finish? Pissing me off. Charlie Haas, motherfucker. Getting too much shit in in my main event. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck it, this fucker's going off script. Boom! That's what you get. Can we put him away with one of those? That vicious DDT. No, we can't. He doesn't want to stay down. How does he feel about the side effect? My Kyoto, get in position. I'm I'm getting pissed. <laughs> this motherfucker is kicking out of all my shit. There's a gut buster. He better stay down so I can get this taunt going here. We gotta fill that finisher meter. He's still down. We're not gonna be able to finish this one. Oh asshole! Thought maybe we'd be able to get through it. Look at that double underhook suplex right there. Boom, 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 motherfucker. I, I wasn't going to kill him initially, but there you go. Bust him wide open with that DDT. Right in the... Mm, not having it. I'm not happy about it, Dan Dan's. Dan Dan's, is this bullshit? Is this some bullshit? <laughs> what are we thinking about this match? Is Charlie Haas getting too much shit in? Is he taking advantage of us? Went for that big old discus punch, but nobody home. Charlie, it was good to see you, but you know what I mean? It's time for you to run along and find Shelton and get back into the tag team scene because... Uh... <laughs> I was cooking up a big twist of fate right here! Right here! Twist of fate! Go fuck yourself, Charlie. Get away from the ropes. We don't want any ropes. Are you my asshole? I got in between him and the ropes. That was dog shit -ski. Check out this DDT. For you DDDs. Put him away. Come on. I don't appreciate it, Charlie. I don't appreciate it. We're not gonna... Ah, oh, we're a baby face. We'll give the Charlie Devil his due. He did last longer than I thought he would. He got through some shit. He's busted wide open now and the blood is brown for some reason. Maybe it's drying or maybe it's doo-doo. <laughs> I don't know what him and Jackie Gate have been up to. <laughs> Shake my hand, Charlie, fuckface. Oh, did you notice Russ on his wrist tape? That's his brother's name. His brother who unfortunately passed away. I never noticed that before. Picking up a victory in the main event. Ooh, we got a cutscene here. Matt, I heard that you are going to put your position as the chairman on the line and confront Mr. McMahon again. Hello? <laughs> Why did I have to press fucking X? Ooh, a ladder match or a table match? Well, we put them through a bunch of tables in the last match. And Matt Hardy is known for his interactions with ladders. So it's going to be a ladder match. I see! The rumor is true! Well, I look forward to the rematch! Holy shit, Dan Dan's! 87 superstar points! And now that it's Armageddon, it's time for Matt Hardy to go one-on-one -on -one with Vince McMahon in a ladder match! God, that hurts my throat. I don't, I don't know if I can do any more Vince on this episode. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where my uncles were from, rest in peace. The battle continues, a showdown of monumental proportions. You will be carried out of that ring. Matt is enraged. Mr. McMahon ain't gonna stop. Fucking Insiguri. A message has been sent. The object is to beat your opponent senseless. 
The time has come for a conclusion. Who will reign supreme? <coughs> Ouch. Ouch. What a cool fucking set, man. You got the raw red on the left. You got the SmackDown blue on the right. Very cool looking. Tonight, Matt will have a rematch against Mr. McMahon. His position as the chairman is on the line in this match. Who will be the chairman when the match is over? God, Jerry didn't get any fucking lines there, huh? I mean, it's one thing to talk about TV time, but he didn't get to fucking say anything. <laughs> Son of a fucking bitch, I'm in two matches! I gotta defend the US title against Big Show... <laughs> and John Cena TLC title fatal four way and then in the main event fucking we got a ladder match against Vince okay Rey Mysterio Charlie Haas in the opener Charlie picks up a win he learned a lot from us holy shit okay do we drop the US title here should we drop it because if we don't and we get a WWE title match after the Vince McMahon feud then I'm going to have all three singles belts on SmackDown, and I don't want that. It's so unrealistic. It drives me nuts. So here's what I'm thinking. I think we'll have a fun match, but we'll drop the U.S. title. And then when we beat Vince in the ladder match, our superstar points should be able to even out. That's what I think we're going to do. U.S. title is on the line in a TLC match coming up next. Whoops. Don't need to see that one. <laughs> oh my goodness, the pyro went off like while he was standing right there. Jesus Christ, he could have been the big shish kebab. <laughs> I don't know why I said shish kebab. I'm just going to start it with an S. To be a shish kebab, he would have to be skewered. You know what I mean? And the pyro, what the fuck am I talking about? Basic Thugganaut. I can rap this whole song, dude. <laughs> it's so good. God, I was such a John Cena mark in the early 2000s. I played as him in this game so much when it came out. Wasn't a big fan of the animation for the FU. I thought it was a little fucky. But his model looks great. And here he comes, the WWE US Champion. Matt Hardy, version one. We've had a hell of a run, but I think we're gonna let the belt go because Matt uses low-fat salad dressings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, he just walked straight out of the fire. These guys are getting a little, a little carried away with the ballsiness when it comes to the pyro here. You know what I'm saying? I do like the difference here. There's no ramp in this arena. It's a flat floor. Very cool. I, I appreciate the variety. V1! Let's have a good match here, man. Goodness me. Why did I go right after him? I'm getting, I'm getting revenge. John Cena threw the table immediately. Big Show not fucking around here. God damn. He's, he beat the shit out of everyone. Fuck you. This is for Daniel. This is for Nancy. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you. Come here. Fuck you. As if he hasn't taken enough head trauma. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll stop with the goddamn Benoit jokes now. Benoit jokes are good when you use them. So <gasps> shit! Shit! Okay, we reversed it. <laughs> it it's, like, it's like any horrible shock humor joke. When the timing is right, when you do it the right way, you can get a good laugh out of it. But I don't want to overdo it. You know what I mean? Check it out. DDT on the big show. I would like to introduce some table action. So let's get that one in the ring. Let's get this one in the ring. Boom. Let's get fucking nuts. Shit ass. That's not what I wanted. Oh no! Right over the top rope! Every time I go over the top rope now, I'm thinking about the Royal Rumble because it's coming up. Look at the big back suplex. Hey, Benoit. Why did you... Fuck you. I was trying to put you through the goddamn table. He just stood on it like it was nothing. Come here, asshole guy. What are you doing? What are you... No, no, no. 
What is going on here? What the fuck was that? Oh man, we got we got potential for some crazy shit to happen here. Hopefully that was just the tip of the iceberg. Boom, show, table. God damn it. He's so fast. He's so big, but he's so fast. Check this out, check this out. Throw the table, pick it up, boom! stack a tables, you know what I mean? Does it make any sense? No. The physics are all fucked up. The second table is, is standing on nothing. It's really kind of blocking the view. But if you know anything about SmackDown Here Comes the Pain and these old games... I was going to say, is anyone going to stop me? I'm just going to get the bell. These old games, when you would play with your friends, dude, you would stack the tables all the time and be like, yo, check this out. And just do crazy shit. It was so much fun. Just like the side effect. Fuck you. Cena's getting the way of my plan now. I would like to get some table action going on here. But he's getting in the way of my shit. Benoit with a big chair shot to the head of the big show. Big chair shot to big show. Boom! That's a gut buster on John Cena. Uh-oh, uh-oh! Final cut on Chris Benoit! Short-lived Big Show finisher. Remember when Big Show did the F5 as, as his finisher for a short amount of time? Check this out. Cena in position. Powerbomb through the table. Beautiful. Check this out. Cena in position. Oh, he reversed it. I was going to pile drive him through this table. Get up here, motherfucker. Get up here. Check this. Oh, man. I want to give him the side effect through the table. Can we pull it off? Oh, yeah, dude. Side effect through the table. That was fucking gorgeous. Let's hit everyone with the chair. Hey, Big Show. Hey, Big... Oh, whoops. Hey, Big Show. <laughs> I got something for you, dudes. Chris Benoit is hitting those fucking German suplexes on everybody. There's another German suplex. Hey, John Cena, check out my move. Twist of fate. Let's see if anyone's going to stop it. Oh, man, we almost got away with it. Big Show pulling us down, finally doing some damage to Matt Hardy. John Cena finally waking up. That twist of fate really did a number on him. Check this out. I got more for you. DDT busting wide open. You know what it's time for? Tables. Big time tables. Well, why didn't that work? There you go. Table number one. Hello? Is anyone going to stop him? Hello? What the fuck were Big Show and Chris Benoit doing? That was goddamn ridiculous. They did nothing. Cena set up the left. <laughs> Matt Hardy face down, ass up. Why do they gotta show me like that? Put fucking Chris Benoit in that position. Fuck him. Why does it gotta be me? Anyway, we put the mid card title on John Cena. I feel good about it. I feel good about it. I don't want every belt. That thing is way too big. The scale's way off. <laughs> But congratulations, Cena. You earned it, I guess. <laughs> and that leads us to the main event. Matt Hardy versus Vince McMahon in a ladder match, as if we didn't just see a fucking ladder match. Here's the thing. My position as chairman is on the line, which means I have to lose. They're going to fuck me somehow. Because I can't just stay the chairman, you know what I mean? But we're going to see how it plays out. Matt Hardy, Vince McMahon, ladder match up next! This is all the marbles, man. The position as chairman of WWE is on the line in this ladder match. And I do not intend... Boom! I do intend to break his ribs. I do not intend to lose this match. We put over John Cena in the last one. And you knew we, you knew we were going to do it. I said it going into the match that I wanted to drop the US title. But this is a different ball game. I want to win. I want to keep my superstar points up. How about the head scissors? Yeah, dude! Three times in one episode. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, no! Right in the fucking deal. I don't appreciate that. Fuck you. Come here. Get out of my goddamn room. 
What do you think about this? Big elbow drop to the black heart of the chairman. <laughs> Ooh, never mind. It won't work. I was going to say double underhook suplex. I was going to say I have an idea that I would uh, suplex him through the announcer's table, but I don't think he'll climb. <gasps> he did climb. So if I can pull this off, I wonder if I can suplex him backwards through the announce table. Shit. Shit. He's getting the best of me. No! No, 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 no! Hip toss off the top of the ladder! Poetry in motion? Nope. Boom! Big elbow! Let's try it again. Let's move the ladder a little closer to the table. Come on, Vince. God, asshole! That's what I thought he was going to do the first time. Shit, motherfucker. <laughs> this standing straight foot lock, I don't appreciate very much. Vince, this is what you get. Boom! For not playing along when I wanted to do my fucking table spot. Now get up. Let's do it again. Don't tip it. You fucker! Why did he do it the first time and now he won't do it again? Right into the straight foot lock in the exact same position. <laughs> Should we try one more time to get that going? Bang! Asshole guy. Come here. Set the ladder up. Oh, no, I didn't put, I didn't say put me on the ladder. Big body slam on the ladder. And then he ran into the stairs for some inexplicable reason. Just chasing a fucking ghost out there. Set up the ladder, put it in the goddamn ring. Okay, you're not gonna play along, are you? What do you think about this, shithead? Side effect! We're gonna say it was on the ladder. Look how wide this fucking ladder is. <laughs> the scale of so many things in this game is so fucked up. Big slam ski on the ladder, and you know what? I haven't had enough yet. We're gonna prop it up in the corner. Come here. I got big plans for you, shithead. What do you think of... Shit. What do you think about this? Slam him in. Boom! Bash his head off the mat. More. More, more, more punishment. Look at this big slingshot. Boom! Into the ladder! Gotta love it. But we're still not done. The damage that he will sustain will be legendary. Check it out. Slam him into the ladder up top. Put it right back where it belongs. Vince, did you think you were going to get off easy? I hope you didn't. Look at this electric chair. Bash him into the ladder. And it stayed right where we want it to stay. Put him in the corner. Let's talk about this drop kick. Fuck you. Oh, this is so much fun. You know what we're missing, though? We're missing one of these guys. We're missing a steel chair. And we're missing... Oh, you lucky fuck. What I was going to say is we're missing some blood. Why didn't that bust him open? Earl, get out of my fucking way. <laughs> get up, Vince. Get up. I said... Ooh, I'm not so happy about that. Fuck you. I said we are missing blood! Did you see it squirt out of his head? Let's do it again. Watch the blood. Bat! Ooh! Big deal. You hit me with the fucking chair, now I got a yellow body. Big asshole deal. Come here. We're not done. We're not done. Check this out. Twist of fate on the goddamn chair. Get up. Let's do it again. Bang! He went for that big uppercut and he just got fucking lamped with the chair. This is this is a great time. Beating the shit out of Insect Man, always a great time. Talk about the twist of fate once again. What do you think about this? Big diving elbow drop off the ladder. Stand up. Stand up. Get up. Get up. Boom! God 
Damn, that makes me happy. That makes me really happy. Does it make me this happy, though? DDT on the chair! That should just about do it. Well, there we go. Hang it from the belt. He's down. He's dead. Unhook that shit. There we go. Now, the question we had is how are they going to fuck me? But maybe they're not. Matt picks up the victory. I guess that means he is still the chairman. He's got the written contract in hand, and he throws it at Mr. McMahon. What is he doing? He got his revenge. I guess he doesn't care about being the chairman. Oh, take two. I guess he doesn't care about the chairman position anymore. Look at that beautiful scene of him busting the fuck open. I guess Vince learned a valuable lesson here. Matt celebrates his victory, but his focus will now switch to the upcoming year. You know what that upcoming year entails, Dan Dance. The upcoming year entails the Royal Rumble. Here's Big Busty Stephanie. She got some words for me, you know what I'm saying? And I'm listening full fucking both my ears. Matt, hold a second. You mean hold on a second? Sorry, I know you're on your way home, but next month is the Royal Rumble. Do you want to take part in it? Yeah, of course. I see. Sorry to interrupt. See you next week. Oh, I mean, see you next year. Happy New Year! What the fuck? Minus four? Dude, they fucked me. Minus four. I won and lost. This That is such bullshit. I am really pissed off that they took four superstar points for dropping the title like that. And now they got us in this fucking match against Chris Benoit. You guys didn't miss anything. There was there were no cutscenes for the opening of the show. They just got us in this match with Benoit. We're gonna pick up the win. We're gonna get our fucking momentum back. God damn it, I'm upset. DDT VDs. Mmm, mmm, I'm not too pleased. The audacity to take four super. I realize I lost a belt. Take two. Take two points. And then I win a fucking main event of a pay-per-view and they don't give me shit. Snap suplex. Fuck you, that's why. Fuck you, you are at fault for this. <laughs> Big twisting elbow. That chaps my ass. I'm upset about it, Dan Dan. When's the last time you... Here's a question. When's the last time you guys felt fucked by a video game? When's the last time you felt like a game took advantage of you and fucked you over? Cause that's how I feel right now. Come here, asshole. That's what you get. And you get this, too. Big Spike DDT. We're gonna take everything that's bothering us out on Chris Benoit. God damn it. <laughs> bing. Oh, I was going for a bing, bang, boom. I was looking for that three piece and a soda. But no such luck. Dan Ans, I'm gonna let you in on something. I've been doing some thinking lately. You know, 616 Nitro and 616 SmackDown can't last forever. And the, the these initial seasons of these shows will come to an end at some point. And uh, there's not going to be a, a void of content on the channel. I'm already thinking that we will replace 616 Nitro and 616 SmackDown with two new weekly shows. Actually, neither one of them are new. They'd be two returning shows. That's my thought process right now. Is when these two end, which will be at some point in the future, I'm thinking we, uh, I'm thinking that's when we bring back Mortal Kombat Monday. And I'm thinking we do a season five of Let's Play Friday. That's what I'm thinking about. What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. And it is like, I'm, I'll let you in on something something else. It's kind of a daunting proposition because I make a little bit of money. I, I wish I made more. I make a little bit of money on 616 SmackDown and uh, 616 Nitro. But when I start doing Mortal Kombat Monday again, I'm not going to make shit. Because the second I make Mortal Kombat content, YouTube just demonetizes it immediately. So, 
I guess I'm going to have to hope that Season 5 of Let's Play Friday is a big draw and you guys really like it. Or I, I'm going to have to figure something out, man, because they really... YouTube fucks me when it comes to Mortal Kombat content. Which is... It's so, it's so unfair. With the amount of bullshit that's way worse that's on YouTube that's able to be monetized and I can't monetize fucking Mortal Kombat content. Ugh. Drives me nuts. Pisses me off, drives me nuts. You know what I mean? But what do you think about that, Dan Dans? What do you think about uh, a switch ski of the weekly show schedule coming up over the next couple months? It's, it's not right around the corner. It's not going to happen next week. You guys will have uh, you guys will have a big... Oh, look at that German suplex! Drop me right in my head. You guys will have quite a bit of notice before it actually takes place, but... You know, the channel is constantly evolving. When I did the History of Mortal Kombat and the channel blew up and then I did Mortal Kombat Monday, for a while I was like, man, I don't want... Look at that snap suplex, great animation. I was like, I don't want people to just think that this is a Mortal Kombat channel because it's not. I love... I love a lot of things and I don't want to pigeonhole myself into just one category. But now with, with uh, Triangle X Squared Circle... 616 Nitro and 616 Smackdown. It's like, well, goddammit, this isn't just a wrestling channel. <laughs> you know, we're always, uh, we're always evolving around here. Into the ropes. How? Ooh. That's an elbow for you, Deeds, because I don't like how you reverse my shit. I had a big plan there. And you ruined it. Let's get to the plan right now. Shh. Oh, I botched the fucking timing of that one. But I won't botch this. Twist! Of fate, say good night. Say good night. He might kick out of this. Oh, you fucker! I knew he was gonna kick out. Orange body. You hear me getting ready to reverse that cripple cross face? He's teasing me with it. Roll him up! Roll him up! Too close to the ropes. Now he's got a red body. If I hit him with the fucking twist of fate now, now I can BOOM put him away. So that's what we're gonna focus on. We're gonna get our special meter up. We're gonna hit him with that big old finish. Nobody kicks out of two twist of fate. God damn it. He's, he wants that big... Oh yes! We reversed it! We reversed that big diving headbutt. Beautiful. Into the side effect. And that's how you trap a guy with the twist of fate. Number two. Mike Kyoto, tell him. That was a pretty good match. That was a pretty goddamn good match. They might very well be both in the Royal Rumble. They look ready to start it now. If you don't pace yourself, you'll never make it through the Royal Rumble. You're such a loser. Okay, well, you just lost to a fucking loser, shithead. I'm gonna kick your ass in the Royal Rumble. But it's very likely you might be eliminated before I get in the ring. You better hope you get the last entry. That's the only hope you got. Well, a very intense situation here. There is no doubt that it's gonna be a wild Royal Rumble. Dan Dan's the Rumble is right around the corner. This was 616 SmackDown for this week. We will continue the season mode, and the Royal Rumble will be featured on the next episode. Until then, I love you, and I'll see you next week. What's up, Dan Dans? Welcome to the season finale of 616 SmackDown. Hold on, I gotta interrupt myself. As we continue to count down the Royal Rumble, we are here to interview some of the participants and listen to their ambitions. This match carries one of the greatest honors all greatest honors of all of wrestling. How about in all of wrestling? And why do we gotta talk to Benoit anyway? I mean, he's dead too, Sean O'Hare. The winner goes straight to WrestleMania, and I plan on being there. Now here's our choice. This is the greatest match in the history of WWE, and I plan on making history. I think I have a great shot of coming out on top. It's crapshoot. You never know what'll happen. Obviously, we're going to put ourselves over. Here's Charlie Haas. I will be victorious, and I will go to WrestleMania. Well, that's all. As you can see, there's a lot of anticipation for the upcoming battle. 
Dan Dance. This is the season finale of 616 SmackDown. Let's check the stats. We are Matt Hardy. We are the Cruiserweight Champion. We're the former United States Champion. Got a win-loss record of 28-6. and six. Are you out of your mind? We're fucking doing it. Do we have any attribute points we should use? 75. We can up... Let's up our strength a wee bit. Why not? Boom. And what's going on on the card? The Royal Rumble approaches, as you know. And we're going one-on-one -on -one with John Cena. Dan Dan's, this is a big way to kick off... Oh, no, I don't want to play this bullshit. I want to skip this. <laughs> Stevie Richards, Sean O'Hare, and A-Train take a win over Rico Valvinas and Ultimo Dragon. What the fuck are they going to do with Undertaker and Brock Lesnar? You know what? Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, and an Ultimate Submission match might be pretty good. They had good chemistry together. But what a great way to kick off the season finale. We're going to play all the way through the remainder of this season mode. Matt Hardy versus John Cena. It's up next. If you did not watch the channel update video where I announced season two of Mortal Kombat Monday premiering March 15th, 2021, as well as the season finale of this show right here and the season five premiere of Let's Play Friday, you gotta go watch that video because there's even more news than all of the stuff I just told you. The channel is <clears throat> headed in a new direction Things are in a state of flux, and even though 616 Smackdown is ending, we're going to guillotine you across the rope again, John. What are you thinking? What do you think this is? Even though 616 Smackdown is coming to an end, 616 Nitro is not going anywhere. And let's be honest, boom, let's be honest with each other, Dan Dance. 616 Smackdown and Nitro are the same fucking show. <laughs> they just occur on different days, and I'm sorry I keep doing this move. I'm more focused on what I'm saying than the actual game. Uh, they just occur on different days. Take two. <laughs> they just occur on different days. And it was a little bit of a, a meta game for all of us to see which show was going to come out on top. But now that we've gone through that experiment for a while, I think it's time to bring back Mortal Kombat Monday. I think it's time to bring more variety with. Look at that back elbow! That's the Booker T animation. I think it's time to bring in some more variety with the return of Let's Play Friday, where we'll, we will play a different game every week. It's going to be a lot of fun. And you know what? Ever since I put that announcement out and I was talking about how much work it's going to be and that YouTube is going to demonetize all of Mortal Kombat Monday Season 2, just like they did with Season 1, uh, a bunch of you have signed up for Patreon. A bunch of you have shown me support on Patreon.com slash 616 Entertainment. And I'm not kidding when I tell you that's a fucking game changer. So, I'm putting my balls on the fucking line here. And I'm doing a lot of uh, a lot of extra work to make this channel as good as possible. And a lot of you guys are showing me how much you appreciate it. And that is, uh, that's fucking huge. So, thank you so much. Look at this. Superplex off the second rope. Now, I skipped the entrances in the beginning. Oh, that's a little bit of low blow ski. I skipped the entrances in the beginning because we've seen Matt Hardy's entrance 36, 36 fucking times now <laughs> across this season mode. We've seen, we, we're like, what, 4-0 against John Cena? We've seen that one a bunch of times too. This is going to be a long episode of this show because we're playing from mid-January probably until the end of April on the game calendar. So let's, uh, enough of the gruff, you know what I'm saying? It's time to get down to success. It's time to win the Royal Rumble. It's time to win the WWE Championship, which we should have been given a shot at a long time ago. That's a running side effect. I know that's not technically what it is, but that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> we are getting down to business with the DDT for you bitch ass. John Cena. Oh, I started that taunt way too early. I thought he'd be down selling longer. <laughs> But Dan Dan's early on. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, twisting. You know what? I was going to say twisting fisherman suplex. But I think technically that was the moss-covered three-handled family credenza. Not a lot of you are going to get that reference. Stop running around. <laughs> Assholes bouncing back and forth off the ropes for no reason. Uh, I usually wait too long to ask you guys this question. and I feel bad about it. So I'm going to pitch it to you early. What are you guys playing lately? You watching any good movies? Are you excited for the Mortal Kombat movie, which will be dropping quite soon at this point? 
I know I am. And you know what? Let me answer something real quick here. Um, gotten a lot of comments from a lot of you guys who, understandably, are saying, I'm waiting for you to do a reaction video to the Mortal Kombat trailer. I don't do reaction videos, and I never will. Uh, I don't like them. I don't see any value to watching somebody watch something. That's just my taste. But I'll just give you a reaction now. I like it. <laughs> I think it looks cool. I think the violence looks cool, and the fighting looks cool, and that's all they needed to nail. And they nailed it. I don't like that the main guy is an original character, but that's a, a built-in way for the writers to be able to explain what Mortal Kombat is, because that guy is going to be like a casual viewer, basically. To him, it's like, well, who's the yellow ninja? And then they can explain Scorpion's background. I understand the mechanic of having an original character, but it's a little annoying. And some of the effects look kind of fucky, but... All they needed to do was nail the gore and the um, and the fighting, and I think they did. So I'm looking forward to it. I said from the very beginning, do check this out. How about the twist of fate with the Doctor of Thugonomics? You're going to need a brain doctor after that. Two, Goodbye. Thanks for coming, John Cena. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the movie. I said from the very beginning... Uh, there's no reason to be hyped for it because we haven't seen anything yet. Wait for a trailer. We really have no reason to believe the movie will be any good based on the track record of video game movies. But now we have seen a taste of it, and it looks good. So go ahead and be hyped away. <laughs> We're not going in blind anymore. The trailer actually shows way too much. They show several characters that weren't announced. We see several of them die. I hate that in trailers, but... It is what it is. Skip through that main event action. We see Brock Lesnar pick up a win over The Undertaker. We got 85 superstar points, and you know what that means. We are in contention for the WWE Championship. It's the third week of January. We're in Connecticut. What's going on? Do I have a big Royal Rumble angle? When am I going to find out what my number is? Oh my goodness gracious, it's the boss man. The Royal Rumble is a couple of short weeks away. Again, another unnecessary O. Who wrote this? You all know how hard this match is to win. You know too, Vince. You won it in 1999. And the entry order always plays a pivotal part in who has the highest chance to win. So, I have an idea. Tonight we will have a fatal four-way match. To determine who will be able to pick their Royal Rumble entry number. <laughs> the number 30 will not be available for selection, as I have other plans for it. Who are you going to give it to? But this is still a very good offer. I hope you all take full advantage of this opportunity. Good luck to the participants. God damn, that's enough from Vince. It hurts my throat. Mr. McMahon has put a very appealing offer on the table. This match might be more serious than the Royal Rumble. I don't think so, King. Because some of these people in this match might not even be in the Royal Rumble. We don't know. What's Stephanie's fine ass doing in her GM room? Probably nothing. If I looked that good and was getting paid that much, I would do nothing as little as possible. <laughs> Opening match, Chavo, Tajiri, Rhino... Triple threat, Rhino picks up the win. We got Tori vs. Sable in a single. Who wins? The fans do. Main event, Fatal 4-Way, Matt Hardy version 1 against Sean O'Hare, Charlie Haas, and, and it's up next. Oh my goodness gracious. It's Fatal 4-Way time. Of course, the bad man's coming for me first. <laughs> Sean O'Hare, you've made a big mistake. You know what? We can't leave the ring, can we? Oh, we can Beautiful. Check this out. Whee! <laughs> Big flipping senton over the top rope. I thought that weird rule... You know how in a lot of WWE games when you do a Fatal 4-Way or a Battle Royal, they don't let you leave the ring? I think it's mostly a SmackDown game thing. For the longest time, you couldn't get out of the fucking ring. But here we are. We're on the outside here, and I think that might actually help us. With this being a Fatal 4-Way, it's a first pinfall or submission... Uh, is what determines the victor. Snap suplex on the outside of the ring. And I think that might help us get through this match because 
being able to throw guys. There's the franchiser from Charlie Haas. That was Shane Douglas's finisher in WCW. How about this backbreaker? Shout out to Daniel. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn it. Um, <laughs> well, I don't even know what I was talking about anymore. I just want to keep that bad man away from me. He's no good. He's, he's big bad man, son of a bitch. But uh, it would be it would be a lot nicer if this was elimination because then the guys would all be trying to kill each other and I wouldn't have to worry about pinfalls that I have to break up. But when it comes to Fatal 4-Way, first pin or submission wins, it's a lot more stressful. And with the Royal Rumble coming up, we need to win this match. Tornado DDT! Ooh, did you see that? He flashed red when I hit that move. That, that has to be because I upped my strength. I used that attribute point to up my strength. Oh, big old drop kick from Charlie Haas. Because I don't think I've had anybody flash red across this entire season mode, have I? Fuck you, Charlie Haas. Who do you think you are gut-wrenching me, you fuck? Benoit with the roll through into the armbar on Sean O'Hare. So we did a lot of damage to Sean O'Hare, and now Benoit is compacting that. I think if we do some damage to everybody and then just focus on one person, I think that'll be how we pick up the win. Because everybody has to be a little fucked up so that everybody sells. How about the DDT for your DDD? Do you know what I'm saying? Chris, Chris, stop. Knock it off. How about one of these? Fuck. <laughs> I was going to sneak up behind him. He's going for the cross face on Sean O'Hare. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Disc has punched that ref right out of here. Benoit, go ahead. Now you can do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> that was fucking amazing. I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't even mean to punch the ref. I tried to switch my uh, target indicator deal to Benoit or whoever the fuck I was aiming at. I don't remember. But I, I clocked the referee right over the top rope. And I think there's no DQ, right? Is it Fatal 4 Ways? How about a side effect for you, Deeds, Charlie? Boom! Is it Fatal 4 Ways or is it Fatal 4 Way and Triple Threat where there's no DQ? That's a big diving elbow into a German suplex! You can see a tag team in the making here between Charlie Haas and uh, old Sean O'Hareski. Charlie, you stay over there. Benoit, come here. You know what? If you want to focus on Charlie, that's fine. And I'll focus. Oh, Benoit's getting a weapon. So that means he's either feeling pretty 2007 or this is no DQ. <laughs> but he threw a table into the ring instead of a bow flex. So, oh my god. I gotta stop. I gotta st It's officially too much now. It's too much. Hey, Charlie, is this too much? How about a twist of fate? Benoit, you go ahead and deal with your sharpshooter. I'll take the win. Did you just kick out of my finish at one? Charlie's shooting on me. This guy's trying to fuck on me. Fuck Benoit. Benoit. God damn it. <laughs> we got to worry about Sean O'Hare now. See, this is the problem with my strategy of doing damage to everybody. Is now I have to worry about Sean O'Hare getting pinned. And Charlie. Charlie's not going to get pinned. God damn it. Kicked out of my finish at one. <laughs> Chris, will you let go? You know you're not gonna fucking get me out of here. Fuck you. How about one of these? A little bit of brain damage for you, as if you haven't had enough. <sighs> you, Charlie, Charlie. You know what? Fuck it. You. You're the one who brought the table. Now it's time to pay the piper. You fuck. What do you think about this? Oh, my asshole. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie just. Took the table out from underneath us like a fucking magician pulling a paper towel out from underneath a beer bottle. <laughs> Look at Sean O'Hare! Sean O'Hare with big business! Power bomb through the table! Oh no! Sean O'Hare's gonna win! Chris Benoit, you're fucking this up! Okay, I thought Sean O'Hare... Get to the rope, Matt Hardy! Charlie, help me! Charlie, help me! Charlie, help me! <laughs> For the love of fuck's sake, my hands are getting tired from tapping these buttons. Get away from me, Chris. You're not pulling me off that bullshit. You know what? 
I'm not satisfied with only one table spot. Sean O'Hare. Eat shit. Come here. How about this? This is what I think. You like to powerbomb people through tables? How do you like getting powerbombed through? Fuck. Oh no! DDT ski! On the table! That was supposed- that was my deal, not yours. I'll bring the table in the ring, I don't care. What do you think, I'm just gonna leave it outside? Come here. I'm upset with you now, Sean. That's why you get the twist of fate through a table! Charlie, get fuck. I didn't time that very well, did I? Snap Mareski on Chris Benoit. God damn it, Sean O'Hare, with your dragon sleeper bullshit. Look at Charlie, look at Charlie! Moonsault through the table! This is a really good match. <laughs> Sean O'Hare, you're not. Ooh, I'm gonna take this out on you now. You got me pissed. No, 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 no! Drop kick into a sunset flip. That's a rope break. Fucking Mike Kyoto knockoff Billy Silverman looking ass. <laughs> How about one of these? Drop you on your deal right into Charlie's gonna have a rope break. We don't have to worry about that. Chris and Charlie need to get wrapped up. So when I hit this twist of fate, I can just go for the pin. Do something, Chris. Thank you. Perfect timing. Played him like a fucking fiddle. Matt wins the match. What number will Matt choose? Are you kidding? You wouldn't know. Take two. You know what number he's going to pick. We got 1, 15, or 29. Bro, we're going 29. I'm not putting it to chance. I want to win the... Fuck, why do his eyes look red? This is de demonic Matt Hardy. Number 29, yeah, no doubt. Here is Mr. McMahon. Hold on a second. Just wait. I said the fatal four-way match would determine who gets the pick. But I never said the winner gets the pick. Oh, you pizza shit. Actually, O'Hare, who lost this match, gets to pick his entry number. I think it's only fair that the weaker superstar gets the advantage. At Royal Rumble. Don't you? Fuck you. You're just holding a grudge. Oh, this piece of shit. I'll take number 29. You didn't even live to 29, dude. Man, I'm ruthless today. <laughs> okay, you have number 29, and that's final. Because I said so. Matt thought he was going to be able to pick his entry number. Matt. Take God, why can't I do any of King's lines? Matt misunderstood what Vince said. Yeah, right. You know damn well what Vince was saying. Well, the road to Royal Rumble still continues. Yeah, god damn it, it does. So what number am I going to be now? God, phew, that chaps my ass. 86 superstar points. We got stacked cash in the bank, you know what I'm saying? But that's not the point. I wanted number 29. I earned it fair and square. Week 4, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Isn't that what WWE always tries to say is New York? Like they have WrestleMania. Oh, God damn! <laughs> Crazy Eyes Stephanie! Oh, shit! The roulette wheel is back! Well, Matt, you know the Royal Rumble is this Sunday. It's time we decide your entry number. Fuck, I should have saved and just gimmicked this so I get a good number. Step up and take a spin on the roulette wheel. Man, I don't want to play Royal Rumble roulette. Good luck. Go ahead and spin it, you good-looking woman, you. <laughs> Come on, big money, no whammies. I'll take 20, dude. I'll take 20, big time. I can outlast 10 other shitheads, or 9, I suppose. All right, you got number 20. Good luck this Sunday. God damn, I love a good-looking woman in a business suit. That's That does it for me, you know what I'm saying? It just does. <laughs> We're taking on the Big Show Ski AEW employee, Paul White, aka the Big Show. We're opening with a Rikishi versus Steven Richards ladder match. How is Kishi's big ass even gonna get up there? Well, he did. <laughs> he figured it out. Matt Hardy versus the Big Show. Royal Rumble implications on the line. It's up next. Oh my goodness. We need to put a theory to the test now, because some of you guys have been telling me forever 
If I get my strength number up, even as a little guy, I'll be able to lift the big guys. Yep, it still remains untrue. <laughs> big Show just back body dropped us like we were nothing. Discus punch, and he's not taking that either. Elbow to the gut ski into the big DDT. And when we slam a guy down from that high, just his height alone works against him in that regard. You know what? I'm, I'm thinking about this now. I think Big Show might be the last guy to beat us. And I'm not talking about when we lost the US title in the TLC match because I lost that on purpose. Look at that gigantic body slam there. Uh, we, we said going in, look, we're going to drop the US title here because I don't, I don't want all the singles belts. I don't want to show the bullshit. I hate it. Big old clothesline. Let's head up to the top. I wanted to hit that head scissors, but it's not going to happen. Son of a bitch. I got a yellow body already. He's a lot stronger than me. It's not fair. <laughs> That's a... Look at that rolling thunder kick. He's not having any of my shit. But what I was saying before I so rudely interrupted myself. Into the steps. How about it? Was we purposely... Fuck you. <laughs> we dropped the US title on purpose. But I think the last guy to get like a shoot win over me was Show. I don't, I don't remember how he pulled it out. But I think Big Show beat us. Uh, big leg drop! He was standing up. He could have just walked out of the way. Big man, small brain. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you. We're going to throw this guy in the corner. We're going to punch him. And we're going to do whatever this is. We're going to stop a muggle. B-I-G-S-H. Oh, W sucks. <laughs> Full disclosure, I could, off the top of my head, I didn't know how many letters there were in Big Show or if that counting out was even going to work. But I think we pulled it off. We made it work. Dan Dan's, what are some of you... Whoop, got him! Got him with the head scissors! What are some of your favorite memories from 616 Smackdown? We've had a ton of great episodes. This is the season finale, but that's not entirely a bad thing because we've had such a great run. Um, and... This show ran for a long time. This is the season one finale, but this is episode 35. I would have liked to have ended on a, on a round number, a nice 36. But, you know, it is what it is. And the schedule played out the way it did. Boom! Look at that twisting back elbow. We're going to head up top again. When he gets up, we're launching the head scissors. There it is. Pulled it off twice in one match. Into the punches. See, Big Show might be stronger. He might be more dominant. He's bigger. But he's not smarter. He's not more agile. Whoop! Tosses me right over the top row. But look, my agility allows me to do this. <laughs> Run into the stairs. And then... Come here. Whoop! Got him! <laughs> See, we're using what he doesn't have against him. You know what else he doesn't have? Well, I was trying to throw him on the other one, but this will do. He doesn't have... Get away from me. Get away. Okay. <gasps> DDT on the floor! That was fantastic. I would really like to put him through the announce table, but I don't know any moves I have where that will work. <gasps> because I can't fucking pick him up. Who's fucking texting? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm trying to get shit done here. Don't you know? We're trying to reclaim that loss over the big show. Yep, got him. He can't touch us, dude. When's the last time Big Show landed an offensive maneuver here? We are destroying. Fuck. I don't think we got any credit for that taunt. Oh, look at him. He's really fucking setting a fucking... <laughs> I was going to say he's blazing a trail here, but I couldn't find the words. He's really pulling out all the stops with that side headlock. Real, real great stuff, Big Show. I've never seen that before. Never saw that coming. The big man headbutt. Never saw that coming. Cross body! You didn't see that coming. How's that feel? Beat your big ass up. <laughs> but yeah, I want to know what some of your favorite memories of 616 Smackdown are. Obviously, the first uh, episode was the evolution of Hell in a Cell across the first five Smackdown games. Then we played WCW NWO Revenge uh, with Sting. We went through the entire world title 
what do you call it? The whole world championship mode. We've had a hell of a time on this show. That's just the first two episodes. You guys tell me what you loved. Twist of fate on the world's largest athlete. That's how you put him away. Beautiful. The momentum heading into the Royal Rumble is out of control for Matt Hardy version 1. Look at that man. Look at that man right there. Beautiful haircut. Momentum for days. That's your Royal Rumble winner right there, Dan Dance. Don't get it twisted. Rey Mysterio and Brock Lesnar in the main event. Lesnar's coming off that win over The Undertaker. And he's going to keep his momentum rolling as well. Lesnar is probably the WWE Champion, don't you think? We're going to have to check that. We're going to have to find out who we are facing. Oh my goodness, it's the Royal Rumble! In Boston, Massachusetts. I'm excited. I'm excited for the fucking Rumble, dude. I feel like it's a it's a pay-per-view back when I gave a shit. <laughs> and this is based on the Royal Rumble 03 set, which was great. We're close to the final destination. Neither side will back down. I am the real deal. What a thundering right blow that was. He will not let up. The strongest move in his arsenal. There's no need for mercy. The time has come for a conclusion. Who will survive? <coughs> Ow, that voice hurt my throat too. <coughs> Ow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that didn't feel so good. We got that pyro ski going off. Oh, my throat hurts after that bullshit. Anybody backstage who's fucking around? Nobody? Alright. Here we go. To the card. Fuck. I wanted to check who the WWE champion was. <laughs> I forgot. I can't go back. Lita versus Sable. Lita picks up the win, as she should. Let's make a prediction here. World Heavyweight Championship. Last man standing. Triple H versus The Rock. I'm going to say H retains. Of course he does. Main event. Royal Rumble. 30 superstars. Fuck. Are we gonna have to, we're going to have to watch this whole thing until number 20, huh? We can do that, though. That'll be fun. It'll be fun to see what kind of jabrones are going to be in the ring when we show up. But let me tell you, they stand on no chance. Because Matt Hardy V1 is going to take it. It's the Royal Rumble, and it's up next. The number one entrant, as you might imagine. The heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Look at the pyro. Oh, God, yes! Isn't that what Vince said? My oh, God! <laughs> no, that's JR. But Vince was the one who was like, Look at that, yes! <laughs> I'm losing my fucking mind. Who's number two? Big Papa Pump. Scott Steiner. I'm doing him an egg. No simpy. <laughs> he does not have the Superman symbol on his tights, but he does have the number 69 because he's Scott Steiner. Look at his fucking body. And you know, I considered doing this uh, season mode with Scott Steiner. And you want to know what put me off of it? it was his finisher. The Steiner recliner, it's fucking, it's hard to submit people in this game. Oh, he does kind of have a bullshit Superman symbol on his tights. Uh, I didn't want to not be able to, like, do my sweet finisher, and I know he has, like, a bullshit reverse DDT, but that's not the same. You watch Scott Steiner for the recliner, dog. you know what I'm saying? We're in it for the long haul here, Dan Dance. Oh, look at that. We don't have to wait one minute. Immediately, big diving moonsault from Shawn Michaels. Immediately, we're getting another entrant into the ring. It's big, sexy, Kevin Nash, Big Daddy Cool, Diesel, call him what you will, man. And now Goldust, what a fucking, this is a very 90s opening to this Royal Rumble. Oh no, oh no! Kevin Nash almost eliminated by his click teammate right off the bat. Scott Steiner nearly over the top. Here comes the doctor of thugonomics, John Cena. And there goes Kevin Nash. Big Daddy Cool already eliminated from the Royal Rumble. Third one in, first one out. You know, the, those big guys, they don't have the, uh, they don't have the, the fucking gas tank for these rumbles. Sometimes you're in there for an hour. And we can fit six dudes in the ring at the same time. Look at that! That fucking back kick from Tajiri. 
This episode is, I guess, kind of a preview for a future episode of 616 Nitro that's going to happen. Here comes Rey Mysterio, big power slam from Scott Steiner. Uh oh, uh oh, Shawn Michaels! Shawn Michaels skins the cat! Barely hangs on, nearly eliminated. He's not going to stay this time! Rey Mysterio eliminates the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels in devastating fashion. Gold dust barely hanging on. What I was gonna say. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh, Steiner Recliner and Tajiri! There's so much happening right now. Let me get a thought out. Woo, here's Recliner. <laughs> Let me get a thought out. On a future episode, there goes Tajiri, there goes Gold dust of 616 Nitro. <laughs> I'm ignoring, okay, I'm ignoring everything from now on until I get my thought out. You got me? <sighs> Let's take a breath. On a future episode of 616 Nitro, I'm going to do a Royal Rumble in WWE 2K19. And I'm going to download a bunch of crazy characters like uh, fucking Superman and Goku and Vegeta and uh, Sub-Zero. I'm going to download a bunch of people and I think I'm going to do commentary on it. And I would like to include somebody with me. I'd like to have a commentary team rather than just me. That's what I was trying to say, and I kept interrupting myself. But that's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to that. I did not invent that idea years ago. I saw some channel. I, I don't. I have no idea what it was. But they did like a celebrity Royal Rumble in like 2K17 or some bullshit, and it was really fun to watch. It was. It had like God in it and the Predator, and it was. It was really goofy and extremely entertaining. So I'll do one too. Um, Oh, the hurricane bumped over the top rope by the Nature Boy Ric Flair, the record holder for World Championship reigns. We also lost Rey Mysterio while I was talking, and uh, this match is going so fast. You know what the problem was? I was I just finished. Well, I say finished. Just it was like a week ago. I finished the uh, WrestleMania 19 episode of Triangle X Squared Circle, and that Royal Rumble like changed the game. You had to throw a guy over the top rope, he would hang on the apron, and you had to kick him a shitload of times and drain his meter to eliminate everyone. So the rumbles were really long, and they would take like an hour. And that was in my head for what this was going to be like. But I forgot, this is this is SmackDown Royal Rumbles, dude. These things are fucking lightning fast. But you know what that means? It means it's more dangerous. DDT from Eddie Guerrero. It's even more dangerous, because if we take one false step, one misstep, one mistake, one fuck up. If we zig when we should have zagged, right there, just like Shelton Benjamin, steps in the ring, gets too close to the ropes, one strike sends him up and over the top. That could be us. That could be us, and I don't want it to be. Look at that beautiful brain buster from Lance Storm. John Cena has made two counters while he was on the outside of the ring. He should have been eliminated several times now, but he has hung on the wherewithal of John Cena Big back suplex has been off the charts. Charlie Haas has already lasted longer than his uh, tag team brother Shelton Benjamin. Here goes Lance Storm up and over the top. The main event of WrestleMania will not be uh, boring. <laughs> because that's what Lance Storm is. I'm not in critiquing his in-ring style. I'm critiquing his gimmick. You know, he would always get in the ring and grab the mic and say, if I can be serious for a second. Very dry, very boring. Eddie Guerrero eliminated by Christian and Charlie Haas. Christian turns his attention to Charlie, but not fast enough. Charlie's able to sneak back in the ring. Stereo eliminations! Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. I have no idea. Was that Charlie that got eliminated? By Christian? Here comes the Big Cho. <laughs> who we just picked up a pinfall victory over. I'm liking Christian's gear here. I like Christian in the red and gold. I think it's a good look. What is going on here? What do we got? What do we got? Rhino is the man. There goes Ric Flair. And if you look at John Cena's health bar, he now has a completely red body. So Cena has been in there long enough to take major damage. Big back suplex by the Doctor of Thugonomics. His targeting indicator is all over the fucking place. There goes Test! 
Tess not lasting long here in the Rumble. John Cena gets leveled by Rhino. Not seeing a... Oh, there goes John Cena and the Big Show! Two eliminations within a quarter of a second of each other. Unbelievable. Look at that running power slam there by Rhino. Here comes Rikishi, and I think we are up next, are we not? Pretty sure Matt Hardy version one is about to hit the ring. I'm nervous. Yeah, here we go, dude. I'm fucking nervous. The whole season mode comes down to this moment. Get away from the ropes. Edge, you're a bad man. You took my redheaded woman. Boom! Shit, get away from the ropes. Get away from the ropes. Rhino, you're a bad man. You help Edge. <laughs> Anybody who played a part and lead a leave in my life is a bad man. There goes Edge! That's what you get for being a bad man! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh no, A-Train's a bad man. He's a bad man with a bad power bomb. That's bad for business. That's bad for everybody. Get away from me, you big hairy fuck. Come here. Clothesline in the corner. How about you go up? How about you go... <gasps> Christian! Christian, don't do that! <laughs> I'm so scared. We need to hurt Albert while he's next to Christian, so Christian hits him with a finish. That's the plan. Get away from me. There goes Rhino! Rhino's out! Oh no! I'm scared! <laughs> Stretch Muffler! Stretch Muffler by Albert! There's the first double team move in this entire rumble. You'd think these guys would want to be working together more, but it's just not playing out that way. Christian? Nice! No! Ooh, that didn't work! It didn't work! And now I'm scared! <laughs> oh, Christian. Christian, it's your time. I'm sorry, it's your time. You gotta go! There's too much of a delay. Who just got eliminated? Randy Orton! Randy Orton! You're not the legend killer yet. You're just a dick. Christian! Don't do that! <gasps> this is bad. <laughs> I'm so scared. Big punch to Randy Orton. Someone else just got eliminated, but I, I cannot watch the whole ring. I just have to worry about me. Hoot! There goes Randy up and over the top rope. Chris Benoit's here. He's got to go before he kills somebody. There he go. Oh, no. Okay, take two. Take two. Chris Benoit, take two. There you go. Goodbye. Rikishi, get away from me with your big fat ass. Rikishi, this is what you get. That's what you... Oh. Jericho. 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 Come on. You're Canadian. You're supposed to be nice. Boom, 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 boom. That's what you get. Fuck you. Rikishi, hit him with a finish. Oh, no. Oh, no. Kane just took Rikishi out. Rikishi had to finish. That was my insurance policy. Get away from me. Oh, no. Kane played a part in taking Lita away. This is bad. This is Jericho. Jericho. <gasps> Don't do. Oh, oh, oh. That was scary. Goodbye, no more scares from you. Here comes Kurt Angle, there goes Undertaker, there goes Kane! This, we're down to the fucking wire. This is big business! Sean O'Hare, number 29, who's number 30? Doesn't matter, Kurt Angle, goodbye! Sean, you took my spot. I'll never forget it. I'll never forgive you. That's what Sweeney Todd says, never forget, never forgive. Goodbye, Steve Austin. Austin, I love ya. Big fan. <gasps> no! I cannot believe that just happened. What the fuck just happened? Oh no. Oh no! I'm calling the cops. I have, I'm calling the police. Oh no! Stone Cold, you dick! How many points did they take away? What do you want, Jerry? This is not a good time. Hang on there, man. I wanted to offer you a shot. I don't want the fucking tag team title. I was supposed to win the Royal Rumble. Go fuck yourself. Okay, we only lost one point. I think we're still in WWE title contention. But, I, I can't believe that just happened. What the fuck am I gonna do now? I can- I don't wanna talk to the- I've beaten Undertaker like five fucking times. Stephanie, give me a title shot. 
What can I help you with? Title shot. So you want a shot at the title, do you? Here are the titles you can challenge for. I don't want either one of these! Oh my god. Oh no. What fucking show is Austin on? Is he challenging for my belt? Like the belt on my show or what the fuck is going on? And I'm not even on the card. I've oh my god, this is a fucking travesty. Oh great, put the put the fucking US title on the double suicide murder guy. <sighs> Brock Lesnar beats The Undertaker. No Matt Hardy on the show. Maybe we just needed a rest. You know what I mean? Maybe we just needed a quick in between. Now's a great time for them to give us an angle. Or we can go pester Stephanie. Title shot. I don't want either one of these. Should we not should we stop bothering her? Because I can't fucking believe that happened with the Royal Rumble. I cannot believe that. I swear to god I tapped L2. Oh great. Cruiserweight title fatal four-way match. i listen, I'm proud to be the cruiserweight champion, but this is not what the fuck was supposed to happen. Big match, Cruiserweight title on the line. It's coming up next. I am going to retain my fucking Cruiserweight title in this match. I'm going to do it in extremely impressive fashion. You want to know why? Because I want a shot at the WWE Championship at No Way Out or WrestleMania. I don't give a fuck which one it is. I want to be on the card. I want the main event. And I want my name next to the fucking world title. That's what this was always supposed to be. And then Austin comes in, handpicked by Vince McMahon, gets the number 30 slot, bullshits me out of my own bullshit. <laughs> Man. To say I'm, uh, I'm a little bothered would be an understatement. Ray's doing flippy-dippy bullshit over there. God knows what. Get away from me, Ray, unless you want to get fucked up, because I'll do it. If that's what you want, I'll give you what you're asking for, you little shit. Any bitch could get it, you know what I'm saying? Ray, your time has come. <sighs> what is this bullshit? Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> get in the corner. Son of a bitch, he's too fast. He's, he's fucking tiny. It's hard to get your hands on. Remember, uh, what was the- it was like the slippery deaf guy from the old- old family guy? Who was like, you're never gonna catch me! <laughs> That shit's from, like, 2004. I don't know what made me think of that. Fuck you, Ray. You know what, Ray? This is for you. Nice and early. Go fuck yourself. That's what I gotta say. I'm so upset. <laughs> I'm so upset that we got fucked out of the Royal Rumble, dude. I did everything right. I was taking out everybody. Tossing jabrones over the top ropes. Here and there. DDT! Nobody was safe. And then Austin comes in with some bullshit ice. Mmm. I'm not having it. Eddie with the go-behind on fucking generic Billy Silverman. Look at this. See that? Over the top? That's what I did to everybody. If I want a match with Austin at No Way Out, and I... Oh, oh shit. Look! God damn it. Take three. Got him! I want a match with Austin at No Way Out, and I want my Royal Rumble opportunity on the line that he stole from me. That was awesome. Eddie went for our uh, head scissor move that we like to pull off, and I punched him out of the air, and he fell on his head. Boom! That would bash his head into the deal. Off the top, why not? Big elbow! None of these guys can contend with the Cruiserweight champ. There's a reason that belt is around my waist, and there's a reason... Why the WWE Championship is going to be around my waist at WrestleMania. Rey Mysterio is doing flippy dippy shit and he almost, he took the camera off me when I'm trying to do a table spot, which is unforgivable. There we go. Thank you. You know what? This is how upset I am. This is how upset I am over the Royal Rumble. I'm that upset. You know how upset I am? I'm this upset. And I'm this upset. Everybody's going down. Get up, Eddie. Get up, Eddie. I got one more for you. Come here. 
Shit. Boom. What do you think? Oh, no. Oh, no. He's got one for me. Now Rey Mysterio has a chair. He's stealing my gimmick. <laughs> Eddie, get in the ring. Now that these idiots are outside, you and I can do a little bit of this. And I can keep my belt. Ray, you little idiot. You're a fucking little idiot. This is how dumb you are. Okay? Come here. Come here, fuck. <laughs> He's so fast. It's super bad. He's the fastest kid alive. Boom! One for Tajiri. How about... Shit. Okay, Ray has a finish that he can use at any second. So we gotta keep an eye on him over that. That's for Eddie Guerrero. Here we go. You know what? Fuck. I was gonna say, he's all wrapped up. I might be able to just pin Eddie. While he's wrapped up in that animation. But it didn't work out. Tajiri is really hurt. So we're gonna give him one of these. Boom! Now, Ray, do something... No, that's... that's. Did you see that? Rewind that. There's a conspiracy. There's fuckery afoot. Because I stomped on Ray and they didn't count it. Come here, you little jerk-off. Side effect. Onto the steel steps. Eddie Guerrero, I like the way you think. And you're gonna like the way you look, I guarantee you. A little bit of men's warehouse for no reason. Ray Mysterio is rolling me up. I don't think so. Eddie, what do you think this is? This is not the Eddie Guerrero offense hour. Oh no! This is a fucking, this is hell now. Oh no, Ray puts Eddie through a table with a chair. This is big bad news. Eddie, Eddie, I got something to show you. You know what it is? It's called, I don't know if you've heard of it before. It's, fuck, you reversed my finish. Someone get, someone get Tajiri. Okay, we both got to jury. <laughs> but, but all of these guys are in a position now where they could get pinned. Look at that Frankensteiner from Tajiri. Any of these guys could get pinned at any moment. Just like this. Rey Mysterio, I'm gonna have you executed. <laughs> Boom! Oh man. Big block ski. Eddie, no, 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 no! Eddie, you're, you're messing this all up! Eddie, you're, you're ruining everything! Oh no! DDT on the chair! Now I'm in a bad position. Dude, the next pin on nearly anybody, pretty much anybody but me, could take this. I need, I just need someone to get stuck in an animation loop. Twist of fate, and then I can take it home. That's my plan, Ray. You're not getting away with that bullshit. Nope. I know the tricks. Neither one of my strikes broke that up. The rope break broke it up. Eddie, hit Ray with some shit. Ray, how about this? How about this? Twist of fate! Oh no. I'm gonna break my asshole off and throw it away. This is fucking... Why is everything falling apart at the end? We were on such an incredible streak. We're the last guy eliminated from the Royal Rumble. We lose the Cruiserweight title, which I'm glad to get that fucking belt off me. I had it for way too long. Eddie's the champ now. Are they gonna take four points away from me again and take me out of contention? That's, that's going to boil my dick. They're going to do it, aren't they? I think they are. Brock Lesnar picks up a win, of course. Kurt Angle gets a win. You better not. Okay, they only took one, so technically we're still in contention. Oh. This is for the shits and for the birds, man. What now? What, uh, watch him give me a fucking a US title shot for no reason. I'm going to bother Stephanie again, because I don't know what else to do. Tag title, US title. Oh, okay. Nope, I don't want any of those. I want the fucking big boy. 
I want the big boy. Give me a shot at the big boy. Oh, great. We get Brock Lesnar. In, you know what? I'm not going to complain. We have never faced Brock Lesnar across this entire season mode. It's in a cage. And if we beat Brock Lesnar, they got to give us a title shot, right? At least they got to give us something big at No Way Out. They have to. U.S. title, Benoit Big Show, Benoit wins. Undertaker versus Charlie Haas and John Cena, Taker wins. And in the main event, it's Matt Hardy versus Brock Lesnar. This is big time. Dan Dans, what's up next? Oh, fuck. Shit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, Dan Dans. I was on my phone. I thought they were going to do entrances. I'm kind of upset they didn't do entrances because I wanted to see if Brock was wearing the WWE title. Because I think he's the champ, but I'm not sure. You know what? This is not a great match to get. Uh, what? This is not a great match for me. Because Lesnar is considered, I, I believe he's considered a super heavyweight in this game. And we are Matt Hardy. Um, Two-time cruiserweight champion. And we can't pick him up. Boom! So we're going to have to hit him with a lot of strikes. Just like this one. Boom! There we go. First time it didn't work, but the second one did. We're going to take out the wheels, you know what I'm saying? You ever tried driving a car that has bad wheels? It doesn't work out. So if we can hurt Brock Lesnar's knees, we can take those knees out from underneath him. Cut down the tree at the base of the trunk, as it were. We're going to have him in a position he doesn't want to be in. But the perfect position for us. What the fuck am I talking about? Oh, no. We need to block as much of his offense as possible. Look at that. One punch made us flash red, and we have a yellow head already. One punch. Out of the corner. Boom with that drop kick. Put him in the front face lock. There is pin and give up in this cage match, so it's not like any of the other cage matches we've had across this entire season mode. I have my controller up over my head so you guys don't have to listen to me obnoxiously mash those buttons. Here we go. How about that running side effect? And it's not like I thought that I was going to be able to submit Lesnar with uh, that front face lock. The whole idea was to just do as much damage as possible. You got me? Head up to the top rope for the big... Oh, no. That's not how you want your elbows to look. You know what I'm saying? You want your elbow to come straight across the torso into the black heart, as it were. We have Brock's body at the yellow level. Our head has been yellow for a while. So we need to keep the pressure on. There we go. Why does a diving crossbody make his head yellow and not his body? I don't know. But we're not going to complain because we're doing damage to the big man. And this is the kind of damage we need to do. Because god damn it, I'm telling you, our destiny lies with WrestleMania and it lies with the WWE Championship. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. I already made the thumbnail. The WWE Championship belt is on the thumbnail. So we... <gasps> Fuck. 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 No! This is bad news. Get away. Get away. Get away. No, not that far away. Get up. That was scary. That was very scary. How about this? A little snap mare action for you deeds. How about this? We know now, basically, that if he lands anything of consequence, we're fucked. Because that one F5 had us down for so long. But we have, like, no moves. We have, like, DDT! We have, like, zero moves we can use against him. Our head is red already. This is so bad for business. DDT again! That's, like, one of my best moves. And we have his body orange now. So we're gonna keep peppering him with shots. We cannot... Why is his finisher bar... It, it grows so much faster than ours does, dude. I'm calling hogwash nonsense on this bullshit. Boom! We need to hurt him as much as possible. We've been able to counter so much of his shit. So much of it. And that's good. Because the slightest... I was just going to say, he has not been doing a lot of striking, he's been doing mostly grappling, which is making him predictable, 
but he read my mind. Boom! Because he switched over to striking as soon as I was thinking that. And he is dangerously close to getting another finisher now. His body's red. His body's red. It's tough. <gasps> He reversed the twist of fate. He reversed the twist of fate. There's a DDT. We're getting out of here. We are gone. We're gone. We're gone. Matt, climb. Matt, climb. Make yourself famous, kid. God damn it. <laughs> oh, I even went JR with it. It didn't work. Boom. Brock. Brock, you're fucking, you're giving me a heart attack. Look at that fucking big old elbow. It's time for the head scissor deal. You're gonna eat it just like all the other big men. Yes! Nailed it! Into the punches! We need that head orange, dude. Yes, we did it. Head is orange, body red. One more twist of fate, and he is out of here. What am- oh man, I tried to taunt twice, but I flicked the wrong stick. Here we go. This is one of my shorter taunts, right? I can fit this in. <gasps> no! 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 Not again! You cannot Austin me like this! F5! Come here! Come here! No! No! Don't come here! Son of a fucking bitch! This is... This is a travesty of epic proportions. Epic proportions. I know I usually edit out the loading screens, but I'm fucking busy talking, okay? God damn it. Why are they doing this to me right before WrestleMania? I'm version one, god damn it. <laughs> now we're on the go home to no way out. We have no angle. Our fucking... Our momentum is gone. Nobody wants to talk to me backstage. Do I have any attribute points I can spend? Will you at least make me feel better a little bit? Technique. Ability to counter. Yeah, fuck it. Put all the points in that. What's going on on the card? What do we got here? Where's Matt Hardy? Not on the card. Beautiful. Who gives a fuck what happens on any of this? Heading right into No Way Out with nothing going on. This is fucking... I can't believe this. Is this how you saw the season finale going, Dan Dans? Be honest. Did you think I was going to fucking fall apart like this? Because I got to tell you, I'm pretty upset about it. Anybody backstage want to hang out? Nope. Not even... A, I can't even show my face to Stephanie McMahon right now. She's probably so disappointed in me. We're not even on the pay-per-view. Let's make predictions. How about it? And Brock Lesnar is the champ, so we got a non-title match after everything we've been through. <sighs> TLC title match. Bubba Ray and Devon against Triple H and Ric Flair. Will Triple H get two belts? Yes, he will, because he's Triple H. Lumberjack, who cares? Thank God the murderer won. Main event, Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle. I'm actually going to say that Kurt Angle wins the title here. Nope, Brock Lesnar keeps it. Do I give a fuck? No, because we're not, we're not saving right now. Here we go, WrestleMania, right around the corner. No momentum, nothing going on. The King didn't even ask me if I wanted to form a fucking tag team. <laughs> this is just something else, man. You at, should, okay, I guess we'll just take, it's another cage match. I guess we'll just take the US title. That sh that'll get us some points. It'll put us in contention. They have to consider that, right? Dan Dan's Matt Hardy about to become a two-time U.S. champion or three-time. I can't remember. It's up next. Fuck. Dude, I'm not even gonna... I was on my phone again. Because <laughs> I get fucking all these text messages and all this shit in between loading screens, which I edit out. So I always think that that's my safe zone. And then they put me in these goddamn cage matches where... You asshole. He, he totally tricked me there. They put me in these cage matches where I don't have an in-between. I have zero downtime. So, they catch me off guard. Chris, do me a favor. I'm so upset. But we didn't lose the US title to Benoit, right? We lost to Cena. So Cena, obviously, could not hang on to the gold. 
How about this? DDT for your little stumpy ass neck. What do you think about that? I can't believe we didn't win the Royal Rumble. I'm, st I'm still upset about it. I'm still upset about it. All this work... This is fucking... This is the seventh installment of this Here Comes the Pain season. Though. All this work, everything led to that moment. And Austin just throws us over the top rope. And it's bullshit. That's I'm, I'm officially saying it's bullshit. I'm going to write a strongly worded letter. <sighs> Man. Can you imagine if we're not on the WrestleMania card? We have to be! We have to be on the card, dude. Do we give up hope? Is it over? Should we give up all hope? Oh, that we could get a world title shot at WrestleMania? Or is there still some way that we can pull this off and make this happen? He ran at me full speed ahead. All for naught. He's tricky dicky, dude. Every time I think he's gonna strike, he grapples. Every time I think he's gonna grapple, he strikes. He's ducking under my big old discus punch, but how about my discus elbow, fuckhead? You didn't see that coming, did you? A little bit of side effect action for you deeds. Hit him with those punches. We're gonna get that head orange in no time. Then we'll hit him with a twist of fate, and then we will get the fuck out of this cage, reclaim a championship. And you know what? I'm glad that we're not the Cruiserweight Champion anymore. We had that belt for so long. And I'm glad that we were not already the U.S. Champion, because we had both belts for so long, and I hate having all the belts. It's so unrealistic. So now we have none, and we have a chance to regain one. It's not the one that we wanted. But we're not gonna we're not gonna sneeze at it. If we when we win this US title, we're gonna be very proud to be US champion. Still looking forward to the WWE title though. Let's get twisted. <laughs> I'm just I'm just somewhere else, man. My mind is somewhere else. Chris Benoit's mind is scrambled eggs! Let's get out of here. I'm tapping, I'm tapping, I'm tapping, I'm tapping, I'm tapping, I'm tapping, I'm tapping. It's not gonna be that. Fuck, shit, son of a bitch. We went too early. His body, none of them's red yet. We should have waited till he was red. Big ol' reversal on that German. He's ducking under, but he, this ain't shit. This ain't shit. Oh no, this is some shit. Big power bomb. That's some real impact there. Well, there's no pins in this cage, Matt. There was last time. Where are you going, Idion? Should we have fucking... Should we have tried... No. There's no way we could have pinned Lesnar if we, if we tried to. So that, that's a... It's not even worth second-guessing that. And you know what the problem... Fuck. You know what the problem is with the Royal Rumble? Is I don't even have anything to second-guess. I did everything by the book. I did everything I was supposed to do. And then Austin just came in and pulled some black magic bullshit. I made no mistakes. Side effect. I really wish you could bash people's heads off the cage in this game. They didn't add that in until later. I always felt like that was a glaring omission from the SmackDown games. Because there were so many other... Fuck. There were so many other wrestling games where you could do that. You could do it in No Mercy, for Christ's sake. Let's bust him open! You stand in a chance of pulling this one off, Chris. You're still selling. I'm already out of the goddamn cage! Goodbye! I'll take that belt now. How's that look? US gold around the waist of Matt Hardy. We are a champion once again. We want the gold, sucker. WWE title, we coming for you. Never mind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Second week of March. We are in Cleveland, Ohio. Two weeks away from WrestleMania. 
Who's backstage? Taker, I've already beaten you a shitload of times. I stand to gain nothing from interacting with you. We are in the main event with The Undertaker, taking on the world's greatest tag team. I'm not sure why, but it's another match that we've never had before. So we're closing the season out in a big way. Lots of big first times here. Dan Dan's main event tag team match is up next. Okay, I've been cutting out the entrances, but they're just rubbing this in my fucking face. Matt survived Superstar in the Rumble. Yep, Matt survived 28 Superstars in the Royal Rumble. And it was that motherfucker Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's the only one that caused us a problem. They're just rubbing it in my fucking face now. Look at that US gold. You can't take that away from me, Austin. Or maybe you can, I don't know. So here's, here's the deal. We are not in a good place when it comes to tag matches. I think we've only had one across season mode, and we were teamed with Jerry Asshole Lawler, of all people. Mounted punches! Beaten in the face of Shelton Benjamin. Uh, and we lost that tag match. We actually, as Matt Hardy, ate the pin. For some reason, they jobbed us. They should have jobbed the fucking stupid king. I shouldn't even have taken that match, come to think of it. But you know what? Look at this. Spinebuster! It's actually, it's nice to be able to play as a heavyweight where I can do all of my moves to fucking anybody. Check this out. Shelton Benjamin, why are you reversing my shit? You know what? For your deeds, you get a big right hand! I love how a right hand to the fucking forehead. Ooh ha How's that feel? Now you can't hit your moves on people, asshole guy. <laughs> Shelton's reversing the shit out of me here. Last time right hand, this time right f Ooh, I was gonna say right foot, but he blocked it. Right foot! There you go. Get up. Shelton, I want to explore Undertaker's moveset a little bit. How do you feel about my choke slam? Boom! That feels pretty good. We got some Undertaker taunts here, which is gonna bring Matt Hardy into the ring. Look at the teamwork here, the beautiful teamwork. We might have something going here between Undertaker and Matt Hardy. Shelton, face this way so I can, not so I can fuck. Take two, fuck. <laughs> no, don't tag in Charlie. <laughs> I sound like Danny DeVito from Always Saying, Don't go in the crevice, Charlie! <laughs> Look at off the ropes. Big boot to the face. Now you get the mounted punches, just like your boy did. Man, an Undertaker builds. I do not appreciate that. Up and over the top rope. Are you rubbing it in my fucking face? Acai moonsault to nothing, bitch. You trying to rub it in my face the same way Superstar in the Rumble did? Huh? Is that what you're trying to do? I'll say out here in Shadowbox, my buddy Matt Hardy will beat the shit out of you outside the ring. What do you think about that, Charlie? Shelton, I don't like the look of you. <laughs> you fuck. Get off the ring apron. This is my yard, haven't you heard? You want to see something weird in this game? Check this out. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, in the older SmackDown games, Undertaker had like Jeff Hardy's swanton dive. And I get it, they were trying to reenact his Undertaker WrestleMania dive, but um, it didn't it didn't look right. God damn it, fucking Billy Silverman ass generic referee. Yeah, tag Shelton back in. Boom, that's for you. Shelton, this is for you. Both of y'all motherfuckers ain't shit. Who's texting me? Got so much business going on. Shelton, up and down. You know what, that was kind of just down. So why don't we pick Shelton up and introduce him to this here move that we like so much. Wrapping this guy in fucking knots. What do you think about the shoulder breaker? I was always a little puzzled as to why Undertaker has that in his repertoire. I've never seen Undertaker do a shoulder breaker like that. Into the corner. A little bit of double team ski action here. What do you think? Double last ride! I know it wasn't technically a last ride, but that's what we're going to call it. Charlie, 
Get off the ring apron. Shelton, time to say goodbye. A beautiful tag team victory. Wonderful, one might say. Oh boy. Undertaker and I, hand in hand, raising our hands in victory. I think I beat Undertaker three or four times across this season mode. I officially have his number. I think we took the U.S. title from him the first time, did we not? But you know what that means? This should put me in the main event of WrestleMania. <laughs> I'll take anything. Gah! I can't believe this. <sighs> 80, we've never had 87 superstar points before. This is the highest we've ever been rated. I can't, like, I can't believe they gave us nothing at No Way Out. They're giving us nothing now leading into Mania. U.S. title match against Benoit in a cage as if we didn't just do this. Oh, this is a hell of a season mode finish, Dan Dance, isn't it? I, you guys are probably still having fun watching. I'm just so upset at myself for what happened. Cage match, U.S. belt, coming up next. Come here. I'm not playing with you this time. There's going to be a lot less Chris Benoit offense in this cage match compared to the last one. We are on a destruction tear. Turning elbow. Stomp him in the fucking ribs. Stomp on his spine. Stomp everywhere. We have season finale rage right now. Do you understand? Season finale rage. Chris, what did I say about your offense? I said there's not going to be a lot of it. You see your special meter? There's barely anything in it. You want to know why? Because I'm pissed off and I have season finale rage. This guy thinks he can out-wrestle me, but he can't. And he's going to learn that real quick. And we're going to teach him real quick with this gut buster. Boom! How do your insides feel now, fuckface? Snap elbow action right there. I'm telling you, you are done. <sighs> Number 20 in the rumble. Number 20 in the rumble. Eliminate everything. All comes. Nobody can step to you. Fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin. The bitch mother. As if he hadn't won two rumbles already. He's got to come in and steal my thunder, steal my limelight. I should have requested a transfer to another show, so I should have. I considered that on like episode two, didn't I? I was like, we gotta get out of SmackDown. They're not a, they're not appreciating us. What could have been? What if I had gone to Raw on that like first episode? What if I had gone to Raw? Would we have been in the main event picture way earlier? Or would they have fucked us the same way Stephanie did on SmackDown? And if Stephanie had literally fucked us here on SmackDown, that would be awesome. I'd have no complaints. That'd be fucking sick. Because 2003 Stephanie McMahon was looking... Looking... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just... Let it be the way we were. <laughs> a little bit of, a, of an Uncle Bill from an American movie there. Bash his head off the fucking deal. You know what? What did I say about season finale rage? Take the turnbuckle pad out, off. We turned babyface. We did all this shit. We won gold left and right. Two-time U.S. champion. Two-time cruiserweight champion. We did everything there was to do. Beat The Undertaker. Beat The Big Show. Beat John Cena. We did it all. This has got to be our fucking sixth cage match in this season mode. There's, there's no way that we're not nearing double-digit cage matches. I refuse to believe that. And I gotta check our win-loss record when we get out of here, too. Because there's... Who, who better than Canyon, first of all? And who's got a better win-loss record than we do? I'm gonna say nobody, and I'll put that up against anybody. You know what I'm saying? How about... Fucking asshole. You know, in WCW, they called you the Canadian Crippler. In WWE, they called you the Rabid Wolverine. I call you a fucking piece of shit. 
I want his body red. I want to feed his fingertips to the Wolverines. How about that? Who knows that reference? That's a pretty dated one. Come here. Side effect for your deeds. Stay away from me. Let's get out of here, man. You know what? I'm feeling fucking wacky. Oh, well. We hit him. We hit him. Head scissor attempt off the top of the cage. That's why they call it high risk. But he still can't keep up with us. Look at, look at, he's got nothing. Boom! Get out of my face. Get this super long taunt going. If only our special meter filled as fast as Undertaker's did. Because if anybody needs any help in this game, it's the Undertaker, right? God forbid you throw a bone ski to old Matt Hardy. With our incredible win loss, right? <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm so upset. I'm still so upset. I'm gonna be bothered about this for a long time. I know none of you watched it because it was years ago, way before this channel had any subscribers. But I used to do a show called Thursday Night Football. I did one season of it. And the whole idea was I was playing, that's two finishes he's reversed. I was playing NFL Blitz, the original, on the PS1. And I took the New York Jets through an entire season mode. Spoilers. Sorry, I got the sniffles. Spoilers, but I got all the way to the fucking NFC Championship game, or AFC. I don't know what fucking division the Jets are in. I don't know anything about football. But we got all the way there. Here's a beautiful title defense in the cage on SmackDown. We got all the way to the game before the Super Bowl, and I lost in a heartbreaker. So I know what this kind of defeat is like, and I don't like that it's rearing its ugly head again. Main event. Hey, Brock Lesnar was on the losing side of a tag team. He didn't get pinned. Rhino got pinned. 88 superstar points. That's WWE Championship material. This is the go-home for WrestleMania. We've got momentum, but we've got no angle whatsoever. Stephanie, Stephanie, you gotta talk to me. Come on. Come on. Talk to me about the WWE Championship. Nope. You want to do what? I just don't understand why. As the current champion, you can't just leave. You expect me to hand you over to Eric Bischoff? God damn it. See? We even tried to leave. <laughs> she said no. Let's check our win-loss record. This might be the last chance we get to see it. 34 and 11. Nothing to sneeze at, but... Oh, look at that. We have won seven cage matches. So I said six, but it was, tec it was technically seven. If you see the escape down there, we won and won in ladder matches. 25 and six when it comes to pinfalls. Our most common opponent, Eddie Guerrero, right below that. Chris Benoit John Cena tied for second with Kurt Angle in fourth place. We are a three-time U.S. champion and a one-time cruiserweight champion. Man, I love seeing those stats, but let's see. This is, this is the go-home. We are in the main event against John Cena, and you know what? We're going to make the fucking most of this, because this could be it. This could be our final match for the SmackDown Here Comes the Pain Season mode, because we don't know how WrestleMania is going to look. Dan Dan's... Join together with me in what could be our final outing. If it's not this, it will be the next one. Matt Hardy, John Cena, main event, here we go. It's, it's almost weird to not see a cage around the ring now. <laughs> We've had seven goddamn cage matches. And this is not a fatal four-way, it's not a triple threat, so DQ is back in effect. So we cannot be grabbing any tables from under the ring, we can't beat anyone to death with the steel steps. But we can hit John Cena with the side effect. Boom! What a beautiful move. Love that move. And Dan Dan's, if this is it, diving elbow off the top. If this is it. And we are not, uh, why did I just stand there and let him drop kick me? If this is it and we are not on the WrestleMania card, I, I wanna say thank you so much for sticking along with this Matt Hardy, here comes the pain season mode run. Uh, this was a tremendous amount of fun to do. I know some of you guys were so excited about this that if I went a week or two 
covering other games, I would get comments saying, we want the Matt Hardy season mode back, where is the Matt Hardy season mode? So, across seven installments with this episode here probably being the longest episode in the history of 616 SmackDown, we are finally coming to an end. And if this is it and we are not on WrestleMania, I just want to reiterate, thank you so much for watching. Not only the, the SmackDown Here Comes the Pain season mode run, but... Let me take that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I said it the right way. <laughs> not only this season mode run, but 616 SmackDown as a whole has been so much fun to do. And we're going to continue doing it in 616 Nitro. Because like I said in the beginning, SmackDown and Nitro are the same goddamn show. They're just on different days of the week, and they were, like, competing against each other. So, the wrestling game content is not leaving the channel. Mortal Kombat Monday and Let's Play Friday are back very soon. But we're not getting rid of all the wrestling game content, don't worry. Because I know how much you guys love it. I know how much fun it is to do. And, um, I'm, I'm having a really good time. So, thank you so much for you guys for being here. How about some Tornado... DDT action. Bing! Bang! Hit him with some punches, and that should soften him up to the point that I'm going to be just about ready to pick him up. God damn it. To pick him up and show him one of these. Twist of fate! That's how the U.S. champion does it. That's why I've got gold and you don't, John. Really, Silverman, tell him. With that win, we are now 35 and 11 on the win-loss record. Tell me who's better than Canyon. Look at this. Look at this. That's my hand getting raised. That's our hand <clears throat> getting raised for the 35th time. U.S. Championship goal around the waist. V1 in our hearts. How are you not hyped? How are you not hyped? That was it. That was the final SmackDown. 89 superstar points. More than in contention for WWE title shot at WrestleMania 19. Here we are. We're going to start the program. <laughs> but are we going to be on the card? It's a total mystery because I fucking ruined the Royal Rumble. It's totally my fault. I can be, I do a bit where I'm pissed at the game, but it's totally my fault. <sighs> Welcome to WrestleMania, the greatest event America has ever exported to the world. WrestleMania starts now. People in this arena are going nuts. There are a lot of matches you can't miss, but above all, King, which match are you waiting to see? Well, it's a difficult pick, but of course the main event is going to be great. It certainly is a must-see. It is going to be one hell of a fight. Well, folks, we waste no time to invite you to the first match. Is it me? Let it be me. At least let me be on the card. Nobody's backstage. Nobody wants to talk to me. What's going on here? Not on the card. Well, let's do predictions. Well, we didn't even do them. Charlie Hoshell, Benjamin over Big Show and A-Train. Triple H versus Austin, hell in a cell for the world title. Austin better win, because he beat me. He better be the one who takes the belt from Triple H. He's going to do it. Nope, he's not, of course. Main event, Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle, a guy I've beaten four times across this season mode, gets to main event for the belt. Uh, he's going to beat Brock Lesnar. No, he's not. And there you have it. There you have it. Hey, Matt, I'm sorry you didn't have a match tonight. Well, I didn't have a chance to do commentary either. Uh, how about going out to dinner? I know a good place. It's on me. We'll both continue to work hard, and I'm sure some... Take two. And I'm sure we'll be in WrestleMania someday. You and I. I have no doubt about that, Matt. Dan Dans. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is so upsetting. I can't believe that happened. We were perfectly lined up. We got number 20 in the Royal Rumble. We eliminated everybody. And Stone Cold Steve Austin tosses us over the top and our dreams were dashed. But, you know, I guess that's the way it goes. It, it wasn't predictable. You can't say you saw it coming. 
You can't say me putting the belt in the thumbnail was a spoiler. But what a hell of a fucking season mode run. And Dan Dan's, what a hell of a show. What a hell of a series. This is the season finale of 616 Smackdown. I know how much you guys enjoy this show. And listen to me when I tell you, 616 Nitro is the same fucking thing. It's just going to air on Wednesday now. And the new direction of the channel with Mortal Kombat Monday, with 616 Nitro, with Let's Play Friday every week, it's bigger and better than ever. You haven't lost anything. You're only gaining content. And all of you guys that support me over on Patreon, that's fucking huge. Thank you so much for watching 616 Smackdown. I love you. And I'll see you next time.